All right. We are live and everything is slightly different, but much better, I assure you. So what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about culture. Now, I need to preface this because this came about sort of late in the week. We talk about culture. It's like, oh, exciting. What does that mean? <laughs> All right. And so our good friend of the show, Jesse, said, oh, let's, let's talk about culture. And I went, uh, that's hard. I don't know if I can do it. And then I said, well, you know, this is, this is what, what the people want. Let's give the people what they want. So we're going to attempt to talk about culture. That's what we're going to try to do. And I started taking notes and working through this with the team. Obviously, you know, Manuel and Sally and Ethan and, and, and Jesse and like all these other people that, that come in and talk to us about various things. And of course, as always, um, in, in strange fashion, right after this was sort of the decided upon topic where I'm taking notes, I'm oddly end up listening to Vanderclay videos, which I didn't intend to do. And Vanderclay's, you know, got his little consciousness congress thing going and then he makes a comment on culture and i'm like oh that's good let's put that in the notes so i have a bunch of notes on culture and that's what i that's what i want to start with today and of course as always i'm going to do my my little monologue thing i'm going to read from notes which is actually very unusual i have like a full page of notes on culture so we've done our research here as always um and then i'm going to open it up at some point and if we stay on culture that's great if we go to something else, that's great. We'll probably wander in and out as usual. This pirate navigation thing that we do sort of ebbs and flows, right? Like a good uh, a good navigation should. And so that's that's where we're going to do it. So let's let's start. So originally, I wanted to talk about spirit, marketplace, egregores, and agents. And uh, we got overridden into culture, which which actually again I think is a good a really good idea. All of those things: spirit, marketplace, egregore, and agent are elements of the culture, we'll say, or, or, or elements within the culture. But the key fact here in terms of culture is that culture is bigger than you. You're a Muppet. I'm a Muppet. We're all Muppets. Culture is way bigger than any individual Muppet, right? Culture is something like the group of Muppets. Right. A large group of Muppets, a very large group of Muppets. And, and this is why we see cultural fra fractal, yeah, fractally, right? We see culture here, and then we see a mini culture there, and a mini culture, right? We see that. We see that. But by definition, we cannot understand culture ourselves because it's not contained within us, and it's not containable within us. It's not possible. But we can grasp the abstract. Right? We can grasp the abstract concept of culture. We can deal with what it means, with how we fit inside of it, right? Because it, it's bigger than us. We're interacting with it, right? And it's a two-way sort of negotiation thing, right? And that's something like intelligibility. The world is informed by people, by persons. And that's what culture is. It's the binding between the higher, the values and the virtues, to the lower, right? Which is the material, the dead matter. So there's dead matter, and then there's these agents in the middle. We, we call them Muppets, right? Persons, Muppets, same thing sometimes. And then those values and virtues that we're striving for, that's how the culture is manifesting, whatever culture it is. And I know that recently we've sort of been upset about culture or talking about culture in a certain way or uh, engaging in this, like, what's the culture of everything, right? This universalism doesn't work. Cultures are separate and unique to the group. And again, it is fractal. So it's not like there isn't a larger sense of culture within some smaller, you know, or sorry, smaller senses of culture within some larger sense of culture. There absolutely is. But that's not to say that a culture doesn't exist, or it's not relevant, or that these things are the same. They're not, right? The culture of the Southern United States is not the same as the culture of the Northern United States. 
That is not to say that the United States does not have united cultural virtues and values. It does. But there are sub virtues and values, and there are slight misalignments between, say, North and South. Those are things I know best. We could go into the Midwest and the West Coast and, you know, yeah, we could do all that. I don't think I want to, like, try to re-explain Colin Woodard's excellent book, American Nations, which if you haven't read it, you just don't understand the U.S. Um, Culture is the thing, right, that is being informed from above, right? The emanation is coming down. The thing that's in the middle between the emanation and the dead matter is the culture. It's not the only thing that's there, right? And it's being manifested by the persons, by the people, by the Muppets, right? Culture is all about cultivation. It is the thing that you do to the dead matter to cultivate reality the world we live in, the stuff around you in the moment, stuff from the past, the stuff going into the future, all of that is relevant for culture. Culture doesn't work in a vacuum. And that's what culture is the, th- is the way in which we avoid having the material world be merely dead matter and unmanifestable. It's culture that does that. It's the cultivation that does that. And it's the container that allows us to cooperate because it has rules. It has laws. It has preferences. It has imperatives. It has hierarchy. The baseline assumptions, the axioms, the framing, the historical grounding, reason, right, which relies on those axioms and that grounding, authority and leadership. It has all of these things. But really, what it gives us most of all is discernment. And someday I'll cover discernment in one of these streams. But for now, let's just go back to culture as a method of framing, right, which allows for discernment. And we can cover discernment some other day when when we're ready. I think we need to talk about culture first. Because it, it does provide us contrast. The structures within culture provide us contrast. You know, where we're at where the boundaries are, to engage with the boundaries, because you you have to be able to see the boundaries to know where they are. And so those rules and that structure within the culture give you that contrast to engage with those boundaries, right? That's actually a thing. (laughs) Yes, Anselman, anything anything can be named culture. Yeah. Well, does it need a strict definition, though? And and I, I, I don't think... Until you're tracking about a specific culture, you can't give a strict definition. I think that's the issue. But uh, we'll get there. Let me know at the end if you think uh, if you think I I need better. And 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 I will give more specific examples. But I, I do want to give an outline because I, I think people are really you know clueless about this. And cu- culture corrupts when it confuses. You know, this isn't the only case where it corrupts. I'm not making a you know, an exclusionary argument. But culture corrupts when it confuses natural law, which is non-negotiable, no no exceptions that are not also miracles, right? With the law of man, which are the rules of punishment or the rules of engagement or the rules of cooperation, right? Versus the laws of order, the imperatives. In other words, it's important that you grow up in a certain way in a culture for that culture. It's not to say you have to do it. It's not to say you will do it. It's to say that for the culture to survive, there are certain imperatives. And those are not laws. And those are not rules, right? And those are not natural laws, right? They're not the laws of man, right? They're just imperatives. The imperatives change over time and they can be right or wrong, like, like, you know, like all the lesser stuff. Matter is not right or wrong. We make matter right or wrong. The deep confusion of icon and idol. And, and, Rules themselves need exceptions to exist, right? But there are rules in your culture. But the fact that there are rules means there are exceptions. Because rules don't make any sense without exceptions. You can't say, well, you've broken the rules. Maybe, but in order for the rule to be made explicit, to be known and understood, I have to break it. You have to break it. 
It's not an it's not an optional component. And that's part of culture. Culture determines those rules. Like in some in some cultures, right? Like touching somebody is against the rules. Right? In other cultures, touching somebody, especially when you meet them, say by shaking their hand, is required. It's a show of respect. I trust you enough to reach out my hand, have my hand shake yours, right? You go to Japan, you're supposed to bow. These are differences. They're huge differences, but they're cultural differences. They're not differences in people. They're differences in how subgroups of people interact with one another as the result of the cultural norms. Cultural norms, the norms come from the culture, right? Like, and, and you can go outside the norms. Culture isn't some magical force that, that's restraining you at every turn. You can, you can leave your culture. You can go find another culture. That's actually Colin Woodard's excellent book, American Nations, talks about. A lot of America, unlike Europe, people would leave the culture they were in within the United States and go to a different culture that suited them better. That was part of the early success of the U.S., I suspect. It certainly looks that way. And the reason why culture is important is because you don't have the option of treating the world as if it's dead. You only have the option of destroying what others have built, right? Or building stuff up, right? Are you destroying, maintaining, or building? Three things, not two, three things. And that's important. It's important to understand that. And this may seem like a segue, maybe it is a segue. Heroism, the idea of the hero itself, exists independent of destruction, maintenance, and building. A hero can be somebody who maintains, goes to work every day, make sure your plumbing works or your electricity, right? Whatever it is, right? Runs a plant that, you know, runs the boiler for the plant that makes chips for your computers, whatever, they're heroes. Some heroes destroy. I mean, you've got to destroy the city of Troy. It's still a heroic battle. Is it a heroic battle because he wins back the woman? Eh, kind of, but it's a heroic battle full of heroes because they raised the city, right? Or you can be a hero in building. And, and you can still venerate, and in fact, I'd argue you have to venerate a good hero. A good hero might destroy, but for the reason of the good. See what I did there? Like, destruction can sometimes be towards the good. If there's a corrupt thing, it needs to be destroyed so that it can be rebuilt. It's not in all cases. I would argue that's like... And only a hero should do that. Like you shouldn't think you know when that is or why that is or how to do that. That's dangerous thinking. And you don't need to, right? You can wait for a hero, right? Or try to encourage a hero, right? Or try to invoke a hero to, to help fix it. Or the hero may build, but it may be away from the good. Like if you build the gulags, you know, that's not towards the good. That's really important. But you can be heroic in the action, even if it's a bad result. I mean, that's why we venerate people who build things, even when they turned out to be bad, because the act of building in and of itself is above average. It's heroic. And, and this is where, you know, this is where it gets tricky. Like, oh, well, look, I mean, the guy built something terrible. Yeah, but he had good intentions. Well, may, maybe so. And so you can't just look at the end result to know anything about the world. That's why you venerate the people who merely built. But it matters why somebody destroys. That actually makes a big difference. So these are the things we have to work out because to gather a group, move a culture is already a heroic act, even if you get it wrong or bad things happen. It's asymmetrical, right? We have to keep making sure that we're destroying the bad things, maintaining the good things, 
and building new good things. We get all three of these things wrong all the time due to our lack of discernment, due to our failure to engage properly, due to tons of other reasons. It's inevitable. And we need to accept that there's no way around that. Give credit to culture, to those in the culture. The culture is the manifestation of the spirit of the people within it. Even those who are rebelling against it or identifying against it, the culture gives us a standard to determine these things, a discern, a way, a contrast for discernment. We can agree on this standard to either modify it, conform to it, or at least call out things outside of it, if not make laws against those things, right? We can set up the laws. We can set up the rules. We can set up the imperatives. They're all separate items. Don't collapse them. Don't, don't live in a flat, disenchanted world. And culture needs needs to be appreciated for giving us that container that we can manipulate. It needs to be given the gratitude and respect for providing us a way to cooperate because it is the way to cooperate. That's Culture is the way in which the people in a region cooperate, right? Not only within the group, but also with outside groups. Some cultures are very closed. Some cultures are very open. It doesn't necessarily matter. I mean, it might be important, but it doesn't necessarily matter. Culture is independent of force. A lot of people get this confused. They're like, oh, force, and therefore culture. It's like, no. In fact, culture rejects force. It's not that you can use no force within a culture, but when the force is used against the culture, you get a revolution. And so you see the whole force argument doesn't work. You say, oh, the government forces. The government's still a tiny number of people relative to all the people. This is how the French Revolution worked. Like, just read about it, right? When all the people get even bad arms, we'll call them, or terrible weapons, there's so many of them that the small number of people that's the government can't can't hold. And that, that's a rebellion. Right? That's a revolution. Culture gives legitimacy to force by aligning it with the virtues and values from above that are emanating from above. When they aren't aligned, the revolution happens. That is force from below instead of force from above. And you'd rather have force from above on average because it's a small number of people. And it will affect a smaller number of people, ultimately. The French Revolution affected everybody around Paris, right? And the king, you know, his impact was limited because he had to do everything through proxies. And when we try to understand the culture, we tend to reduce uh, persons down to things like audiences. Right, or consumers. Uh, and that's idolization. Those are dangerous ways of idolizing things. Uh, they're, not, they're not helpful. And that's the problem. They're just not helpful ways of dealing with this. What's Charlie got for me? If you build it, they will come. No, they won't. How does building good things relate to growing... Growing existing good things. Well, it's maintaining. Building and maintaining are different. Right? Enjoy your dinner, Charlie. I hope I didn't miss you. So can you think about culture in a non-flat way? And, and how do you recognize when people are flattening culture? So one of the ways people flatten culture is they talk about the center of the culture. It's wrong. The culture has nothing to do with the center. It has to do with something higher to hold it together because the people in it are all moving using orientation, right? They're orienting towards the virtues and values that they have in common. That's what a culture is. It's a group orienting towards higher virtues and values. This doesn't prevent them from moving towards other sets of virtues and values on other time frames. Because that's different. 
right? Time matters a lot. The smaller groups, cultures within the larger culture change the larger culture over time. That happens. It takes a long time, though, right? We want things to be instant. We're used to instant things. I get on my computer. I instantly stream to the world on YouTube. Cool. But that gives me an expectation that I can just move the world because I am moving the world. I'm just moving a tiny part of it. It doesn't mean anything because I'm a Muppet. Once we idolize things like money, government, technology, the earth, other people, right? We destroy our ability to orient because we are no longer engaging in the process, right? We're preferring a discrete linear solution, which is easier. We've flattened the world. We've removed the enchantment. We need enchanted models, though. You can't say, oh, the culture is just this thing and start defining it. That doesn't work. It loses the flavor of all the things that culture allows because culture is best thought of as a set of affordances. And any set of affordances implies a trade-off. You know, look, I can, I can buy people and save myself time. I can trade time for money for some things, not for everything. But for a lot of things, you can trade time for money. You know, I can hire somebody to clean my house and then all the time I spend cleaning my house, I don't have to worry about it anymore. And maybe that's a good deal for me. Maybe it's a bad deal for me. I don't know. But you don't want to flatten the world to politics or economics or, you know, whatever the AI dream is this week, the metaverse. But these are all flattenings of the world. They're not expansions. You're not making the world bigger. You're making your model of the world smaller, making it harder to understand the world. And then you're turning persons in a culture to consumers or persons in a culture to political agents or persons in a culture to those people under threat of force. Like these are ridiculous ways of thinking about the world. Too flat. What does culture do for us? It, it helps us manage our identities. It helps us switch between our identities to know you're a husband, you're a father, you're a factory worker, you're a good friend. You're a good Christian. Like these are all identities one person has. You're a good son. You're a good son-in-law. These are all different identities that we have to manage. Culture gives us a set of norms, right? We outsource our sanity, as Paul Van Clay likes to say, right? Absolutely true. Culture is the thing that we outsource our sanity to. And it gives us not only different identities, but different ways to have expectations about our identities in the future. What does it mean to be a good grandfather? What does it mean to be a good older person without kids? What does it mean to be retired? What do you do with these situations that you're going to run across? Your culture informs you as to that stuff. It is the distributed cognition that allows you to live a better life. TikTok culture or market culture, yeah. No, there aren't different. There aren't different. There is no such thing as TikTok culture, right? TikTok is a mirror of some subculture, right? Market, there's no such thing as personal identity comes only, can come from culture, right? You're, you're identifying yourself in relation to something. That something is culture. Right. And, and whether you define your identity within the culture or as a rebellion from the culture, you're identifying against the culture, it's still providing the identity. I don't identify with that culture. The ability to do that is provided by that culture. Culture is what passes information on from the past, how to handle situations in the current time, what to expect in the future. Right? Culture holds the distributed cognition of intelligence for you that, that allows you to interact with the world, to participate in the process, not only of culture, but of destruction, building, maintaining, finding goodness in the world, avoiding evil, switching your identities, uh, all of these things. That's part of the distributed cognition that you're getting from culture for free. 
except it's not free. Somebody paid for it. It allows, culture is the way that you participate in the process of life. Because it's not just your life. You were born into a world. There's lots of life all over the place. There's people all over the place. There's nature all over the place. I just planted some flowers because it's about to rain. There's all kinds of things going on. And culture helps you manage all that. It holds a distributed cognition. It gives you a way to interact with distributed cognition. Even if you're identifying against it, it gives you a way to interact with distributed cognition. And not just through language, but through action. Most communication is in action, not in words. And so the cultural norms like bowing or shaking hands or, oh, that my favorite, the nodding, right? So people from India do this when they're processing what you're saying. They don't mean no. <laughs> really bothers Americans. They're like, ah, oh, why are you disagreeing with my order at your restaurant? That happened to me recently. Uh, happens all the time. I don't, I don't queue up the same way. So it doesn't really bother me so much, but it does bother a lot of people a lot. Culture is what passes on the information from the past. It gives you a way to handle these situations. It gives you a way to pass on your knowledge to future generations and to people around you. There's a cultural norm for explaining to people what a problem is. You want to tell people about the 2008 housing crisis. Culture is the thing that allows you to do that. These things are important. The norms of culture are the thing that gives you something to relate to. It provides the contrast, whether you're rebelling against it or you're ensconced with it, whatever degree you're, you're, you're sort of pushing against it or, or pushing the boundaries, it doesn't matter. It's still the container that gives you a reference point that provides you not only a reference point, but a contrast. And that helps you understand what to expect from others so that you're not surprised all the time and anxious. Culture really keeps you calm. That's why when domicide is a big deal. Our culture has changed. There's a domicide. We don't know what to do. And then I have a set of other notes here. So one, one thing. Culture is a set of structures for enabling intimacy, right? And when our culture decays or becomes corrupt, it might be partly because we're seeing the limits of civilized conflict. The cultures grow too big or too corrupt or the cultures bump into one another for whatever reason, maybe globalization, maybe we're all on the internet. Now we're just seeing how we don't like the attitude of the people in Russia, or we don't like the attitude of the people in India, or we don't like the attitude of the continentals in, in Europe. Um, and maybe they're seeing they don't like us. And maybe that's a breakdown of this civilized conflict resolution or acceptance. Like, can you accept that the Chinese have Uyghurs in camps? Can you accept your involvement in buying products made in China who are keeping Uyghurs in camps? I don't know. Some people seem not able to. Maybe that's the boundary of civilized conflict. And what we don't understand, culture is imbued with the things that it has by people. Everything we engage with has that property. It's imbued with life by people. We bring that stuff to the table. And I'll use the example. I think it was Ethan that came up with it. And thanks to Manuel for reminding me of what the hell it was because I didn't get it all in my notes. You go to the grocery store and you're not hungry. It's one kind of experience. When you are hungry, it's another experience entirely. You go to the grocery store at different times of days or on different days of the week at different times even, you'll see different groups of people at the grocery store. It's a very different experience. I try to avoid when there's people there because I like to get through the grocery store 
some people will just kind of take up the whole aisle, which makes me very angry. You alter the store by being in there with your telos. It's the same for culture. It's a negotiation. I'm angry when our government tries to add laws. I'm happier when our government reduces laws. Very simple, right? I am angry when the government tries to legislate morality, right? And so I'll tell them, ah, stop that. And you got to remember, the signals people are most likely to give are negative. It's easier to get negative feedback than positive feedback. Anybody in marketing knows this. Anybody that's read anything about marketing knows this. Anybody who's paying attention knows this. Those negative signals are a feedback to culture. That's what they are. They're not the only feedback, but they are a feedback. Jordan, Protestantism is designed to flatten the world. Now you're correct. Protestantism is a problem. Um, can confirm. So you're talking more generally accepted social norms of morality, etiquette, virtue, rather than the arts. Now look, the arts inform. What does art do? Art points up, right? Or we'll say proper art points up. It's supposed to point up. It's supposed to point at the higher things. And so art informs culture. It, it's why people consider, we'll say, high culture to be art and low culture to, to be what people are doing sort of in the norm of the day. And then when the two mix, people get very excited. <gasps> he painted the picture of the house in the field. How exciting. And I like this. Yeah, Ethan, you're right. Culture is intimacy, right? Culture is at least the container for intimacy or proper intimacy with your community, with your neighbors, with the people around you, with the people you share the most with. Jordan, culture fosters the relationship between tradition and the future we desire. Very well said. Culture arises out of the dance between the future and the past. Yes, it does. And the present. There's, there's, don't be reductionist. There's more than two things to the world. Yeah, I yeah, absolutely. And I think that's important to know. It's important to know that we're in a negotiation with our culture. And so we don't have to fight it. Right? And what we have to recognize too. If you associate with the heavenly with the good, we forget that heaven is above, right? But not all above is heavenly. And I think this, you know, to Jordan's earlier point, comes from Protestantism. <laughs> they flatten the world. It's like, oh, heaven, hell, bang, we're in the middle. Yeah, fair enough, we're in the middle. But not everything that's higher than us, uh, or we'll say outside of the sphere of materiality, is good. It's not all good. So you can't focus on that. And we get lost with that, right? We get lost with that all the time. So yeah, that's my little rant on culture. And now I'll just paste in the link so that people can jump in if they wish. And if you're on navigating patterns, it'll be pinned at the top because I have the power to do that there. I think I have the power to do it anywhere else, which is kind of unfortunate. So yeah, if anybody wants to jump on in and talk about whatever, then uh, feel free. I've got my Sam Pal, which I need. I've got some some tea, which I am accidentally cold brewing. Um, I don't know what happened there. And that, of course, is from the Table Rock Tea Company. I'm going to start my own tea company soon. That's the plan. Hanselman, what is this thing you call Protestantism? It is the rebellion. It is the uh, heresy against the Catholic Church. The continued rebellion against submission to a larger structure. And you can argue that the Catholics shouldn't have a pope, and I would agree. Uh, the uppity bishop of Rome should go back to being the bishop of Rome, but different problem, uh, much harder to solve. But by being outside the church, are you going to change it? No. You can bitch about Catholicism, but if you're trying to change it from the outside, that's a much uh, harder road to hoe, I would say. 
is a tea company a good business? If so, why? I, I think it can be a good business if you're organized enough to engage with it correctly, with the right spirit, we'll say. And we do have a plan. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. No, I have invited the wrath of the Catholics. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric, welcome. It's good to see you, sir. How are you Matthew doing? chapter 16. That's all I'll say about that. Do it well. How are you? You, you just ruined something. We were talking today about how Catholics almost never quote the Bible, and then you go and quote it on my stream. Good job. You ruined your all rep- the whole reputation of all Catholics everywhere is, ru- is ruined. I am. That was I Vatican having- II that ruined it already. Come on. Ah, fair enough. I am having a terrible day until this stream. This is wonderful. I really like this stream. Very happy. Uh, before this, the day was just not good. So, um, But I'm glad to be with you all now, and it's good to see you, my friend. So it's good to have you here. Now, here's the interesting link with culture is that it's related to the word agriculture. Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it it's like the way that we get our first grasp of this idea was kind of the harvest and the planting and the, the rhythm and the cycles. And so it's really impossible to talk about culture without looking at the way it's embodied in traditions um, right. that repeat over and over again. And then we can actually look at that and say, that's our, I mean, it's like, how do you show somebody your culture? You can only show it to them in an embodied form. On St. Patrick's Day, mm-hmm. we get trashed, regardless of whether or not we're Irish. That's our culture. Yes. That's certainly part of the culture. Yeah, yeah. You're supposed to get. You're supposed to engage in the carnival there. That's the carnival aspect to to the whole uh, St. Patty's Day thing. And uh, yeah, you know, it's all this co-opting from you know, and that's right. That's the oh, the, the, the Catholics just stole everything from the pagans and took it over and, and made like, it yeah, better. They made it, they made it better, right? They they pointed it towards the good. Why is this about? When you're pointing something towards the good, why is this a bad thing, right? Like, I don't understand. Um, what does Jordan have to say here? Anselman suffers from the idea that any Protestant institution is fundamentally outside the Catholic Church. He, well, I don't know if that's what he suffers from, but it might be. Anselman, there are rich expressions of culture among the various Protestant traditions. Yes, but they don't last. This is the whole problem. Plus, they identify themselves as a church. Yeah, they, they, they do. They identify themselves as a church. Are they actually a church? Oh, man, now we're under assault by, by Catholics. Oh, my goodness. Adam, welcome, my friend. It's good to see you. Welcome, welcome. Hello, hello. Thank you. So uh, I just wanted to, yeah, I, I wanted to t- take part in the Catholic invasion. And, and on the point of culture, I was looking up the, uh, the uh, etymology of culture. Um, in Latin, and of course, it obviously it has something to do with agriculture. Um, but it, it also has that. I, I think it has also that. Um, the kind of uh, there's actually kind of a, a, a marital or sexual imagery in that because it's it's not just it's not just tilling the soil. It's kind of a it's an active engagement with it. Um, yeah, and as it as it relates to St. Patrick's Day, yeah, this is a this is a piece of. Irish uh, uh, culture, which has been uh, exported around the world, and uh, and it's just not edifying. At this stage, no, no, no it's, it's because you know um, there was a bishop. I can't remember which bishop he was, but he had a great. Uh, a gr- he uh, <clears throat> so we've got the whole no fr- no meat on Fridays thing, right? Um, and uh, he said that if you go to church that day, if you go to go to mass, or if you spend 30 minutes in prayer in front of the Blessed Sacrament, uh, you could eat uh, meat this day. And then he just, uh, he had this, ah, I wish I had the line, but it was like, uh, and then you're allowed to have your uh, your festivities with due moderation, uh, which is what St. Patrick would have wanted, basically. Yeah. Well, and, just, and that's the, that, that's the thing about it, right? Is that the connection to Saint Patrick, the kind of because ha- ha, if you think about Patrick, he's the he's he's the higher higher figure, right? And um, in, in strictly speaking, 
the most Irish way you could celebrate St. Patrick's Day is actually not uh, getting 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 blind drunk. It would be it would be kind of. But that's the thing is that it, you know, so so people might be pointing to the same thing. Oh, that's 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 that's, that's being Irish. But there is there is something else going on. There is a kind of shift or at least a divide. I mean, it, 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 to some degree, it's no wonder that on the same day that St. Patrick's Day falls, you have the falling also of a Roman festival called the Feast of the so-called Free Father or, or the Liber Pater, um, which, you know, I, I, I there, there's something, there, there is a relation to something higher there. And I think that's probably what most people are actually ending up celebrating on that day. Well, and this is, and this is where the confusion comes in. So Hanselman is speaking yeah. against error wrong. No, it's not. But being outside of the thing and speaking against it might be, right? You just protested the elevation of the Bishop of Rome. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. And maybe it's wrong for me to do it because I'm dogheaded, but that does I don't think that makes me Protestant because I'm not saying that the Catholic Church has to do anything different. It, actually, yeah. it occurred to me today, uh, earlier today, I'm sure Father Eric, that's okay. Um, that, you know, the idea that the Pope is infallible is foolish because the Pope is a man and therefore born with original sin and therefore it's a non starter. But I'm just throwing that out there. So let's see. Anselman, I am Anglo Catholic. That is true Catholic. I don't, I don't think so, dude. And I appreciate the elements of truth in other churches. Very Vatican II. Yeah, well, Vatican, which the real Vatican II or the Vatican II corruption by the Italians? Because that that more is the uh, issue. St. Patrick was a Brit. Also true. So he corrupted Ireland. The, the Brits well, have been corrupting Ireland for how long now? I'm just, what do you think, Adam? Go ahead. Well, well he was, he was, he was, this is, this is, this is like, this is a little bit, I, I, I call Belgium a non-country, but we should be very careful in the way we use the term Briton. Let's be honest. It's the, the it, because where where Br Britain is kind of an Anglo-Saxon appropriation after they called the, the original Britons Welsh, meaning foreigners. That mean Welsh means foreigner and Anglo-Saxon. So you know, um, and 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 Saint Patrick in that case he wasn't he wasn't a he wasn't a Brit. He was he was Welsh, and uh, as that as that he was a Welsh Roman. He was a Romano Briton. And that's that's why Patrick is if you the Latin for it is patricius, meaning I mean right. it actually means patrician, right? So like the right. Roman Roman class of 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 person. But you're right, you're right, it's true. Uh, but then then again, uh, then again, the entire Ireland of Britain was uh, evangelized by Irish uh, Irishmen. So it was a bit of a reciprocal relationship uh, there, and that's. The gentleman's that trying to get to the good graces of the Catholics here. I still stuck to my fish today. A nice haddock. Look, there's no reason not to have fish and chips on Friday in, in Scotland. I did that. It was an awesome experience. I was very happy to do that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Adam. You've offended my Belgian friend. I, I don't even know. What, what I can't pronounce any of those crazy letters that don't belong together. Yeah, la well, Belgique extige yeah. la vue. I'll just say That's Belgium is not a country. Uh, there is there is no such thing as a Belgian, and uh, I'll 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 leave it at that. And that's part and part of the reason why that that is the case is because it, it it's kind of this thing that's that's just it it was it's kind of a proposition of this this is a nation now rather than rather than kind of having right. having any grounding in an ancient people. There is no such thing as the ancient We're Belgian people. Yeah, we're culture. a culture, right? There's no yes. culture through time. There's no Belgian right? I mean, culture, <laughs> right? It doesn't exist. What about they're, they're Belgian crazy. waffles? Right. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, and that's no. the problem. And look, look. I mean, Adam and I have talked about this before. And if you haven't seen it on Navigating Patterns, we have some great discussions. Some of them are historical. The most recent one is not historical necessarily, although we have to delve into history. Right, where we talk about some of these issues wrapped up around culture. What's a proper culture? Can you just go in and conquer Europe and then call yourself emperor? I don't think so. It doesn't seem to work. Right. And what are the results of that? Oh, they seem to be catastrophic, not right away, but we're still suffering from the French Revolution. Let's face it, right? Europe is still suffering from that. Yeah. Uh oh. What's this? My friends were Walloons and, and wary of the. Lemons, yes, yeah, I bet they were. Dr. Seuss book. Well, then that's the, those it, it, are the proper exactly. categories there. Those are the proper. The, right. They're the Walloons. They were the French-speaking um, inhabitants of what was formerly the Spanish Netherlands, and then there is the 
uh, the, the 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 Flemings, right, who speak Flemish, which is a a, a type of Dutch that, that doesn't mean that they're necessarily Dutch, right? Because there's probably a reason that they got uh, wound up in Belgium, um, or, you know, in in, in yeah. the fake in the fake country in this fake political unit, um, yeah. and there's there's a it's a completely and, and and that's an ancient region as well, actually that that um um uh, that part of the Netherlands and um the Spanish. Netherlands, Belgium, let's just say, let's use the fake term. Uh, and that is actually, if you want to, if you want to put it that, that's kind of like old Francia, actually. That's where the, the Franks uh, issue forth from uh, into and, the rest and, of the Roman Empire. Yeah, Ma Manuel actually said uh, earlier today, he said, no, the Belgians are, are like the slow Netherlands that speak French or something. It's like, <laughs> wow. Yeah, they're just not well liked by their neighbors. On, on the other hand, I think we can all agree. Anselman says Belgian beer waffles and pralines are the best. Okay, maybe. All right. I, Belgian I don't beer drink, is, is pretty special. I don't drink beer. Uh, I haven't had Belgian pralines, but I've had Belgian waffles. I think they're the same. Yeah. And uh, what what is this? The fall of the angels. Which fall? Which angels? Oh no, no. I don't think it's the fall of the angels. I would call. I would say it's the it's the ignorance of the angels. And look, I mean, I yeah. have a video about Ukraine where I make the same case that you just made for Belgium. Is it really a country? Is that really what happened? Because mm. a bunch of people got drunk on vodka, right? And they drew a line on a map and said, nah, this is a region now. And then when the whole union broke up, that was the region. And it's like, yeah, yeah. but most of it's deeply Russian. Like right. deeply, deeply. It's it's the it's the version of Russia that informed Moscow, like actually, right? Is there. It's not where Moscow is. Moscow is a later incarnation of the Russian ethos. And when you're divorced from the angel of Russia, right, what happens? You get a war. That's what happens. That's why I make the case in my in my uh, Ukraine war video on navigating patterns about, about what that is and what's really going on there and the identification. And so then, let's see, we need to play some Jacques Brie songs to make a to make it a Belgium cultural year. No. <laughs> Get us a copyright strike. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need the copyright strike, but yeah. <clears throat> uh, well, isn't there isn't there a part in the in, in, in the Bible early on where there's um 70 72 angels? It's either extra I think it might be extra biblical, but there are 72 angels assigned to all the nations uh, to keep that'd guard be, over them. Yeah, that'd be extra biblical, but the 72 nations I think would come at the end of Genesis chapter eleven. Leading yeah. right up into the Abraham cycle. Yeah, and, that, and that's that's pointing to the same sort of thing as this being basically there's this there's this higher being there's an angel being, um, put placed over these these peoples, um, and that's that's part of what, what what keeps them together and what informs their culture. That that that's that's the kind of if, if they're tilling the soil, it's 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 the kind of the the, the shoots are, are 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 shooting up towards that higher. Higher yeah, being. because uh, agriculture and culture and cult are all, they're all deriving from the same word. So if you read some older Catholic literature, they'll talk about the cult of the saints or the cults of the Eucharist and those sorts of things. And it just means worship, right? So like the, the harvest, the worship, and the identity of the people were all just one thing. Mm. Oh yeah. Well, and that's, yeah, that's an interesting way to think about cults, right? Is it cult is just worship without right. all the other components, the, the cultivation components, right? And, and yeah, that's a big, that's sort of a big difference, right? It's kind of important. Oh, Hanselman. Uh oh, does father Eric know the origin of the idea that the elect are making up the number of the fallen angels? I know that was considered basically uh, an accepted idea that by the time you get to St. Anselm, because he talked about that in his Cur Deus Homo. Um, where that came from originally, I would have to, uh, I would have to find, I'd probably have to buy a book to figure that one out. Buy a book? Yeah, one that I don't have yet. And I'm, I just don't want to buy any more books because I have to move so much. Books are heavy. Yeah, you'd have That's to move around that library. Yeah, yeah. So it's worth it for the Summa, you know, but... Um, and a couple other key ingredients. Uh oh, we're getting into uh, book porn here. 
We've got some old school pre-Vatican II manuals here. Oh, really? Uh, Fundamentals of Catholic Dogma. Oh, I have That's that one. a great one. one. Yeah, it's a great one. The ecclesiology needs to be updated a little bit, but everything else is perfect. Mm. The Handbook of Moral Theology. I don't oh. know that one. Yeah. If only people uh, knew. If only uh -oh. people knew what Tan Bug Books was publishing. <laughs> yeah. be rabble roused. Jacob, welcome. It's good to see you, my friend. I saw way too many Catholics on this stream. Thank you for saving me. <laughs> From all the <laughs> Catholic invasion over here. Adam, long time no see. Where have you been? I, I've been uh, I've been around. I've been uh, trying to do a master's in college and sort of um, it's just kind of st stepped away from that. So I've been I've been I, I'm currently I searching am, for a job. I was just doing my ha uh, my homework for my master's degree. So cool, nice, excellent. You guys had a good uh, a good after after Vanderclay live stream live stream. Well, Grim had a live stream, and then we had another live stream. And uh, after having a tiff with Nate, Nate invited me onto his live stream, so I had to go. <laughs> and it was it was pretty good. It was actually uh, it, was, it was I cried, just cried. It's it's a you know. Oh, good. I'll have to check all that out. I got to finish the live to Van Nuclei live stream. I had to I had a meeting and a last minute meeting, which didn't go well. Um, so I hopped in on the end of the of the Van Nuclei live stream. And then I, then I had a bunch of stuff to take care of because, of course, of course, I got other things to do. And it's just busy all day trying to get ready for my live stream. And it's like, ah, I had to plant some flowers. Crazy day. You Crazy got day. to plant flyers. We still have feet of snow up here. Uh, it was two that. degrees when I woke up this morning. It's the middle of March. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, it's been cold here too, but, but today was <laughs> it, it got below freezing a couple of, of nights. I was like, no, not cold at night. That's the worst. And then it didn't get out. I didn't get above 50 for a couple of days. I was like, what's going on? It should be warmer than we that. We haven't been. We haven't been above 40 since November. I know. That's your own fault for living there, man. You were down here. You should have just stayed. I, I, I had the invitation stayed. from the priest at the Basilica, right? You did. You get the invitation. He wanted to swap you for somebody. Like, yeah. He was I, I bought gloves um, because I was all the way up north, and it was down to, like, 20 degrees at, at night. And it's Ooh. like, yeah, not South South Dakota. <laughs> no, that's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's my my seeds were sent to me by somebody from South Dakota. So there you go. So the seeds came by way of South Dakota, and not really. But okay, I have a challenge for you, Mark. Uh, three okay. days ago, I did an eight-hour live stream. You're gonna have to go longer. <laughs> no, I don't think so. We're not in a we're not in a contest like that. But um, well, one of one of these days. Well, should be enough for anybody. One of these days, I am going to do a, a twenty-four hour live stream. Good luck to you, sir. I don't think I have the energy. I I'm, I'm all worn out today because I uh, I got did so you guys, I walked did out you guys of a meeting. Already talk about St. Patrick's Day. Somewhat. I mean, we were talking about it with respect to culture. So yeah. I, I did want to address this for Anselman. Are you experienced mad fuel price rises? No, we have our own fuel. It's the rest of the world that doesn't. You're all screwed. Sorry. Yeah, that's uh, true. We got plenty of fuel. Yeah, fuel's actually been going down here from what I can tell. I mean, I don't, I don't get out. It'll go up again during the summer once people start driving again. It always, yeah, it always, there's always that seasonal fluctuation. But the, the, the impact from the war, which I think is what he's probably referring to, is not it's not going to hit us. It's not going to happen. We have more natural gas than we know what to do with. We have more oil than we could ever possibly burn, and we're and we're still stealing it from the Middle East instead to prop them up. And I think that's good, even even though it's you know, we'll be the last men standing with respect to oil. The rest of y'all will be kind of in trouble. But I'm okay with it. It's 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 long past my lifetime, so it's all good. The amount of people who are going back to firewood is increasing the and, cheapest fuel 
in the world it, right now. Right. And the environmentalists don't seem to have really figured it out that making fuel more expensive and making more people use firewood is bad for the environment. They don't care about the environment. They just tell you that because you're gullible. I never believed them for an instant. They, I don't they, believe they, them either. Yeah, they said it too much. I'm like, eh, I don't know if I believe you. Thou doth protest too much, right? It's one of those things. I'm very suspicious of people who harp on things a little a little bit much. That's that's always, you know, but 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 that's and that's the problem. Like, what's the culture of these crazy people, right? Their 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 cult is the climate cult, right? They're Gaia worshippers. And like, okay, but that's not that's not that's not the highest thing, right? Like knowledge isn't the highest thing. The earth isn't the highest thing. Obviously, it's below us, duh. But you know, you wouldn't think you'd need to say that. And yet here we are in 2023 having to tell people that. Um, yeah, and and it, it really you can kind of tell a lot about people by what they oh, I worship safety above everything else, I worship empathy above everything else. It's like these are not good ways to to do anything useful with the culture. I wish you were there when we had this discussion on uh, during the grill country thing, because I, I said, like I always do, I think a lot of people turn love into a, an idol and yep. God is love. Love is not God. And right. I got a lot of pushback from Protestants. Well, Nate is a Catholic. Uh, no, he can't be. He keeps saying he's a Christian anarchist, which is still impossible. You know, and, and, and with, with me, he can't say I've never engaged him. I've asked him very simple questions and I have answers to. I'm like, well, dude, if you can't answer that question, then I don't know what to tell you. What do we mean by the word love? Because we have to acknowledge that that word has an outrageous valence because I could yeah. use the one word to describe my relationship with God, with my relationship with my mother, with my relationship with my pizza. So that's, that's Verveke's thing on love. I like Anselman Marcus and spiritual discernment. Thank you, sir. I hope so. Um, well, this is why I would say God needs to ultimately be ineffable and whatever you call it. Anselman, look at what Anselman says. Nate is an ex-Catholic, now Anglican. Oh, so that's okay. If that's that makes more sense to me. But it doesn't matter. You can't be a Christian anarchist. Can't be, and he doesn't describe anarchy. He describes pacifism. Can't be a Christian pacifist either. Like if you want to be like Jesus, you're not a pacifist or an anarchist. Sorry, you're just not. It's one or the other. Pick one. Pick one. It's not hard. I'm not using Bible verses. I'm saying what he did in the world. If you want to be like him, then you're not going to be a pacifist or an anarchist. It's not going to happen. Like, and, and, and if I'm wrong about this, just explain it. It should take five minutes. And if it doesn't, you're probably wrong. I, I hate to break it. It's not that hard. Right? People like these complicated. No, this is simple stuff. Simple stuff. But we don't, but we don't know. You're right, Father. We don't know what love means. We're just using it. And, and Viveki actually does a nice job of this. Like what? You know, we, we're just throwing that word around. And, and is it an adverb? Is it a verb? Is it, you know, what, what's going on with this word? How are we actually parsing it? Is it a thing? Is it an action in the world? Like, what, what, what do we, what, how do we get a handle what on it? What is the... <laughs> <laughs> Don't hurt me. You know, and so um, say that Gustin had this whole long rant because he did nothing but rant. Um, about how uh, it isn't actually love unless it is united with the truth, right? And what he meant is, you know, you, you can't just say, um, oh, I'm going to do something evil for you because because that's what you want to call that love, right? Uh, that's not love. It needs to be united with the truth. It needs to be united with the highest. And so he goes on this big, long rant about how it's not actually love, <clears throat> willing the good of the other, without that reference to the good so 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 it's like love shouldn't be the end but it should be the means to the highest ends and i think that'll work which would make it not really something you can actually worship that makes sense well i like what lost cause says we know what love means that's why god isn't love in other words 
We have an intuitive. Baby's been in love before, and she knows what love is for. <laughs> Van Halen. Yes. Yeah. This is a side of Father Eric I have not seen before. <laughs> oh, dude. You're going to hang out with him for a week. It's freaking awesome. Plus, he can introduce you to some really good early um, early uh, tunes from uh, Yes, which are excellent. Nate does, a, does go a bit to the heterodox side with the anthropo anthropo anthroposophist reading. Yeah, well, look, he just... It's dishonest to say you're a Christian anarchist because that can't exist. It's not I even did, an option. Well, okay, so I, I I didn't want to poke the bear too much, so I didn't. Whenever they spoke about Jacques Ellul, I didn't say much. But par, I think part of the problem is there are people who think Jacques Ellul was actually a Christian, and Jacques Ellul was um, somebody who claimed to be a Christian in the same way as. The Reverend Jim Jones claimed to be a Christian. He was a he. He thought claiming to be a Christian, and he was apparently right about it, is a very good way of sneaking whatever thoughts and horrible ideas you have into people's minds under the guise of Christianity. And so, I am not a fan of Jacques Ellul at all, if you couldn't tell. Um, and I just don't know. I am very reluctant to take on Jacques Ellul head on because I think he was such an effective propagandist and a lot of people in our little corner have been infected by Jacques Ellul. Burn all the books. Uh, He's French. That's good enough for me. <laughs> good enough for me. To not like him or... To not like him, to not even listen to him. I don't, you know, this is, this is. I you think he even claimed to be Catholic, didn't he? Oh, that's, well, there we go. I mean, it, for, for a Frenchman to claim that it claimed to be Catholic, oh, I'm just looking at him there. Born 1912, yeah, that's, that's, that's post French Revolution at that point. No, I'm not believing him. <laughs> the original revolutionaries, the original failed revolutionaries. Yeah, Jacques Ellul is definitely an interesting. Figure. I'm not gonna. I haven't, I haven't read any of his stuff. I've, I've never. The only, the only guy who wrote about the, the like the propaganda and the personal relations and all that, right? No, so, that's Girard, I think, isn't it? No, no, no. Uh, Elul, Elul is most known for his book uh, Propaganda, which oh. I think is a demonstration of propaganda. I and have, uh, I haven't actually, but I, you know, torn it apart like I could and. Now, I, I just saw he wrote a book, The Subversion of Christianity, which I, I don't want to have to dig into Elul, but I think I may have to. Um, and the anadromist Burn Power really likes Elul, which I think Yeah, is that's insane. where I heard him about before. Yeah. That's, yeah, yeah, okay, now I'm going to... No, no, Burn! <laughs> I, liked, I liked this How We Got Here series. And then, uh, now, 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 that I'm th now that you're telling me he's, a, he's some Christian anarchist, I'm like, oh, that's great. Well, that's wonderful. Burn, Burn is a very smart guy with whose views I have a lot of respect for. Yeah. At the same time, Burn comes from a background in the Jesus People movement and uh, I think that has all of the problems that Protestantism generally does, which is when you're a really smart guy trying to figure things out by yourself, no matter how smart you are, you are never, ever going to reach the same heights as somebody standing on the shoulders of giants, like well, somebody yeah. who's standing on an actual tradition. Right. Yeah. Culture, within a culture, to use that distributed cognition through time to understand the world better by not having to recapitulate everything that's already been processed. Yeah, I mean that's the advantage of culture. An Anselm and propaganda started off as a good word propagating, good word propagating the gospel. No longer. Now it's deceit, manipulation, a psyop. But one of my problems with propaganda is I haven't found a way to determine it in the moment. I think it's all hindsight consideration on the winner. 
I don't know that, but I haven't found any way to do it yet. So I'm just suspicious that it's a bit terribly useful term to try and determine what's going on here and now. It's only a useful term to look back and, and use it in contrast. So I, I, I like this, Jacob. You seem to agree with that with that idea. I, I, I do. It's it's a big problem with the idea, like even even what is propaganda. So I um, this is this is the video. I am going to put a link um, in that I made on propaganda, which is the name of a book by uh, Bernays and by. Um, and this, this I have to say, I believe is one of my better uh, videos. It's, it's a good video. Bernays and by Elul. And I highly, highly recommend reading Bernays's propaganda. It's available uh, for free everywhere because it's out of uh, copyright. And it's the YouTube, there's a YouTube um, audio book available for free. It's two hours long. You can listen to it. It's, it's a very short book. You might even want to listen to it, Mark. <laughs> but, Maybe. Well, you almost had me convinced. Your video is quite good, actually. I watched that video. Uh, Ber Bernays' book, Propaganda, is, is an attempt to uh, do a very simple exposition of very important things. I think that Elul named his book Propaganda partially to get people to stop reading Bernays' Propaganda. Be and mm -hmm. it was... It, it was an attempt, and I think a successful attempt, at demonstrating what propaganda is by creating propaganda. And this yep. is this is the exact postmodern little cutesy thing to do. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, and too few people, uh, Bernays is a, was a Belgian saucer um, And I, I think too few people are aware of the example of Jim Jones and Jonestown and what exactly happened there. Um, yeah. I think there are very important lessons to learn from there. And the most important one, in my opinion, is there will be people who will claim to be Christians who are not Christians. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's well, well stated. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, I have to go. <laughs> All right. Oh. See you, sir. Good to see, see you. you, Jacob. And, and yeah, I mean, that's that's part of the problem with culture, right, is that people can hijack it and claim to be part of it when they're not. And then they can use that hijacking to subvert the very thing they're claiming uh, membership in. And Hey, that sounds familiar. It almost sounds, yeah, it, 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 oh, we're just out of St. Patrick's Day, but that, uh, that, that sounds like a lot of... Uh exports from ireland coming back and uh doing do, not understanding what's going on on the island and just throwing more more fuel on the fire we, we understood perfectly what was going on in colombia they had the they had the fountain with the green dye in it i don't know what you're talking yeah. about <laughs> yeah yeah that's it well that's well, that, that that's that's a good example of it because it is it is like there there comes a point where it comes kind of it green beer up. right they put green dye in the river in chicago i forget which where but yeah they put green dye on the river yeah is that, and, oh, and there's just I, 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 yeah and, and that that's just so far from like me like i i didn't even go i didn't even go to the parade well now uh, here's the thing adam here's the thing is i have been to ireland i have i have walked yes. the, the the shores and all that and that is the greenest place i've ever been in my life yeah like it was it was over overwhelmingly green Yes. everywhere all the time it was beautiful yes and so you don't need to dye your rivers green it's that's already right. there that's right but when yeah. they when they leave when they leave ireland they they all of a sudden you're in boston Ugh. you need the green you need exactly. the green you you can have the green but then like you know sorry you left the, you left the island like so you, you're partially handing in the irish card at that point at least you know no, but it, you're, you're trying to reproduce the beauty of of the isle in, in where you're at what's wrong with that which trying to invoke the spirit of of the green why, why is this bad yeah, yeah but it's just it's just not it there it, it, it lacks any kind of particularity like there's, it, there's it's just like we'll 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 cover everything green and it's like dude come on you know, and yeah, it is. It might be a very green place, but that's 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 Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. Really. It's. I mean. It's. 
it's it's so kitschy. It's this American this money making yeah. event. It, it's a so. carnival. It's it, it's been turned into a, a fee, and and, that, and that's what it's become here as well. Like there's there's we still have parades and stuff. I don't think we dye the rivers green, but that's because the place is so green, right? Yeah. Um, no need to. But but at the same time, yeah. Any any reference any reference to Saint Patrick is really only surface level, and that's you know that I, I, well not at our school. I went and I taught the kindergartners and the first graders the story of the real St. Patrick at a level that they could nice. comprehend. Nice. Anselman says he's been to the north of Ireland, very like my native Scotland in many ways. Well, there's the oh, Scotch Irish. Scotch. That explains so much. Mm. Yes. Yes, it really does. Well, look, there's the Scots Irish who all moved to the southern United States and Appalachia and stuff. So, yeah, that's the thing. And we have the Highland Games. Right. Or the Tartan Games, that's what they're called, the Tartan Games, which are basically the Highland Games, but America style. And they do they do crazy things, right? Like they throw long poles at each other and whatever. Very whatever nice. It's crazy. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. But yeah, we've we've got we've got a lot of that that culture, right? Uh there. Uh over here. No. And it's yeah, it's wild. Mark, question for you. Interested to see what your answer is. But is there or has there ever been an American culture and an yeah. American nation? It is it is it so it's like it's kind of like the stars and stripes forever, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not one nation. I mean, I think Colin Woodard's right the way he breaks out state, country, and nation. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting set of categories to use and to differentiate. I think he's right about that. Um, in his book, um, there is an American culture. And I think if you read his book, you'll, you'll figure out what it is, right? Because there's something very deep about the spirit of independence itself, right? But the problem is that people today, well, that's the spirit of liberty. No, it's not. <laughs> it's actually, and if you know the founding fathers, like if you've read Thomas Paine and you kind of you can go read this. Like, it's not that hard. You can actually do the research, and not rely on the internet summaries. They're not necessary. Common you can just read the source material for real. And when you start to read the source material and understand what was going on back then, it all comes together. It's like, oh, they wanted liberty from the tyranny of the king. Why? Because... The king wasn't the king, and Adam and I will be doing a talk on this soon on navigating patterns. So look out for it. German the king usurpers. Wasn't, he wasn't the well, but it's worse, right? King, kingly power was broken by the English Revolution, and so yeah. what happened is it was replaced by a bunch of uh, parliamentarian uh, traitors to the to to the virtues and values of England, and. That's what created all these problems, roughly speaking. Uh, that's what bore the U.S. And that's why they went back to the Magna Carta and said, no, 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 you know what we need? We need a Magna Carta. So we're just going to make one. And then we're going to hold that up because they rightly understood the loss of the Magna Carta was the destruction of England. They should have kept the document. And now because we have the document, we're able to do things like in Virginia when the governor said, you know, only five people allowed in the house, whatever it was for Thanksgiving. The sheriff, who is also an elected official in that particular state, it's not true for all states, uh, came out on TV and said, ignore the governor. We're not going to prosecute you. We're not going to look. We're not going to patrol. We're not enforcing this, this rule. The governor has no right to write this executive order. We claim the right of the Constitution. And that's the way that the balance works. And so there and is... 87, yeah. Well, there is a sense of liberty in that, right? But it's not freedom. It's not freedom, right? Because it's 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 only freedom in the sense that you are free to have consequences from your actions. That's what you are free to do. And part of that is mediated by the culture. And part of the culture is, yeah, you can do what you want, but we may or may not help you. We may or may not bail you out. We may or may not shame you. We may right because everyone's free. And and that this is what people miss. It's like. Well, if you're free and you do something I don't like, then I'm free to let you know. And then that's where people get crazy, right? They go, oh, no, no, that's not what I want. No, I, 
I know it's not what you want, but that's what you're pretending you want. And I'll give it to you and you'll be unhappy about it. And that's the problem is that people don't, they don't want that trade-off at all. They want the trade-off where they're sort of passively, aggressively forcing you into their way of thinking. But if you look at the culture of the U.S., it's a very independent-minded culture with, with an understanding that the virtues and values matter. And so, you, you know, if you go to Europe and you try to d discern what are your virtues and values, you can see it in the actions of the people. That's not reflected in their politics at all. In the U.S., they can tell you what their virtues and values are. It's very explicit for most people. What they hold up is very explicit. And, and if you ask them, what values make you an American? They're mostly the same in all the regions. They're also fuzzier, right? Because they're really abstract. Like they're, they're like freedom, freedom to because it's, and independence. Because it was written, it was a document. It's propositional, founded in the propositional. Right. Mm. Right. Right. Well, and Anselman brings up a good point. They imported a Dutchman. Very controversial. I didn't. No, they did. It wasn't even. I mean, it, it, it's spoken like like a true merchant, as though you can barter your 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 patrimony uh, um, for for a bit of for you know for a bit of bread. It was a Dutch coup. Yeah. Basically, after right. 1688, it was like it didn't matter. Um, it, it it didn't matter what the what the small folk of England. Uh, wanted for their country, it was it was now it was right. it, 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 it basically uh, the, the the king at the time pressed England into war against uh, France, um, largely because he could because he he didn't like the French king at the time. That's all, but that's yeah. kind of by the by. The the the, right. the the important thing to to note with the with the U.S. thing is, I mean, you you said it um, a, a while back there. You're mentioning in Virginia the sheriff. Well, where does where does the word sheriff come from? And it comes from the official put in charge of the shires of England, um, which is the which is a traditional role, um, and and that's like that, that and that, that is a crown official as well. That is an official um, um, uh, who, who has ties to the crown, and a lot of uh, uh, the American project is essentially the the attempted re um claiming of their rights as Englishmen um when they weren't getting you know when they weren't getting their representation in Parliament. And it's because Parliament right. didn't obviously didn't want them to be represented. Um because it was it was, you know, they were claiming one thing that after once you get once you get this post sixteen eighty eight world, um it becomes a very different place. And there's a gap that opens up after you behead the king of basically well, what's going on in the colonies at the same time, and how does everything work? Because before then, it's all the crown; they're, they're subjects of the crown. They have they, they they have a certain they've been delegated certain governance by by the king, you know, to to sort out their affairs. As far as I'm aware, now I don't know how old this 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 um uh this building is. It must be very old in Virginia, in spe in, in in specific. It looks like the old old Parliament building um in in england where you have i think you even have the arms of the crown and not just like any old crown it's not it's not the union jack it's the old royal coat of arms um that you know i think it was edward edward the third would have had and not not the it dated back to that point but that that coat of arms was was still kind of in in play when when charles was on the throne but, but you can see the instantiation of of culture from above versus from below Right. And that's yeah. why when you ask Americans what their culture is, it really is independence and non-interference. Yeah. It's not no trade-offs, which is a different, it's like, I'm not going to interfere with you cutting your arm off. <laughs> like, when you cut your arm off, I'm going to call you a fool. I'm not going to interfere with it up front. Right. I'm going to let you make your mistakes. And, and when we in the U.S., the mistake that we are making right now is in trying to follow the other states. Right. So one of the problems we have down south is that we're going, oh, the northerners put masks on. It's like you all hate the northerners and with good reason. Don't believe those lunatics. They're all lunatics. Don't trust them for a second. I lived among them. They're not good. Like, forget it. And that's part of the problem is that, you know, if you if you if you try to follow in the footsteps of, we'll say, 
these other people, then you run into issues. Okay, just and, and your that's what IPs for daylight saving. Oh, I don't like this. There we go. How's that? Looks good. Much better. No one's commented on my camera angle. Look, I got this fancy stand for the camera. Now the camera's up up high. It's straight. No one, no one loves it. Fine, fine, fine. Mm -hmm. I don't care. And so we're not going to do our video now. We're doing a. Adam and I are doing a video. It's coming out soon. I got. I'm behind on my research. I got to get the VPN up and running and watch a bunch of stuff uh, to catch up. And and we'll do our video. We're not doing it today. Jeez, yeah. Louise, people. And, and catch up on all the videos that Adam and I have as talks. They're all excellent. Right, Father Eric? You've seen them all, haven't you? I think I have. I, if I've missed any, it's only been one or two. Are they excellent? But Are they all excellent? I do. I do find them informative and edifying. And dare I say, maybe even nourishing to the spirit oh, in these uh, in these uh, I'll take painful that. times. That's wonderful to hear. Yeah, that's quite the compliment. Yeah. That's quite the did you watch the uh did you watch the the Kale Zeldin uh Paul Vanderclay uh chat about I did, I did, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, should I watch that or should I avoid that like the plague? Because my, uh, my first I mean, instinct is to avoid like plague. I mean, I don't think it's the plague, but I don't know if you'd find it all that interesting. Um I don't, I don't think Kale understands the Catholic Catholic Church in the Great Plains region very well. Oh, because okay. well, he says that all the American bishops are center left, and it's like, oh, no, maybe way. where he lives in the east, but like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest, things are kind of based around here. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. Gonna next very to down good. on that, especially very considering good. you have the basically the Latin Mass, the the, the reintroduction of the Tridentine. Right, or uh, uh, mass largely coming out of the US. It's mainly yeah. Anglophone. It seems to me, it strikes me as a mainly Anglophone. There's a fair number uh, of French into phenomenon. it as well. Yeah. I, I, Anglophone, I, I that, French, but... and a few people in Brazil. Yeah, but I, I think it's I think it, it is mainly Anglo. The, the French thing is kind of Gallic. Because it's that liberty. It's that liberty thing, right? The bishop's liberty like, thing. okay, you guys want to do this. You got yeah. this priest who's willing to do it at two o'clock on a Sunday afternoon. All righty. This is this is our this is what we do, you know. All right, it's all yeah. you. Well, and there's no fights between, say, the Midwest and the and the coast. Like this, that's not because it's like, oh, let the Midwest do what they want to do, let the coast do what they want, right? It's very much live and let live. That's part of the culture of being an American. And that's why American culture isn't a monolith, and yet there is an American culture at the same time. Right, and that's the way it operates. And nobody thought if you read it's it's great. You gotta read some of this stuff. Uh, Colin Word goes into some of it. If you read the reports from the spies from England and France, any day now, this whole experiment they're doing is gonna crumble. Any day now, and then we'll be able to move the armies in. Any day now, over and over again. They kept saying it. They kept saying it. And and it never happened, which just kind of worked. What, what is this, Anson? In Scotland, I have attended the traditional Latin Mass celebrated by a priest flying in from Germany. Wow, from Germany. It, you, never say, you never go full CD. You never go full CD. Why is that? Why is that? That, mean, that means you break Catholicism. The yeah, he basically doesn't doesn't submit to the Pope. So he's a Catholic, but he doesn't. doesn't yeah. So no, no, no. It's worse than that. It says the person who is claiming to the be, be the Pope is not actually the Pope. Oh yeah, even that. Yeah, not my pope, basically. <laughs> no, that's that's no, that's no good. That's no. No, no. 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 Demigod full city. Papal infallibility is a problem because the pope is a man, and the man is original sin, and therefore it's impossible that we're going to get. So, how of. how many it's times a day do you think that Francis is infallible, Mark? Zero. Zero. Okay. Zero. Well, so far you're correct, actually. Yeah. Yeah. The last time the Pope was good and properly infallible was probably 1996, but definitely 1952. Well, there we go. There we go. Well, see, I, I I try to live in a world where I don't even know the Pope's name. So that'd be know, nice. When, when that actually one... would be that. I, I had a um, I got a catechumen coming in. Oh, yeah. Got all sorts of questions. He's great to talk to, and we were getting into some of this traditional Latin Mass, Pope Francis stuff, and I really just wanted to say. 
don't don't bother yourself with it yeah it's not good for you you know really you're, it isn't. you're liking no, the fact that you grew up in an unchurched house and all of a sudden you're finding structure meaning virtues and values and i'm happy to be there <laughs> yeah and we can well, do I all think, of that here i think that's actually a good point it's something i left out of my little uh, monologue in the beginning right like culture is part of the thing that gives you pieces that you can manifest meaning with right like that it's very important and then when you the more parts of the culture you restore right because we we've, we've had this sort of maybe 50 or 70 year experiment of you know carving things up and dividing them up very scientifically and you know trying to secularize whatever the heck that means right and then we've just been moving things out of culture and pretending they don't exist it's like you know we're having fights about whether or not you can have a cross on public land because other people can see it it's like uh no of course you can't stop just stop they lost that battle by the way they just fought forever and and that's the and that's the problem it it's 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 when you take the religious tradition out of the idea of your culture right when you try to separate it when you try to part the part the seas there it doesn't work like you're missing a bunch of things that allow you to manifest meaning in the world yeah it was always going to, always going to come down to a question of what 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 thing that's higher than you is are you relating to and if and if everyone's just you know saying well i don't even know if there is anything higher you know it's like well then right the, you know <laughs> right then you're destroying the culture because the culture yeah. is the emanation from above right anselman yeah. is he not encouraging religious indif indifferentism that's a, a good question yeah probably yeah it's it's i don't know i, don't well, I think know. i think it's like it's like paying attention to who the president is in the united states i yeah. mean to some extent sure right because you should be able to point at the good ones and, and point at the bad ones sure. right but like getting too into every little decision or what's happening this week or you know you're just wasting time thinking about something there are vatican tabloids they're mostly yes. all italian languages they're just right. wild I didn't. I didn't need like when I when I was when I was figuring out this whole Christian stuff, and then I was and then I was like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm like I'm I'm a Catholic now. I was like, they have their own like news networks. It's like CNN, but yeah. like for yeah. for for Catholicism. And I'm like, this Still is the Catholics like, the best. Well, like it's just it's just it all it all. I, I'm looking at this and I'm like, this is this is what I wanted to get away from. And so it's like it's like I'm I'm, I'm looking at it and I'm like, no, no, this this it's unhealthy right a pope should never should never even have this kind of light being shown on him with with cameras and everything like that um you know fine look it's it's there now but it's just okay well now it's time to ignore it for me at least you know it's like yeah. all right so there a pope exists i have to listen to him when he st speaks on very like in very specific topics and you know, as, as you said, Father Eric, like the last time I had to care about anything that he's uh, the, the the holder of that uh, uh, office said um, was like the, the late 1990s, right? And that, like, that once debated whether or not that was fully infallible. Even if it not. was, exactly, yeah. yeah, exactly. So it's like, well, you know, well, and, that's, and that's the issue, right? Like, like w when we're spreading around our time, energy, and attention in the wrong ways, we're destroying the culture. Because culture requires that in right relation. And the yeah. culture is the thing that tells you what the right relation to the higher thing is. Right? It, it helps, again, it's distributed cognition. It helps to inform you. What should I be paying attention to? What shouldn't I be paying attention to? Why? Where is the area that I can have make a difference? And where are the areas where I can't make a difference? And, and if you can't make a difference, maybe only pay attention to it when it's entertainment. Right. Yeah. Don't take something that shouldn't be entertainment, right? And try to engage with it when you can't. Like you can't. I can't affect the presidency past the election. It's not possible. Right. I can vote. Yeah. That's it. That's all I can do. I can write letters. I can shape some legislation. Maybe by writing to my local people, not to the president in general. Right. Yeah. There's a little bit that I can do, but it's a very little bit. And when you get your time, energy, and attention taken away from that, you're not building or maintaining the culture. You need to be building and maintaining a culture. If you can't be distracted, you can't put your distraction into action when 
all you're doing is wasting that that energy. Like that energy needs to be put to maintaining your culture. Yeah, it, all, all of a sudden being put into this non-generative drain that it, it is going nowhere. And and in that in that sense, well, all all you're doing is contributing to the death of a culture. And if if the culture is dead, right. well, then then no nobody's there. Like no, no, no either either there is nobody who actually is 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 there, or the people who are there are actively <laughs> not. Uh, going down the path of, of not going and, and not being there soon enough. Yeah, yeah you've got to like have Europe. power in, right? It's got to have power in. Yes. And in yeah. order to put power in, you have to have babies. Right. Well, and and Europe, yeah, Europe is having a problem with that. But I mean, we we um, to bring them up right too. Yeah. Well, you have to bring them up right. Um, and I, I the thing is, is Europe would 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 have. Has has the tools for the child rearing probably, but the problem, of course, is yeah the the uh, what how did I put it? Um, Ireland, for instance, is just a I only re realized this a couple of weeks ago. It's just a big farm. That you know, in America, you walk out into the woods, and you know, you actually might have to carry a gun with you in some certain areas because there will be there there's still the frontier territory there. We 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 covered oh, yeah. that in our last uh, conversation, mm -hmm. Mark. Right, the, 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 yes. the idea of that that um, Europe is kind of quite full, and so it's a matter of it's a it's a matter of brooking the kind of more economical um, um, rather th rather than almost solely economical, rather than kind of economical, political, all of that sort of um, higher higher frame. How those, how are those wolves doing, Adam, in Ireland? Right. Yeah, they're non-existent. We we got rid of them all. We hunted them all to you know, that, and and that's if you look actually as a map of Europe for for wolf populations, I'm pretty sure you have to get to like um, Transylvania basically before you hit like uh, major wolf populations. And or and that's I, why in the imagination you put vampires there. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. The werewolves and the vampires are all in that region because that's the, the only only the only place that they that left. Yeah. And so there, that would that would be. I mean, th those are different circumstances all all together. But yeah, that that there's that be, there's a topic for universal history. Somebody uh, somebody knock on Peugeot or Richard Rowland's door and say, "Hey guys, why don't you cover this?" Didn't right? they just How do they, Lithuania? They I think they did. I haven't seen that did one they? yet. I got to catch up. I'm way yeah. behind our videos. The dark forest is what Lithuania. I've been doing. Uh, I've been doing actual work. So. Uh, I, wow, Mark, that's a real change of pace for you. Terrible. Like, it's just awful. It's just like, I don't, it's awful. Are you still with that, uh, that startup? Not for long, if things keep going this way. Ah, that would explain the terrible day then. I'll ask no more questions on that. Oh, yes. but hey, speaking, tomorrow's Saturday. Speaking of which... I'll put in my buy me a coffee link there so that people can buy me a coffee. So maybe I can maybe I can afford to go out and uh, get something at some point. <laughs> yeah. No, tomorrow tomorrow is uh, is Saturday. Or maybe the stream won't end until Saturday. Although man, am I tired, but it's that uh, stupid nonsense with the clocks that we have to put up with every spring. That doesn't help. That doesn't help, that's for sure. But yeah, I mean it's it's uh, you know the culture is the thing that determines what you do on Saturday, right? Like if you're part of the Jewish culture, <laughs> Saturday is the Sunday, and yeah, yeah, it's all different, right? So you have all these yeah. machinations and manipulations of the world, we'll say. Um, yeah, and I got a call from my I have an Orthodox Jewish friend up in Boston. He's a very nice guy, wonderful human. Uh, he actually called me uh, this afternoon, so it was nice to hear from him. I hadn't heard from him in a, in a few months, and uh, we get to catch up. Right. But yeah, I mean, he called me before he can't call me anymore because it's going to be a while. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, OK. You know, so it's it's nice. And and having that cycle, right, I guess you all don't call it a liturgy or whatever, having those regular cycles from the culture, those signals about what's appropriate when and when people like everybody's free on Saturday. Right. Like, right? So things like that are really important. It, it gives us a way to interact with one another. Yeah. In a way that we cooperate better. It's super important. Like people just don't like they don't appreciate it at all. Well, that's the biggest thing that I've that I've 
been able to grasp onto for the past two years is that having to having gone through coming up to now two liturgical years, you there is a pattern of, hey, um, th there's a pattern that you get into, which just structures stru structures your day, your week, and your month in a way that um, basically what I was doing before just there, there's no comparison. And actually, as it relates to culture, and this is something that is within living memory, is that there used to be a case in Ireland where every Sunday, every shop would be closed, pretty much. Um, you go back to the 80s in North Dakota, that was the case as well. We used to have those blue laws. The 90s in New England. The 90s. Wow. Blue laws. Yeah, I forget when they lifted the blue laws in Massachusetts, but it was not that long ago. And I miss it. At first, I was like, well, this sucks. Right. And I'm like, man, now I'm like, man, this is great. I know how to plan for guests. And I'm like, man, now I'm like, man, this is great. I know how to plan for gas in the car. I know how to plan for food. Like, because you had to. You had no choice. Things were closed on Sunday. You didn't have everything yeah. by Sunday. And if a storm hit, you were screwed in New England. Because you could go three, four days where the roads were impossible. That that happened every once in a while. It wasn't it wasn't rare enough that it wasn't in your five year memory. Like mm. there were storms, right? And there were really big storms, like Blizzard 78, which is always still talked about up there. Ah, oh, it's a big blizzard, right? But but having that is really important because you get that you get that knowledge, right? You get that not that that experience, and you have that passed on from your culture. Culturally in New England. Everybody knew about Blizzard 78. That's why everybody went to the store before a storm, and all the stores ran out of bread, milk, and eggs. And part of why it, wouldn't you just noodles. get spam and ramen noodles? No, we didn't have spam and ramen that. noodles there. So, like, it's not going to go bad. It'll be there for you. Uh, and part no, of what we didn't have noodles. ramen noodles back then. Jesse, well, welcome. What's what's going on? What are you what are you thinking about here? What 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 are we prompting you? Good things. Um, well, I made a coffee because it's it's um eleven thirty here, Sydney time, Australia, and I was listening to you guys trying to figure out what I could contribute, and I spilled it once on the counter where I make the coffee. That was fine. Brought it here, put it on my computer desk, spilt it on the laptop. Likely the laptop's raised, so it's fine. But okay, cool. A little bit to clean up, clean up the desk, put it on the floor here. Don't know why I put it on the floor. I thought I put it way out here, not on desk, not on a musical instrument. It'll be fine there. I go, just before I log on, I should move the fan. It's very hot. As I'm going to move the fan, kicks the coffee cup all over the carpet. I know, I know, I know. Culture. That's culture for you. Yeah. Keep yeah. kicking the problem down the road. <laughs> hey, it was your topic. There. It was your request. How did I do on the monologue since it was your request? Like, what do you think? Mm. Did that help? It was good. I think we, it has already come up a little bit, the distinction between tradition and culture. Because I would say hope what was in the past was you had tradition and tradition informed the culture and the culture reflected the tradition. And somewhere post-war 1960s or so, the inversion happened. It was cultures, multiple cultures started informing or breaking down traditions or became parasitic on traditions. Yes. So traditions are weak. They start to break down. And now you just have, right. you get to the 90s or the early, now you have, and all of a sudden you have pop punk. Like, this is my ultimate example of that. It's like two different things that should go together. That are right. somehow now marketed back to us as the ultimate some forty one blink one eight two, it thing, and it's whoa, not. Whoa, whoa, it's whoa, not. I like blink one eighty two. Like no, no, I love blink. But it ain't punk. Good stuff. Yeah, it's not punk. Well, no, that's a good point. But I mean, yeah, and I touched on this, right? Like now we've tried to divide things out of the culture through secularism. We said, well, there's this thing called tradition. It's like no, 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 there isn't actually. It's an invalid category. Like. Tradition is a thing that's identifiable by the culture within the culture, but you can't transplant it and move it. Like that doesn't actually work, right? It, it, it's and it's not to say it doesn't have an effect. It just doesn't have a predictable effect for what you're trying to do. Yeah, right. Because Walt Disney starts making cartoons and then the Japanese start making anime. 
Exactly. Exactly. It changes once you put it into a different culture. In particular, right. Japanese government starts making anime if you want to go deep yeah. lore here. Well, and they, they needed. And... Well, but, you but, don't know but, this, but... Father Eric. Look into no, to this, this, this is. I think it's to Adam. Do you know this? I think it's the no, Tomi company. T O M T O P E M I. They made One Piece. They make Dragon Ball Z. They make all the top series. They're actually yeah. They're backing founders were the Japanese government post World War Two. Because yeah, they needed to new cultural jobs. stories to bring everyone. Oh, yeah. okay, stories. Well, okay. Well, and it's bigger. It's bigger than that, right? Because you look at something like the the original Godzilla. You know, the guy in the in the suit, right? What was that? That was them <laughs> basically basically saying evil Americans, evil Americans. Look what the Americans did to us. They're evil. Look what with it. Look what fruits came from their nuclear assault. Right, it was a destroyer of cities. Like it's, I mean, it's very overt once you once you see it. It's like, holy Can't crap! See it. Yeah. And then you have the rest of the League of Nations are now represented in the other movies. You had Godzilla versus, you know, right, Mega Mothra. Godzilla, and Mothra. Mega Godzilla, They're all Mega different Godzilla, European Mothra. or League of Nations Gamera. characters. Yeah, that... Gamera is the best. Michael at Mark, what what then would you call the set of practices a people participates in? Well, look, the set of practices, again, it's not that you can't use the word tradition. You can. It just You can't separate the tradition from the culture and expect a predictable result. That's what we're pointing to. We're not saying tradition is an invalid category. We're saying tradition is an invalid category outside of culture. Like It doesn't make any sense to talk about tradition by itself on its own without any other reference. That doesn't work. This is the postmodern problem. Postmodern say, look, you can divide anything up any way you want and then put it together any way you want is implied. It's, I get that it's Extract implied. It out. Yeah. Right. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying they explicitly said this, but this is what it leads to, inevitably. And that's wrong. There are right things and there are wrong. It's interesting. So in the Van Der Clay live stream today, I didn't catch the whole thing. Unfortunately, I missed the best part, which is the end, where when he allows other people to come in and tell him how wrong he is about everything. Um, sorry, Paul. I had to say it. Um, but in Why is middle, Paul going to come on this stream? We're going to get Paul to come on navigating patterns. It's probably too late for him, but one of these days. Yeah, we, we got to get him to, to push more good videos. Like he saw a uh, story narrative archetype and he really liked it. So that was good. But there are other videos that are just as good that Paul could engage with and learn more. But one of the things he was talking about was the IDW and how Eric Weinstein came up with that. And it never really stuck. And I was like, yeah, because it wasn't close enough to an emanation. And it was done with, with bad intent, basically. Like Eric, I, I don't dislike Eric Einstein as a person, but his intent is very transparent to me, even though it was probably not to him. Uh, and it wasn't, his intent wasn't good. Um, and so he, he, when he came up with the name, it just didn't match what was actually happening, right? Like they were, you know, he's trying to be edgy, right? And he's trying to make a thing out of nothing, right? And he's, He's trying to create a coherence, and it's like he's like a banker, right? Yes. So I mean, edgy bankers—is that really going to work? Right. And, well, and that's the and that's the problem, right? Like a a better way to to uh, to understand, we'll say, Sam Harris and Jordan Peterson and uh, you know Eric Weinstein and these other people being able to talk is to talk about the craft of conversation rather than to try and name it because it, it wasn't a thing. It just turns out that they had very different values. And you can now see, as predicted by me since forever, that Sam Harris was not a moral agent in the world. He was not going to be a moral agent in the world. That was not an option that was available to Sam Harris at any point in his life. Sorry to say, it just wasn't. Don't believe me? A month before he blew up, I did a video about him. And then when he blew up on trigonometry, I did another video about how he blew up and you know made that, right? That's the highest value video, made, made that explicit. So well, where could the new atheist culture go? Where, what's the well, teleology of the it, new atheist it culture? Had no was, right, yeah. it had none. Right, it, it, right. And that's the point, is that he tried to name something that didn't have virtues and values in common. And when you do that, there's no emanation, and so the name doesn't work. It's that simple. And that's what the postmoderns miss. 
you can say I can interpret Moby Dick as an allegory about feminism or whatever. You can do that. You, and, and that can be done. But it's not close enough to something that you can participate in to be useful. And so it's not arbitrary. And that's what they leave out. Foucault leaves this out. Derrida leaves this out. These things are not arbitrary. There are better and worse interpretations of the text. That discernment doesn't come from the text and it doesn't come from you. That's where the Protestants mess up. It doesn't come from you. It comes from above. And how do you understand what's above you? Well, you can't do that by yourself because you're a Muppet. I'm a Muppet. We're all Muppets. We can't do that by ourselves. That's why we need culture. That's why we need the church. That's why we need the institutions, the academy. That's why we need the government. We need all these things because they help give us perspectives from the distributed cognition down to us to interact appropriately with those things. And I think that's super important to realize. I did want to address Michael again. You see it valid to say our tradition, of course, because you have a reference to culture. Like my tradition is within my culture by definition. Like that's what I'm saying. Like tradition is definitionally in culture. You can't separate it from that. There has to actually be the act of handing something down. Yeah. Right. Right. If, that, right. if that's not there. So like I couldn't, I couldn't with like, let's say, let's say I got a bunch of Orthodox liturgical books and started trying to, celebrate the divine liturgy of john saint john chrysostom it's like it just really isn't going to be the same thing because i'll have the books although like kind of the procedures i ain't gonna have that ethos in there you know that's right. why i could i could have learned the latin mass by just you know studying the missal and trying to do it but what did i do i went to our lady of guadalupe seminary in nebraska and took a five-day workshop on it a yeah. really intense workshop. My head was hurting every day by the end yep. of it because of how all the ooh. But, uh, <laughs> but those oh, guys, that? those guys have practiced it uh, basically uninterrupted since the Second Vatican Council. So, oh wow, yeah, that's a big. Deal. I mean, yeah, well, they they, yeah, they, they got they spread split off from the SSPX when Lefebvre got communicated in 1988. Um, yeah, right, but that, I know. But Who would have been a rebellious Frenchman, right? Never. Never such a thing. They know, well, we, we were talking about this earlier. Somebody asked what the uh, French word for frog was. And, of course, I happen to know that one. I know, like, two French words, and that's one of them. And I went, oh, it's kind of mess, <laughs> right? Because How do I know that? Because the French-Canadian festival in Biddeford, Maine, was called La Caramès, and it has a frog on the back. I should grab one of those. I don't have them here. Uh, I have a bunch of La Carmesse badges, you know, little, because you, you get it. They give you a pin to go in, right? Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. But, like, they're poking fun at the French by calling it the Frog Festival. That's what Very they're doing. Good. Deliberately poking fun at Paris. They're like, here, Paris, have a hot kick in the eye. Like, they don't care. They they don't like Paris. They have a love-hate relationship with France. Yeah. Right? And, 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 and yeah, but, but yeah, La Carmesse, right? Why? Because... Right, that that's they're they're rebelling in some sense against against the the Parisian oppression because I think both of them are from the south of France. That's my suspicion. I, I'd have to look that up, but I think most of the French Canadians were were there by way of southern France, not not necessarily, or or maybe the smart ones that that were still sane. Because uh, you yeah, look, you gotta have a lot of motivation to leave some of the best weather in the world in France to go live in Canada, which is some of the worst livable weather ever. And hunt beavers in the middle of the woods in the winter. Yeah. Like, and hunt. there's no women. I mean, for a Frenchman, there's no women. Like, that just sounds like hell right there. I'm telling you. Yeah. 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 Don't, didn't even have the consolation of what the Spanish had down in the south. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yeah. And I think that's the problem. Like, we talk about things and then we think, like me, I by myself, I am an Uber Muppet. I can divide tradition out and then discern it from, no, you can't. You can't discern it from culture. It's part of the culture. It's identifiable within the culture. It's not, you can't use it outside of that. What, what on earth is Anselman saying? Zoot zoots allures? Allures. allures? I, zoot suits? Alluring zoot suits. 
They're very attractive. It's people. late for him and me, so I think that now we're just like <laughs> we're running on fumes. <laughs> maybe I don't. I don't know what the heck that is. There such a thing be. as high and low culture? This is maybe one thing I wanted oh, to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah try that's right. Say. You brought that up. I don't think there is. Like I think the idea of high culture is. Well, I would call that tradition. Everything that you embody in high culture is a tradition, like the arts up until the 18th no, century were a tradition yeah, of so. high culture. I don't think so. I think this okay. idea of high culture is the elite saying we're better than you to everybody else, right? Because, yeah. because and, and it's, it's valid in a sense because they are the ones that are holding the culture together by pointing up the purpose yeah. of, of the arts, the purpose of the, of crowning the king, the purpose of these things is to point up at the higher things. And that pointing up is, in fact, the thing that makes the culture go here. Like that's, yes, here's what we're orienting towards. We're orienting towards the crown, we're, or not even the crown, what the crown represents. Why? Well, here's the bishop to show you that this is a valid engagement, right? That's why and Adam and I went over this in, 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 in our French Revolution video. That's why Napoleon screws it up. Like that's how he screws it up. He says, no, 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 you're going to put this on me. It's like, no, no, that has to be conveyed from above. Like the authority has to come down. You can't just say, I'm, I'm, I've militarily conquered this land. And now I'm the emperor. And because I'm the emperor, the church must crown me. Right? Because you're yeah. none of that is an emanation. And so I you mean, try to instantiate this thing that's not an emanation. And now you have Europe that blows up in war every few years. And I suspect we're not too far away now because we keep sending weapons to Ukraine as though they can win. The only way they can win is when they're pounded into dust. Let's not do that. I kind of don't want Ukraine to go away. Um, but here we are. We're stuck. I <laughs> you were both oh, <laughs> I'm stealing this. Yeah, all yours. Yeah. It's all yours. Who who wants it? You're on Discord? I can send it to you. Please. Go on. Just throw it on my server under heretical memes, please. Yeah, That'll there it goes. There it goes. We'll get it uh, on and, there. Uh, and Napoleon cr crowns himself, right? So he take he takes the crown and he gets all the bishops to watch. He gets the bishops and the pope to watch. <laughs> yeah. Because there oh, is a certain someone... pattern of the... Is there an echo? There is an echo. I'm not sure if it's my internet connection. Sorry. There is a certain pattern of that used to happen. People would conquer lands and they would say... You are now to worship me effectively. So he was doing that, but there's a change in the 18th century that's vital. No, no, to that's distinguish. Not, but that's not what he was doing. So if you look at the Holy Roman Emperor, so go look up Holy Roman Emperor and go look up the titles. Yeah. Adam, was it like a hundred? Multi titles, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Loads, loads. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. So, so well, we, I mean, you can look at England, right? Like when the Queen go, goes to Scotland, it's not. She doesn't have the same title as she does in England. Yep. I, what's that about? Oh, you're pointing to a different thing, right? Yeah, and so the universalization. Trusting, well, you're and in, and in essence, it's a super efficient, super awesome thing to do because you're trusting the leadership as a separate thing apart from the the virtues and the values that that leader is trying to instantiate in that country. Now, whether or not that's viable, I don't know. Right, but it seems to have worked in the past fairly well, like with the Holy Roman Empire and stuff, right? But but that's what's happening. They're saying, all right, we trust your leadership and we trust your integrity to uphold the values for our region. Yeah. Right. And then that doesn't mean that our region's never going to be oppressed by England, because someone's going to be oppressed by something. And that's the see, that's the deep problem that we have. We keep not accepting trade-offs. We are in trade-offs. We are in negotiation all the time about everything. We are. And therefore, what do you do about that? And you can be all Protestant about it and say, well, the least Protestant thing I could do is join the Catholic Church. It's like, come on, like, join the Catholic Church. <laughs> then, you know, like, get in there. Like, wait, don't talk about definitions. The definition's already done. Like, you're protesting against the church. Stop. Like join it. You can't separate yourself because when you try to separate yourself, there's a there's a problem there, and and the, it's the same problem as when you try to force everybody under one emperor with one name. 
you can't do that. It's not a valid way to run the world. And that's why Napoleon failed. And the revolution continues, I think, is what Adam's on about still, right? Like Fifth, yeah. fifth Republic? Is that what you're saying? Republic number five, yeah. Uh, and empire number, is it two or or uh, at least oh, two? Gonna, it's got to be at least two. Yeah. So that's... That yeah, is. I mean, what was Vietnam and, and Korea about, if not saving, saving France's empire? Yeah. And it wasn't the only thing it was about, but also saving France's empire. Yeah, yeah. How is Korea a part of that? Uh, it's the it's the same it's the same sort of uh, thing where once you're engaged in protecting the colonies of Europe, right? Oh, okay. Well, that's what we do now. We're protecting the colonies of Europe because the European ethos is better than the Russian ethos, right, or the communist ethos, however you want to frame it. So we're still protecting colonies of it's not just france like we're protecting all kinds of colonies of all okay. over the place dutch the english it's, yeah it's america and, and becomes that, the new empiricist essentially is it well, no, the essential that's how it's cast but that's not what's right. happening because we're not taking over in place of we're not saying oh we're gonna we're gonna get rid of the french from their colonies we're not taking the colonies away from them we're just protecting just their stuff you just have to have all of your oil contracts denominated in U.S. dollars. That's all. Well, it is that a soft power. It is a that soft happened power. A long time ago. Well, no, but but well, no, 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 no. It's it's the acknowledgement that that some power is better than a power vacuum. So, yes. I, you know, that's why I don't like the soft power idea. I'm like, no, no, power is just power. It's not hard or soft. Like this With is influence. What, this, like, that's right. Same yeah. objection for high culture versus low culture. The low culture doesn't exist without the high culture, and the high culture is irrelevant without the low culture. Why are we talking about? Why are we making that distinction? It doesn't make now any here sense. here is here was a distinction that I heard from from somebody I respect is that high culture gets to a point where it can actually have a kind of universal quality. So why do people go to Europe? Well, they mostly go to Europe to see the architecture. And yeah. everybody can look at what is embodied in the brick and stone there and say that is good. The Japanese are really into Bach, right? They've got their own symphony orchestras. They've got their own chorales there. They've adopted this music as their own and because Bach speaks to something uh, universally if you've got ears to hear it. And so the, the distinction I've heard between low culture and high culture is that low culture is more particular but yep. high culture can achieve a universality. Yeah, I would you say that that, that is what I described, right? Was the high culture is the thing that holds the low culture together, right? It is. It is more universal in some sense because it is the part of the culture that's pointing up, right? Whereas the gritty got to farm, got to make food, got to got to maintain the system, right? We, we're not we're maintaining the system. Like the people at the bottom maintain the system so the people at the top can have culture of high of high value. But but there's still a culture, I'm sure Adam can speak to this, right? In the country amongst the farmers that is different from the cult from the culture, say in the cities, uh, whether it be Dublin or you know, Edinburgh in, in Scotland or you know, London in England, right? And so the elites make this high culture versus low culture, but really it's just two aspects of the same culture. Whether mm -hmm. where it is, like is one higher? Well, one's closer to pointing to the virtues and values that are holding them both together, but it's holding them both together. And you can't you can't separate them. Again, you cannot, it's like tradition, you can't just take it out and say, Well, we're we're gonna make everybody high culture. No, then there's no there are two speeds, sir. People there are okay. two speeds. Uh, Absolutely, and you have to you have to have a way of categorizing. Like absolutely, tradition absolutely. tends to be slow. You don't, you don't need to have a way of categorizing. I disagree. I, I think it's an invalid way of thinking about it. Culture has, of course, culture has two speeds, right? Because there's a large population at the bottom that's maintaining because it takes a lot to maintain something, and there's a small population at the top. I don't know and if they do maintain it. No, they do. Oh, no, yeah, they do. Because they yeah, can they be do. influenced, though, to shift very quickly. Attitudes, I, I can't get, I can't be bottom. specific right now, but at, you know, at the bottom, you can be very easily influenced. It's called marketing. 
no, no, no. If you, no, 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 if you, you, you can't. Certain aspects can, but that's usually the middle people, right? So, for example, you, you go, you go, you go, and, and let's suppose, let's suppose there were an insanity virus that swept across. Well, we'll just do the U.S. for the moment, but it might have swept across the world. And then people were like, oh, you know what? The insanity thing is we're all going to wear masks, even outside. Okay. Now, where that goes and how that manifests is so different across the United States that it's not even worth talking about. Because you can ask me right now, do we live in the same place? The state of Massachusetts, which I left a number of years ago, a long time ago, six, seven years ago now, something like that. They are lifting the health emergency that caused the masks in May, in May of 2023. They're lifting it in May of 2023. And I'm sitting here going, 90 days, kid. And our restaurants were open. 90 days. This has been over for me for almost three years. Over. Over. for all. We don't live in the same country. We don't have the same physical experience anymore. And when I was driving up, because I was still... Uh, doing trips up up to New England. Uh, when I was driving up, the further north you go, the more masks you see, right? And so the people in South Dakota, for example, where Sally Joe is, they never bought into any of it. It's not that there were no masks, but like mask usage was rare. Nobody cared. Nobody obeyed any of the state or, or federal guidelines. They just didn't give a crap. They just didn't care. And so they weren't easily moved at all, but they also make our food, actually. Right? They're ranchers and farmers and like that's actual people making food. And they're concerned with making the food. The people who are moved are the people in the cities. Well, they're dependent upon the people making the food. But they're also not the high culture people. They think they are. They want to be involved in that. But most of them aren't. They're not doing it. Well, very that. few are. Very few are. Yeah, very it's few. Kind of the, but it is very, very It's a fantasy that happened since the 90s that everyone can be educated to a certain point of success. I, I, but I don't think See, it's not a matter. Of, see, I think that's an error. It's not a matter of education. Like I think. Well, no, no, I'm, no, I'm pointing I, to that problem. I'm pointing to. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the I ideas that's floating about. It's affluence, right? It's affluence, right? It's 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a weird question. Like, well, if if Karl Marx was a worker who knew about workers, how was he able to write all this all these voluminous papers? He should have been busy in the factory working. Well, he was writing about something you knew nothing about because he didn't, never engaged in, never participated, right? It's like, oh, well, that's that's actually important to know. So you wrote a book about something you could not have known anything about at all. You had no knowledge of whatsoever, much less relevant knowledge, which would be my argument. And and, and just, so yeah, that's two where parts, the, there's two parts I, of that. I don't, I'm not sure which parts to go on about. Well, but, but again, it's the, this is the same the as how repurposing Gnosticism, and that's what he really knew. And yeah. Well, but I'm trying. I'm design. trying to point. To, yeah, sorry, this is delays yep. me. Um, you find you find Gnosticism by yourself on your own. It's very easy. Like any idiot can find Gnosticism if they just have enough time on their hands. Like that's why I don't like James Lindsay saying, "Oh, you can trace the path and the history." No, Gnosticism is inevitable for. An individual of a slightly above average IQ with too much time on their hands, they will undoubtedly become a Gnostic, and and they may call themselves a Protestant even. But I would argue Protestantism is just a Gnostic heresy. So that's that I'm going to go there for sure. It's yeah, possible. I mean that's what I see. Speaking of seeing things, I haven't done evening prayer yet, so I will see you all later. Well, thank all you, right. Father. Yeah, it's lovely to see you. Good to see you too, y'all. Take care. Take God bless you. Adam, it's nice to finally meet you after watching nice your videos you. and spending hours with you, technically speaking. Yeah, well, well it's, 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 it's a little bit late here, so I just uh, powered through and, uh, you Thank know, you. so uh, I suppose it's the different time zones. Oh, yeah. I do. I do appreciate that, Adam. Well, and this is the one window where we're only four hours apart instead of five, so. Oh, yeah, yeah, because your yeah, clocks haven't gone back there, have they? Right. Oh. Well, we changed the clocks and you didn't. Yeah, or I, we've changed yeah. the clocks. I don't know anymore. I don't know. <laughs> there there is a delay, well, though, between the US and here. So we're probably. Yeah, there's like a so two week right window when, when Europe's an hour closer to us somehow. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah. It does help with these things. 
It can. Well, and that and that's part of what we're doing is people are finding culture online, right? Or they're trying to. It's a very strange sort of way to engage at the end of the day. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you engaging with uh, with culture in that particular way? Like, what's the what's going on, right? And and people are looking for where they fit. Like, where right? They're suffering from domicile. They've been told they can have whatever they want, whichever way they want, through postmodern thinking, and and now they're stuck. Have we have we kind of maybe for both of you? What are the axioms of culture? How does what does culture do? Did I How go over that in my in my monologue? Did... Bits and pieces. Mind. Do I need to bring Mind. up my note? Because I wanted. Oh, what's the something difference between higher. that? Point to something higher, so that they're both overlapping with tradition. There's no distinction between the two. No, no, I'm no. Really no. Trying tradition to... is a subcomponent of culture. We went over that, right? Tradition is a sub. You can't separate it, right? It's, it's identifiable, but only within the culture that it's in, right? And then there's other factors, like it's the distributed cognition, right? It's the way that you it gives you contrast to see the world, so that you can know, oh, there are rules, and here's what happens when I break them. Not that you can't break them. Here's what happens when I break them, right? And then it gives you that sanity right? Because it pushes back on you to some extent, right? And it, it also allows you to cooperate. Like, how do I know what the proper mode of engaging in a live stream is? Well, there's a culture in this live stream of how to engage and what to expect. When you come in the room, if we're busy talking, we're not going to greet you. That's not going to happen. We may get around to greeting you, right? When there's a moment, but you know, and if you're comfortable with that, you'll just slide right in. You won't need a greeting. Fair enough. That's part of the culture that we've cultivated in this live stream because I don't like to be interrupted when I'm talking <laughs> for whatever, but it doesn't even matter, right? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. And because we value the flow and the, and the ethos and the spirit of the conversation in the moment above the new people coming in. And it's just a decision. Other cultures make a different decision about the, oh, stop everything and greet somebody. Fair enough. Like I'm not, I'm not counting one above the other. I'm just saying that's a diff those are different cultures. Those are cultural norms that are different. And, and that it just gives you the way to interface. Like, what do I do in Japan? I don't shake hands with people. They don't like that. That's not their thing. I bow, right? And then we get into this bowing contest. You can bow lower. So I have to know when to give up. We take off your know, shoes before you enter in. Take off even your if shoes. You... There's all kinds of little yeah. things. I don't even know them all. I've never been to Japan and, and shame on sure. me. But if, if, if you buy me a coffee, it's a cult, maybe it's a cult of shock. I have money to, to get to Japan. It's, uh, very, it's yeah, a yeah, culture shock, know. that's for sure. Yes, it is. Well, and that and that's the thing. There is such a thing as culture shock, right? But I think culture shock and domicide are actually well, there should be more of it. That's it's probably not... where I'm trying to get to. I think we're losing yeah, but... because we're this, there's no embodied traditions. Well, embodied traditions aren't surviving because of the global homogenization. Culture shock's becoming oh, yeah. less and less. I don't. I don't think that's. I don't think that's what it is. I think it's just postmodernism and the materialism, which is oddly. So I would say. I would say it's kind of like the. It's kind of like the double-sided coin, homogenization well, what, and post, postmodernism. No, but it's of, not homogenization. What's happening is, it's ironic, right? It's well, it's paradoxical in some sense, right? The materialism yeah. focuses you on on the movement, but because mm -hmm. the movement is a form of nonverbal communication, the materialists don't like it, and so they verbalize everything and focus everything on the verbal representation of the material, because that's what a scientific theory is. <coughs> it's making me. explicit, <clears throat> right? It's making something explicit. <clears throat> that's its function. So reducing it down to facts only. Yeah, yeah, and and, and and all description, nothing. I mean, that's that's a funny thing, right? You think about um, a lot of human communication, and most of it's nonverbal. Most of it's in in some sense essentially implicit, and so it would make sense that that would kind of be represented in how something like a culture works. And so, you know, uh, the need to make everything explicit. It's like you're only getting in some. If you think about it as kind of a pie chart, you're only getting so much of it. And 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 that's that's not even that, that's not even close to the space that you need to actually really make a culture as such. 
say more. <laughs> well, uh, you know, uh, let's let let let's say you know, let's say I, I write I write down all all my, uh, my 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 whole thing of propositions, but like there's no. What do you what what do you do when you get to the end of those propositions, right? It, 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 like you're, you're, at some point you have to go off and act, and you can't just yes. kind of keep on adding to the end of it. And I think it, it, in that sort of it, it's in that sort of space where you it, where the nonverbal stuff happens, or even what do you do in relation to the propositions, right? Uh, because if you you know if you t if you take a kind of a Italian view on things. It's like a rule, you know, you say, you know, no running. And they might say, yeah, I'll obey, obey that most of the time. But, you know, at yeah. some point, uh, you know, if something important if you're happens, on the beach, when yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. The something context important matters. happens. I don't know. I get a call yeah. from a friend and, and I hear he's down the bar. I'm going to start running. Um, yeah. and, 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 you know, if you can't, but whereas if same, same, same rule and I don't know, uh, you know germany or, or something like that it's like that's a very that's a very strict rule if, if you're caught running at any time you better have you know a good reason to be to be running and even then you're probably going to still get penalized something like that for instance i think well, jaywalking would be another one jaywalk yeah yeah well i yeah. think i may have jaywalked a couple of times in germany but it felt it felt a lot more thrilling when i did it in germany <laughs> than i when i do it here. it's a big it's a, it's a big fine in yeah, Japan, it is, it's um, it yeah, yeah. In Japan, it's like mess. If you leave mess, it's like not only is it a cultural sin, it's a government sin. Like you, yeah. you are forced to be clean and tidy. Like they will not respect any sort of graffiti or any sense of untidiness. Is shunned yeah, yeah. essentially. Well, uh, that, it's probably that, for that, good. But yeah, yeah. and then that's that kind of comes out with the whole. I mean, for Japan, I mean, and, and you're talking about culture shock there, Jesse. It's like. Japan's on the on the edge, like it's the Far yep. East. So yes. really, that's if there if there's ever a place where culture shock needs to be, it's it's like it's there. It's not, yes. you know, you know, maybe it's beautiful it, it, actually, in yeah, some sense. Yeah. It's, well, PewDiePie's moved there, so you know, it's, it's yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, gosh, yeah. Well, they, what would be the other places? So Russia's the other end of the spectrum. It's like the end of the West, in some sense. It's a mid, it's a middle place. It's kind of familiar, but it's also different because it, it, it's it's where it's where you have the Rus, you have this kind of people which mm -hmm. does have a relationship with the um, with, with both Latin Christendom and 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 and, and, and the, the Roman Empire. But then it's it's you have the Mongols come in, and so there's this kind of relationship with the East. And of course, the Mongols connect to the Far East with China, and by extension, even Japan. And so you have that yeah. kind of middle mediation. To mediation yeah, point, okay. Middle place, so so they have they embody some aspects of of the West in some sense, but then in the other sense, like they're a little bit, you know. And this you see with how, how people in the West deal with Russia now. It's like, ooh, ooh, do we want to trust them or not? You know, are they really, really trustworthy at the end of the day? Um, and that 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 even happened before before Ukraine. Like this is this is a this is a pattern that just just happens. Continual pattern, actually. Yeah. Well, and you can see the way that <clears throat> different cultures value different things. And so when the Mongol hordes come in and occupy Europe, the way they govern is totally different from how other occupying European countries govern. Totally different. Because they're kind of like, eh, all we really care about is the tribute. So we're going to put our people at the top and you're going to pay the tribute. And that's fine. And then you can live however you want. We don't really care, right? Right. Yeah. It's very similar to the Roman system, isn't it? No, the Ro Rome. No, no. Rome. Rome would come in and and uh, and transform everything about your city. Yeah, they they'd found Colonia. That's where you get the word colony from. Colonia, like Cologne, yeah. for instance, is, they, they is were colonizers. a Roman city, and, right. and and it's Roman in the sense that they planted Roman citizens there. That would be the place where the uh, it, it would either start out as an army camp or it would be an actual project where you'd send out people from some nearer nearest latin settlement um and and you put them there and and by their interaction with the locals the locals would adopt latin customs that's why you have the the all of those places like you know france isn't speaking gaulish anymore you know so who was the other big force that had that idea of tribute was it persia 
Yes. Per Persia yes. Yep. and Carthage, right? And uh, tribute, well, tribute's big in Africa, from what I can tell. Tribute was big in uh, in parts of India, although they were mostly conquest, right? And uh, and and this is all wrapped up in the values and what they're trying to do. And, and look, even um, even the Muslims were largely, "We'll leave your city alone. You can practice your religion. You can do whatever you want, but a we own the entire top of the government." Unlike the Mongols, the Mongols were like, "Eh, one or two guys living in leisure." For, you know, as foreigners, it's fine. But the Muslims yeah. are like, yeah, we're going to own pretty much the whole top of the government. So there's no chance of a coup or anything like that, right? I mean, they were mostly tribute-based. They didn't care about transforming the culture. With Rome, like, some of the battles were, you know, like in Spain, for example. Sp the Spaniards would battle each other to get Rome in. Why? Who wouldn't want Roman roads in a Roman bath? Like this stuff is great, man. Let's let's. So they they'd fight over each other to no longer be part of Carthage, which wouldn't do that, right? Or whatever empire they were, or their own you know rebellious nature. And it's like, no, 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 no. We want the Romans in here, man. We want the baths. We want the we want the we want the Colosseum, the mini Colosseum, right? We want we want the games. We want the free bread. We want the you know we want the prosperity of Rome here. And they'll give it to us if we just like get rid of these rebels. It's like, oh, fair yeah. enough. Like, okay, let's, you know, let's do that. Like, people don't, we don't understand in modern times. Like, no, they fought to be in Rome sometimes, not all the time, but they they would fight to be Roman cities and Roman yeah. citizens because that would guarantee security. You got it. Would guarantee there security. You go. There you go. That's uh... well, but also you have a nice life. You're part yeah. of this huge trading network all of a sudden. And there's all That's these it. wealthy people that are willing to move there to bring their wealth to you because they'd rather be a, a bigger fish in a smaller pond than hang out in Rome and be nobody, right? Like there's all kinds of benefits on both sides to both parties. That's what people don't like. Wealthy people love to expand their empire just so that they can be the, the, the big fish in the small pond. Like, it, yeah. you know, and, and that's not them being warlike. That's them saying, hey, if we had this pond, they would benefit and I would benefit. Like, why not? Everybody wins. Now, not everybody wins everything and keeps everything they had because everything's a trade-off. But on balance, if you were part of the Roman Empire, winning, tiger blood, you know, like, it's great. It's absolutely great. Why wouldn't you want to be part of the Roman Empire? One yeah. thing while Adam's here is, I'm not sure where I'm going with this, but it's a pattern I've observed is that Spain two out of three times acted first before big major world events happened. So you have in the 18th century before the French Revolution, you have the uprising in Spain with Goya and that whole thing, the revolt against the French crown, the French Napoleon's going to come down and try to sort things out. The British start coming in and start trying to mediate and play ball. That doesn't work so well for them for a while. Napoleon's there, like, oh, I'll do Russia at the same time. Why not spread my forces and yeah. run around? But the, the point is, before the French Revolution, Spain has its own revolution. And before World War II, you have another civil war within Spain going on with com the communist um, revolution starts happening down there. And that has its own thing that's kind of been hidden in time because you see a pattern of what's happening in that Spanish civil war that's happening now again. It's a like people are divided against themselves in their own country, and it's very different than what's going on in World War II. World II is a little bit more um, systematic. It's it's it's, yeah. it's it's two or three cultures in Spain for sure. Yeah, at least, at oh, least yeah. I think it's three. I don't yeah. think it's two. I think it's three different cultures, and that's what you're seeing is the manifestation of those cultures yeah. being improperly managed by being in a country without having a personal relationship with their leadership. And and yeah. that's the result of the collapse of the the modern system of monarchy. Like when the system mm -hmm. of monarchy is gone, you can't do this crazy thing with titles and castles and you know all that stuff. And it, the monarch can move around and then just be a different name in every place, but cater to the local regions and have local regional officials catering to those regions, right? So you don't have wars over over the money for example, right? Like you have in Spain, right? You have all these problems because of that. And, and 
you don't worry about things like Canada has this problem, right? One province makes all the money and the rest of the provinces, you know, there's a couple that are level. They don't contribute, but they're not a drain, right? But all the rest of the provinces are just a drain. And, and they hate the province that, that has the oil and drills the oil and makes all the money. They hate it. Well, well, just on the Canada thing, too, if you think Canadian, you're actually thinking a Burton, really. That's the culture that comes across. It's not It's not necessarily French Quebec, and it's not necessarily oh, it's um, Vancouver. It's you're thinking the culture. Yeah, well, there's four if you count Nova Scotia, too, which is the Dutch yeah. whole thing. That's very, very different. No, Nova so there's Scotia bo- English. It was it French was- and that was English. No, no, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia was all French. And Maybe I think in New Family. Sorry. In this... the War of 1812. In the War of 1812, the Brits kicked all the French out of Nova Scotia. And some of them moved back. So, yeah, they talk funny. They... I've been to Nova Scotia. They okay. talk funny. Okay. They talk real funny. I cannot figure out their accent. It's weird. I can I can say some of it. Like, Cape Breton. And I was like, what the hell is that? Cape right. Breton. Right? And they, what they meant was Cape Britain. But they call it Cape Breton. And I'm like, what? What the hell is that? Like, that's not even like it's not even like Scottish, you know, weirdness or Irish brogue or like it's it's way off the charts. It's way off the charts. So yeah, but yeah, my point was that there's there's when you think culturally, what is Canada? What is Canadian? It's not the thing that's most represented now. It's the Albertan Alpine sense. They don't have well, a culture, yeah, right? I mean, this is this is Colin Woodard's American Nations, right? And then things get renamed. So, like, one of the problems that we have in the United States is it's New York City. No, it's not. It's New Amsterdam. That's actually really important. Well, what? Why? Because the Dutch are this huge influence on the U.S. Because they did everything the U.S. did ten years earlier, the Revolution, the Constitution. They did all that in the Netherlands ten years before us. That's in Colin Woodard's book, American Nations, by the way. Quite a good book. Quite a good book. And then what happens is they fight with the Puritans because they're much more egalitarian and they're much more open. They're much more free, right? On the other hand, they're also the ones that bring slavery to the United States, even though they're in the North. So, uh, you know, the Dutch aren't aren't necessarily a neutral or or good force in the in in the United States. And and so part of the movements and the, and the Puritans and the Dutch long before the uh, revolution were fighting the whole way. Half of Connecticut was just battles. A bunch of uh, Long Island, so Northern Long Island and Southern Long Island are different because the Puritans got the North and the Dutch kept the South, right? It's all this stuff about migration to upstate New York. And then the bankers came in and like changed the money and stole all the land. And there's all kinds of wacky stuff going on. No one's been forgiven to this day, right? There's all kinds of, of stuff going on because of that. And, and that's, uh, that's part of the problem is that, you know, when you rename things like Nova Scotia, which wasn't originally called Nova Scotia, right? You lose, oh, there's a big French heritage. So you'll look at the names in Nova Scotia and you're like, wait a minute, half of these are Scottish names and half of these are French names. What's going on? Well, that's what's going on. The French were there. They got kicked out. The Scottish were moved in. They were moved in during the War of 1812, actually moved in by boats. And then Is that, that date the, again? Right. Well, because because the War of 1812 is that, you know, we think of it as like the Americans versus the, the Brits again, but it's not. It's, it's part of the larger war. The Americans just have this weird idea that there's such a thing as the American Revolution. And it's not. It's really the American rebellion within the larger war. That's really what's going on. And so... You don't understand how the culture happened because it was a rebellion and not a revolution. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die on that hill. right? We call it a revolution. It wasn't a revolution. It was a rebellion within a larger war. right? And then because of that, we were able to win because the basic strategy of France was keep them busy so that the colonies don't, you know, don't get overwhelmed and then we'll come in later and own the U.S. That was always their plan. You know, it was explicit. It was their plan 50 years later. They were still talking about it. They were still like, huh. yeah, this whole experiment they're doing ain't going to work. We're going to sweep in at any minute. They had very long time horizons back then. They didn't, you know, and, and that's the thing. They don't they don't really understand that. Like, we don't understand that today. Adam, yeah. do you have any thoughts on the Spanish thing? 
the Spanish question of well i was i was um having a look at what that whether you can kind of see that playing out at other time periods because yeah you have the you have basically a, a yeah some sort of revolution um so this is so, so the goya one you you're talking about i believe is is when napoleon puts his brother on the spanish throne and basically yep. kicks off the previous legitimate bourbon king mm -hmm. um and that causes basically a revolt because, of course, that you you know Napoleon's trying to pull off in uh, in Spain what he tried to do in France, mind you. And an interesting thing about that is the Spanish king allied himself with Napoleon. So what Napoleon was doing there is he was screwing over his ally, <laughs> just yeah. showing the quality of the man that you're dealing with, but also his plans. Um, so yeah, so so that that precedes the the, the kind of opening up of the large scale of the Napoleonic Wars before he, he sends it to Russia. And yeah, you have the Spanish Civil War before you have the Second World War. Another good um, uh, Roman um, uh, time period um, uh, f uh, kind of example of that, following that pattern, is uh, the Sertorian Civil War, or the, uh, the, the Sertorian War uh, before the Caesarian Civil War. So Sertorius is basically a leftover of Sulla uh, the, the civil war of Sulla over in Spain, and right. um, he, yeah, so so he um, he's fighting his his war there, and that and that that finishes off, and then you get Caesar's civil war about a decade or two afterwards. Yeah. Um, I think a miniature you 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 kind of have that in miniature again with Pompey being the governor of uh, Spain as well, and, and so you have this kind of reaching towards uh, Spain. The same thing if you want to count it. Because um, Spain is at the end of Europe, right? It's like the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Culturally yeah. speaking, yeah. And and yeah. because it's so, because you've got these different people groups in there, you need to have to, to get any coherence in the region. You have to that's have um, a a a governance that's kind of local to it. Um, another good example is before the Crusades, you have the Reconquista coming from the north of Spain inwards. And right, when, when the Pope that. issued yeah. the Bull of Crusade uh, for the First Crusade, he exempted anyone fighting already in Spain in, on, on the landmass of Hispania in, in Spain because they were already seen to be on Crusade. They were taking back Christian lands um, for the Moors. Wow. So in some sense, they were preempting the um, the long line of wars uh, to take to take the back Crusades. the Holy Land. Yeah. Wow. Well, and, and that's and that's part of so we we've talked about the French Revolution, right? And then the next talk that we're doing, the one that I have to get, get my ass in gear for, research wise, because Adam's way ahead of me, right? Is the, the whole idea? Well, where did the French Revolution, you know, come from in terms of? Well, it came from misunderstanding of the quote American Revolution, which again is the rebellion, right? Which came from somewhere. Well, that came from the English Revolution, which was a proper revolution. From well. Cromwell was that weird around that time period yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Around, okay. around that right and so it's sort of like once you see something can be done everybody tries it and so one of my one of my great Ooh. stories for this, right is is yeah well once you see the pattern you, you try to act it out I mean so you know if, if you haven't heard the French Revolution talk that Adam and I do on navigating patterns it's really good because we, we go over this and we're gonna we're gonna go to the beginning of it we're gonna go to the to the English Revolution to show you the beginnings of the American Revolution, so-called, which is really rebellion, and then, and then the misunderstanding of the French, right? Yeah. Uh, because that's really what it is. And once you understand it that way, it actually makes a lot more sense what happened and why it didn't work and why they're in their fifth republic and all that. But but there's other places you can see this too. So one of one of my great examples, I think I went over this on my, on my personal channel, right? It's just my name. Um, IBM back in the 90s, uh, did this thing called outsourcing. They they hired a bunch of firms in India to write software for them. And uh, they ran that project for about six months. They got some software back from India. It didn't work. They were terrible. They were like, oh, this is terrible. And they stopped doing it. Every single company in the world started outsourcing after that because IBM did it. It was like, well, but but it didn't work. The like, guys, what do you, why are you copying something that failed? And then outsourcing continued largely not entirely but largely fail for every company that tried it especially outsourcing software to india uh and that's no longer the same issue that it was uh they have much better software engineers now but it's also hard to manage remote teams and we've gotten better at that right you can 
specifications are better, right? There's all kinds of reasons why these things can fail. But I remember uh, working with a company and, and I actually, it wasn't even, it was my boss, but it wasn't my job. He's like, you need to call up the Indian development group and explain to them why none of their software is going to ship. And I was like, what? And then I'm like, why? And then he told me, what? Was. Like, oh, okay. Well, I'll talk to the manager down there and, and tell him. But people were following things because they didn't understand them. Like, like Napoleon, he didn't understand the American Revolution or rebellion. He didn't understand it. He didn't understand how things work. He thought he had a system down that would work. And it just turns out that he didn't understand what happened. He misread everything pretty much and tried to implement it and it failed. Well, he misreads it as a political matter when it's a cultural matter. Right. Like he looks well, at the politics, the power plays and influence and what it can do, missed, where it's mostly a mostly cultural. Right. Yeah. But well, I'm trying you, to, yeah, when, point again, to like I was saying, when you take culture and you try to squeeze it into politics, it doesn't work. Or economics, it doesn't work. When you try to say, no, we can, we can, we can, we can sort of find culture by taking uh, economics and politics and tradition. And no, you can't. No, you can't. It's a much bigger bucket. It's the larger bucket. You can't, you can't co-locate it or whatever by using these smaller frames. It's not going to work. You know, they do overlap for sure, but they don't overlap in ways that are going to make any sense to you. Because what's the sense in, 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 in the king of England having different titles in different parts of his kingdom. Well, it actually makes total sense once you understand what's going on, but you have to understand it in terms of culture. You can't understand it in terms of politics because politically it's a non-starter. Economically, it's a non-starter. Like it's no good, right? But once you understand the cultural thing, it's like, oh, now it makes sense that that's required and that that's part of the failure of Napoleon. He did not understand why the Holy Roman Empire, Emperor had different titles, because then the people can relate to you differently. And then you're just a revered leader, right, instead of being a tyrannical ruler. Yes. Well, I'm going to I'm going to head off because uh, it's very late here. So um, I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that and uh, see you guys later. God bless. Thank you. Nice to meet you. God, bless. God bless. Sleep well. Then there were two again. Two Muppets muppeting the live live seas of oh. cultural navigation alone. Where's Nero? Where's Nero? Where's my Nero? crazy friend? Where's Nero? Nero? Nero is not the Rebel Mountains are not represented by Nero or Blue Jay or No one's or, mentioned uh, the ecumenical uh, cheese pizza yet. Yeah, there's no ecumenical cheese pizza. It's uh it's kind of a mess. I don't know. People are busy, I guess. Good for them being out on a Friday night, unlike me. Although it's St. Patty's Day, I wouldn't go out there tonight. It's like no thanks. Right. It's uh, okay. it's too much like going that. on. It all the drunk people and yeah, I can't deal with it. I don't drink, so there's nothing for me on St. Patty's Day, my friends. Nothing. I'd well, that's a culture it itself, isn't it? The not drinking culture is a very interesting versus the drinking culture, and it. That wasn't so much. That was a. There was less of a distinction that. That's a distinction that's happened over time. Because it used to be the drinking was the rebellion thing in some sense, or was the way to keep warm during cold. Like, well, he I mean, I'm taking heavily drinking. I'm not saying alcohol. Yeah. Like in the old days, you drank. Uh, uh, you drank alcoholic beverages because water wasn't clean. So you know, you know. I, I like Ansel in here. Some cultural things are recent inventions. Nope, they're not. Pretending to be ancient. Well, yeah, they're trying to instantiate things into culture, such as the Welsh Druid thing and many Scots tartans and kilt. They're, they're trying to manipulate culture. I agree with that. I, I argue that you cannot manipulate culture. Like, that's not a thing that you can do. Not to say you don't have an influence, right? You don't have some minor control or, or, or better yet influence over it. But it is to say that you can't just resurrect the Druids, right, in a seance and have Druidic culture, especially when you don't know what it was. Like, it's not written down. Sorry, it's not there. This is like Morescu but, and, and the, mm, you know, and the mushroom mm. and the uh, illusion, Eleusinian mysteries. It's like, 
Except the religion that with you, no name. You cannot know any of that. It's impossible. And you could say, like John Verveke does, right? Well, we'll 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 recreate it. No, you won't. Not possible. Why? Because culture grows up at a time and in a place. And you're not there. Even if you're in that place, you're not there. Now you can argue if you get into that place, maybe you can get a sense for blah, but you'd have to live like they lived back then to even approximate it. And just because you come up with something doesn't mean it's going to be what they came up with. Because it's not like every place and time gives you only one possible solution. Like potential is real. So the fact that like like the fact that you figured out how to how to tie something together in a certain way using a certain a certain tactic doesn't mean that's how the ancients did it. Like they might have found something that you could never dream of. Like, and that happens all the time, right? Uh, you see, like there's various ways that you can build the pyramids with people. I don't know which one's right. I know there are at least four different methods that people have put forth, all of which are feasible, right? And but we don't we don't know which way that the Egyptians did it. We have no idea. Well, depends. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's a train to train of thought to jump on. Well, but that but that's what I mean yeah. about culture yeah. is specific to the time and the place. Yes. And you can't just, so is ideology. Right. You can't just invoke it. An ideology is basically a cult. It's just yes. it's not. Yes. It's another yeah. attempt to manipulate culture. Or it's another attempt to top down control something that you are. Witnessing. I would say bottom up. No, Ideologies. no, you're, no. You're trying well, to top down uh, control. Okay. Right. Right. Yeah. But you're embedded in the thing, and so it doesn't yeah. work. Like, which yeah. is not to say it can't. You can't get a lot of people to go along for a long time. It's just to say it's not sustainable. And because it's hmm. not sustainable, it's not good. Well, tradition is that which is, sustains people, right? A tradition is part of the thing that helps people sustain in terms of participation in the thing. Yeah. Uh-oh, Hanselman's get, still talking here. Charles, now King Charles' investiture as Prince of Wales was sort of mythological invention. Well, yeah, but myth is good. Like, it's the best part of the world, is myth. It, it's the thing that connects everything, right? Like, that's... That's the thing. Like, there would be princes and kings of different lands. This is just there always were. Here. Like, yeah. like I said, go look at the the titles of the Holy Roman Emperor. Then we'll chat. Each different place has a different title for a reason. There's a reason for this. It's an important reason. It's significant. Oh, Masters of the Universe. Here we go. He man. Very important. Gotta bring it up. Gotta bring it up. Bring it up. Well, that's a culture. That was a culture of a, that was a mythological uh, reconnection of different things together. Right, right, exactly. Which was lost in the eighties, big boom, materialism, which we still haven't left. If we want to look, if we want to sort of navigate. No, no, and talk. materialism is the scourge. I think that's where Gnosticism comes from. We saw this very interesting channel. Uh, one of our one of our peeps on the Discord server introduced me to this channel called esoterica quite a good youtube channel okay. i haven't i haven't really engaged all that heavily yet but like he goes into stoicism and his framing's a little off it, it should be obvious when you see the, the video but he also did one of william blake that's excellent um he goes into stoicism and he basically says well stoicism was really hardcore material and blah 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 blah, blah. and oh by the way there's all, all this mystical tradition that nobody ever talked about and i was like oh Okay, that's what's going on. There was all this mysticism in the, that the Stoics engaged in that nobody ever talks about. Michael, welcome. I put you in the corner. I know nobody puts baby in a corner, but I put Michael in the corner. What you got for us, sir? I was looking lonely in here, so I figured I'd uh, crash the party. Oh, it's good to see you. Welcome. Good to see you too, sir. Uh -oh. Uh oh, the language Welsh or in Scotland Gaelic is an authentic continuation. Well, yeah, sure. But culture changes over time. It's specific to a time and place. It keeps it. It's to Jesse's point. It's the tradition that keeps it intact to some extent. It's not that traditions can't change or don't change or, or won't change. They will, but 
that is that unbroken line that, that outlasts generations to, to give you that continuous sense. Well, the Christmas tradition is a 18th century Charles Dickens thing, which is slowly right. fading away now. It's literally yes. going to go back to a just a Christian mm -hmm. holy day, essentially. It's no longer going to be a culturally embodied thing in the West. It's slowly, yeah. you can see it with people saying, I won't go home for Christmas, or we don't have Christmas with family anymore. So those sort of things that made up that tradition, buying gifts, right. why should we spend money? It's, you know, you, yeah. see, you see these kind of like, what are they, like poking holes in the bucket yeah. to slowly, it slowly leaks out the water that's so of the tradition. Yeah. Even, even that though, you don't, don't you think that that's going to uh, survive in, in some kind of like American South Trump principality thing that will at least yeah. pitter on for another hundred yeah. years? No, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think Jesse's dead on, and and it, it, it's these little things that people miss, right? So to go back to what Father Eric was asking about, you know, mm -hmm. is there an American culture? Okay, the busiest travel day of the year in America is before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. not Christmas, not Easter. Why not? How weird! That doesn't make any sense at all. Except that Thanksgiving is a holiday of the country. Mm -hmm. It represents the value and the virtues of the country. Thanksgiving is all about the celebration of the Indians bringing us food, you know, in Plymouth so that they survive. Mm -hmm. There's lots of reasons why that happened, by the way, but that is the, that's the busiest travel day. That's the holiday. That's the holiday in the United States. That's the, the American culture is Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, so let's say Thanksgiving is the top of the hierarchy, right? So it's like for, for whatever that is, right? Whatever that blob of a, of a thing of mash of this, this, these mashings together of these peoples, the Puritans, the Dutch, the whatever, right? So this mashing together, uh, if Thanksgiving is at the top, you know, what's like the next few pieces right below it? Well, it's still, that's the, that's the Christian ethos. That's the Easter and, and, and Christmas and right. So, so, so those are the next busiest, busiest travel days. Do, do you think it's fair to say that Thanksgiving, like that? Can we that just insert moment? that Christmas is an English thing? Yeah. Which is very like interesting to point out. Like the Christmas yeah, yeah. thing is an English thing. And right. Thanksgiving is the American thing. Well, and so that's well, except, as the English yeah. spirit is being drawn out like a vampire from the, the Americas. Yeah. Yes, that's where you, right. it's, maybe it's better to frame it well, that and way. It, and and in it, and in America, it's tainted with this German tradition, which 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 well, tainted even, the English tradition. Right, it went yeah, back to yeah, England yeah. from the from Germany. So that came from Germany, actually. So when when uh, Anglo-Saxon, yeah. If I try to describe it as, uh, you know, some kind of American uh, uh, modernity, uh, Protestantism hybrid of a thing, whatever that is, that has Thanksgiving at the top, right? That mm -hmm. that we're watching even that as as a, a value or as a, as a hierarchy of values and hierarchy of traditions or holidays or whatever right like that's dissipating into something else here right no no not at all it's the okay. differentiator for us it's not i mean that's the height of american culture is thanksgiving it's the height of so, america. That's the thing that points up so i what i'm trying to point at is something like um the liberal bubbles that I lived in in the Northeast, uh, right, they're remapping a new set of holidays, getting rid of any kind of like Christian patriarchy, blah, 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 right? So well, they're trying. They're trying, right. Um, so I'm operating on the premise that they're being progressive, <laughs> excuse the term, progressively more successful at that. No, uh, they're failing miserably and it continues to fail. And the more they try, the more it fails. There, there's it's marketing. A it's marketing. It's yeah, marketing. marketing. It's all it it's is. Temporary. It's just marketing. It's 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 failed propaganda, and it's already failing. Like it's not even like it, it didn't have the effect they thought, because they're postmoderns. They don't understand how anything works. 
Well, there's a there's also a sense in which uh, uh, it it fails the way that Puritanism fails, and yet it you know whatever that whatever that thing yeah, Puritanism is, Puritanism hasn't failed. It's got five hundred years of success. Yeah, but Puritanism is still in New England, like very much. Very, it's I not agree. everywhere. And it, it right. also no, no. And I, but look, Michael, is, I think what uh, you're but what you're but what you're seeing is what we were I'm talking about. Earlier. Right, there's that high culture and that low culture, and Jesse pushed back, right? You know, rightly, mm -hmm. which is fine, right? And he says, "Well, well no, no, the, the high culture just like manipulates," and I'm like, "No, no, no, it doesn't manipulate farmers at all." I was farmers trying to draw in Matthew Peugeot's symbolic world where you right. have no, top no, and bottom, and they make the bottom is meant to reflect the top. No, no. Yeah, absolutely. But the thing in the middle, the people that go to museums but don't make art, the mm -hmm. city folk, the city folk. Mm -hmm. Right, the city folk—they not medi they don't mediate, subject, but they're subject to fashion. And we're looking at the well, yeah. fashion, going, "Look at that fast changing fashion!" And it's like, "Well, it's just a fad. It's a fad." Well, a lot of the art these days is made to fit too. They're like, "We need a certain work like and this to fill this space." They're trying, they're trying to manipulate this the, the the system, right? But you can't manipulate culture for very long. That's why we have a war in Ukraine. Because they couldn't hold three different cultures together in one boundary, arbitrary boundary drawn on a map with a government in the middle. They couldn't do it. And you just look at Ukraine. You can see that this is impossible. The whole thing was being propped up by graft and corruption from day one. There was never a moment when Ukraine was independent from, from, from the Soviet Union that it didn't exist without money laundering, graft, corruption, governments going back and forth and fighting the whole, it was never a stable place at the top level because there were three cultures fighting for the land. It just doesn't work. Yeah, it can last a long time, more generations than we think, but it's still just a fashion. Well, people um, want it too. I was trying to, I'll say explicitly, you like, that that whole thing that was happening in Spain with multiple rules, multiple cultures, multiple sectors have different influences. That's that's that pattern playing out again, right? It's important to distinguish because we're having that. I would say I would argue that we're having that in Australia just as much as we're having that in America. Sure. There's these multiple cultures, and then who has the most amount of resonance left is going to be an interesting. Well, that's it's going to be an interesting thing. Well, to watch. I, I don't know. Yeah. Resonance isn't isn't going to happen. It's not. Not gonna happen. The whole well, thing's gonna, I'm gonna trying gonna to map apart. it in a nice way. I'm gonna map it in a gonna nice go way. Back to, they're gonna go back to the last stable point. That's what happens. Things collapse yeah. very quickly. Yeah. Integration yes. only works in the middle, and then integration fails and it collapses completely. And then and then you go back to something stable. Like that happens in computers all the time. It happens in everything. It's a, it's a deep pattern. But that's the problem, is that, that you know, in some sense, we're always in that Kairos moment, right? The other hand, you can't say that because the Kairos moment you can only recognize with hindsight. So you can't claim to be in the Kairos moment. Uh, but but there's always that that change. And I think the problem is, and this is one thing that Adam and I talked about in our last talk that is less about history. We'll say, although we dragged in quite a bit of history, probably my fault, um, that when you look around at the world, what you see is fashion. And then you mistake that fashion for a lasting change because you don't know any better. It's very hard to tease apart what's fashion from what's going to stick. You don't, you don't really know. But Europe thinks they're following America. America thinks they're following Europe, right? But again, if you go to somebody in the United States and you say, did you know most of the electricity in France is nuclear power? They're not going to believe you. They're going to think you're lying, especially if they're on the left. Uh, because they're very skeptical of that anything like that could be true in Europe, right? If you tell them there are European countries without gay marriage, they're going to tell you you're a liar. They had gay marriage years before us. Not true. Uh, that didn't happen. Uh, I think the UK had something close, and I think it was Norway. It was one, one of the Scandinavian countries had it before us. That's it. The rest of Europe didn't get gay marriage till long after we passed it. Nobody in the United States knows that. Nobody. Nobody. They have no idea. And so what's ended up happening is that Europe, which is a much more fragile place than people realize, is collapsing much more quickly and in, in a much more destructive way than, than the U.S. is. 
right? And then you see that with Ukraine, although it's well, not French be riots visible. too. Well, yeah, well, yeah the, French, the yeah. French have been freaking protesting for like four or five years now, yeah. or something, continuously, yeah, yeah. and nobody in the U.S. knows this. We all think Europe's really stable, and I'm like, Europe's really unstable. Like, there's stuff going on. Like, like in Sweden, they finally had an attack in Gothenburg, which is one of the big cities. They had a big bombing there. They've had bombings and fires going on in Sweden for decades, and nobody paid any attention because it was in these small Muslim neighborhoods. And so it didn't affect the white population that much because they, they had sequestered off their immigrants, but now they're running out of space. And so now the immigrants are moving into the city, and now it's a problem, and the same is true in France. Those ghettos can't hold. There's just too many Muslim ghettos with 50% unemployment rates. And by the way, has France ever had anybody anywhere in the government that wasn't white? Because I don't think so. And if they did, it's been very, very recent. That is a very, from a, from a if you want to measure it from a political standpoint, it's a very racist country politically. I don't think that's a valid way to measure it. But by our standards, we've had a black president, guys. I don't think they've had a, a, a non-white member of any part of their government ever in France. Like, I'm sorry. It's from our standards, they're hugely racist. You know, and that's from when racism meant something. We'll say back before Obama was president, when he ruined that word for us, right? So, Mark, we, we don't know this, though. I'm particularly like, curious on the way that you think we are, or like the American West, I guess, is or isn't going through a Tower of Babel split? No, we're going through con construction. It's the other right way around. Yeah. Not well, we, yeah, we're I constructing mean, a Tower of Babel. Yeah, the Tower bad. of Babel is a construction, not a destruction. Right, It's a building up. So, like, right, so it's like uh, they can't understand each other anymore, even with the same language, right? There's a... There's a no, we're not there yet. No, we're, we're, not, we're still yeah, we're, still, we're, we're nowhere near because we're still trading. We're still, yeah, trading. we're still trading. Once we stop trading, trading is a language, right? Right. I'll give you this for this, this value for this. I say this word and you interpret it this way, and you know what I mean. When when people lose faith in the in the dollar, right? In the US, in the US, not the other countries, those don't matter quite so much. When people in lose faith in, in the ability to trade in the dollar, and that might be happening now with the Bitcoin price yeah, going back up, right? Then, then we're talking about an event. Now, whether or not that can actually happen is a different discussion. I, I actually expect that so, it's not. So but that's a I'm not problem. saying like it has happened. I'm I'm saying like we're watching it happen. I don't I don't I don't think so. I, I mean okay. I think again you can make the case. You can look at Bitcoin right now. And say, well, that's weird because that actually is weird, right? The last time everybody thought Bitcoin was go up would go up was the, the beginning of the war, and they said, "Ha, the dollar is weak, and therefore Bitcoin is strong," because they don't understand how economy or money works, right? They just have a bad model for both, and so they didn't understand that. No, uncertainty means all currencies go down. Period. <laughs> right now, if your country doesn't have uncertainty because they have what they need, then maybe you get around that, but. The downside of having the dollar as the world currency is that the uncertainty of all the other countries brings down your dollar, and that's what happens. That's basically literally what happened, right? So, me, so it's like distributive cognition in some sense, right? It is. So let me let me try at a different angle. Do you think that something like a Tower of Babel problem happened to Russia with the rise of the the Bolsheviks, right, in the, the Soviet Empire, and like no. do you used to see that as the same thing. Not even close. No, because okay. the Bolsheviks were anarchists, revolutionaries that were brought in on purpose as anarchists and revolutionaries to do the okay. hard work that Trotsky didn't want to do, right? Because yes. man, if we if we actually revolt, we might get hurt. I know there's a bunch of rabble rousers called anarchists, which have been used for literally thousands of years for this purpose. You send them up because they're angry and they'll, they're crazy anyway, and you have them do the hard work. And they did. And then, of course, Trotsky and the, and the organized team, like an organization always beats anarchy, always, instantly. They come so in and slaughter them all and take over. When, you, when there's a body, right, of people with shared values and shared ideas, and then um, there is enough things that happen to where 
they don't see those values the same way anymore, right? And they, they yeah, find they, themselves they, having- They never, they were never cohesive. Like this is the uh, They find themselves having irreconcilable differences, right? Yeah, but they were never have. cohesive. They were yeah, never cohesive. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, I'm good with that. So yeah. anybody, right, that that is cohesive, right, there, we can't imagine a splitting, right, that that is a thing that happens. Yeah. No, 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 that's what culture okay. prevents. Yeah, well, I, so, do, I want to address this, though. Benjamin Franklin, speaking of Tower of Battle, have you guys seen the movie Metropolis? Yes, the movie Metropolis is excellent, right? right? And then he says, there was a silent movie and also an anime movie that came much later that subverted certain... Yeah, people are always yeah. subverting the elements of story, right? And so they're extracting how you get attention patterns, and they're expressing those narrative patterns differently. There's nothing wrong with that. I could point to The Matrix, and maybe, Jesse... Maybe we need to do that, right? We need to do the matrix, you and I, right? Maybe we'll just I I, Mark, I've got it. some spicy notes. I've got some spicy notes on that movie. Has anyone I actually just, read the, the lyrics to Rage Against Machines Wake Up? Just reading the no, lyrics to I Rage Against Machines. If you lyrics. read those lyrics, because that's how the matrix ends. It ends on those wake up lyrics. That's and those right. lyrics that's are right. damn spicy. They're maybe not good yeah. for internet, put it that way. Well, in this yeah, but they frame that movie brain. very interesting, like once well, you understand. The whole, yeah. yeah, the whole framing changes. But I think this, Michael, is where the confusion is. People see a movement and they assume a body. Not all movements are bodies. Emergence is not good. Emergence is just emergence. It will happen. Mm -hmm. And so you can look at the Bolsheviks and say, ha, ah, the Bolsheviks had values and, and all this stuff in common. And they moved as a body and took out. That didn't happen. It would just I think the word, of, better word is a tribe. They were there were different tribes that were trying to go along together for power in Russia. Really? And this is same thing happened in Catherine the Great's time. There were different tribes in Russia trying yeah. to influence and change the government. That yeah. same like the Russian Revolution echoed like two hundred years earlier. The, the same set of patterns and problems so, so you have water, right? And you've got oceans, which are a large body of water. Right. And then you have like a puddle, which is a small body of water. The oceans are a container. Yeah, the oceans are a big container. That's, that's, and, and, and we uh, we have understood these things through time as being bodies of water. Right. Whether it's a puddle, a lake, an ocean or whatever, it's a it's a body of water. No, because right? a body has to have action. For, for yeah, you to establish what a body is, it has to be making an action in the world. Well, it, it I know there's a, a cycle of precipitation and water moving, but that's right. like a that's more of a spirit. But, than but it has body. to have a cohesion. Like water has a cohesion. You know what doesn't have a cohesion? The Bolshevik Revolution doesn't have a cohesion. It's just not. So, it's so, just a bunch of. Well, look, 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 hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me talk about this because this came up today. Elon Musk tweeted out a cartoon, a brilliant cartoon. There's a bunch of people on a subway car. They all have little bubbles over their head. There's only one bubble at the top with words in it. So there's like five people, six people on the subway car. They've all got bubbles. They're thinking about, they're thinking exactly the same thing, right? Which is when the current government turns to ashes, my utopia will emerge. It's, it, that's not the right wording. I can't find it, but that's basically what it is, right? Those people are not a body. They all have the same proximal goal. I've talked about proximal goal before many times on my channel, Navigating mm -hmm. Patterns. It's there, right? When you have a bunch of people that want to bring down the government, they look like they have the same goal because their proximal goal is to bring down the government. But what happens after that is not the same. So they weren't a body. They never had a, a common telos. They just had a common proximal aim. And we mistake those two things because we've disenchanted the world. So um, uh, any collection of bodiness, right? So like if, if uh, the three of us right now, there is, a, there is a sense in which just the three of us hanging out doing this, right, is a body, right? There's a sense in which that's the case. It's community there. Sure. No, we, yeah, not, not necessarily, right? So, that's part so of the problem. But, um, well, however me and Mark are friends, but... I don't, we're we're not a community because no, we're no. like it's like, here's, here's it's, a, it's a different um, yeah we are not in other places we're here right there's yeah. three of us on a screen together 
right? Instead of on other screens or not at a computer or all the other. Yeah, yeah, but you can't you can't say every gathering is a body. It's That's not okay. every That's gathering okay. is not a body. That's okay. Um, so well, well, so, but, but, but you're pointing to gathering and saying gatherings are bodies, and they're good, not. Good. Okay. So if we if we want to to uh, have specific lexicons to describe to different like sizes or something i'm good with that no i don't i don't care about size i care about whether or not it's a body a body is a common telos and non-bodies do not and it's that simple so it's really okay. not a difficult thing it, but, it, but it is a differentiation that's important I'm, I'm good with the differentiation so let's say this gathering okay right rather than having necessarily shared values there there is a sharing that is happening here but, right. it, but it matters whether it's shared values. Like, this is my whole point. I'm no, good. really, it's T-loss. T-loss makes I'm, bodies. Non-T-loss doesn't make bodies. Totally good with that, right? And so we have a lower level. There's a sense in which there's a lower level of sharing that's happening here. Like, like I'm saying things, you're hearing them, I'm listening to you, or we're doing this conversation, right? Yeah, yeah. All right. So whatever the sharing and the gathering that's happening here, mm -hmm. right? Um, I see, I, I, like to me, when I think about the divine council as such, right? Mm -hmm. the, even this gathering is, is mapped on this divine council at the lowest, uh, like really small levels, right? There is a yep. spirit of this conversation right there might be a spirit of the conversation but that doesn't make it a body now I, I i'm not trying to say that it is necessarily a body right what's the point okay. what are you trying to get to? what's the way what are you trying to get to Cause... okay so let's say there's 10 of us right mm -hmm. and, there's a, and so we there's a shared there's a sharing there's a gathering and then at some point Right. There's a, a, a irreconcilable differences about what whatever was bringing us together makes it. No, I won't be on this conversation with those five people. We have to split off to our own conversation with the other five people. It's irreconcilable. We don't hear each other. We don't understand each other. Right. Mm -hmm. So this it, the the ungathering all right or the splitting and gathering we'll just say that there's splitting and gathering something like tribalization that. sure sure right and if we don't want to call tribes bodies i'm cool with that but no, the tribes bodies. are different tribes are cool. separating of the body yeah. right I'm, I'm good with it right uh and so there is a uh, uh but the but it has a gatheringness and it has a sharingness right so not relevant but true it's just not yeah, relevant so the, so the reason the, the reason i'm doing this is because I'm, I've, I've been put in a corner in order to try to use particular language to try to convey a concern that i'm noticing as having lived in a completely separate reality three years ago yeah yeah that is irreconcilable to the but reality not, that I live now. Yeah, it's not it's not irreconcilable. But 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 let me let me let me let me deal with that separate. So first, here's the here's the cartoon, which I just I think is brilliant, right? I can't wait for society to collapse so my ideology can rise triumphant from the ashes. This is what's going on. Like, look at these people, they're not even talking to each other. And and their ideology is different in every case. That's kind of implied, right? But that, that's important. And then I, I want to address. I want to address Benjamin here. Was the American Revolution also done by anarchists? Only partially, right? Uh, because it wasn't a revolution, it was a rebellion. Like, it's actually really important. It's an important distinction. It's part of a larger war. Like, there wasn't a war from the US to England. It was, it was the French trying to get a hold of the British colonies in North America. That's what was happening. That war had been going on for a long time. Was it the Seven Years' War? I don't remember, Adam. Adam went to bed. No, no I don't have my... I don't have my dictionary with me or my encyclopedia of history with me uh, in the moment. And there, there, is a, there is a spirit of anarchy in every revolution, right? Because you need the anarchists because they're brave enough and dumb enough to go and do and battle and lose their lives, right? Because they're ideologues, right? And then 
And the thing that made it successful, you need to go to navigating patterns and you need to watch the freaking video on the French Revolution where we where Adam and I talk about this. Now I now I have to post that. I have to post that link. But but I also want to want to sort of continue, right? So what was the philosophical basis and and the writers and intelligentsia? What one the American rebellion worked mostly because of enlightenment understandings within a Christian context. When the reason why the why Napoleon fails, and this we go into in that video that I did with Adam on the French Revolution, is because he doesn't understand enlightenment values at all. He thinks they're apart from the from 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 Christianity, and they're not. All right. And if the Bolsheviks wrote about and thought more, no. The Bolsheviks weren't a thing, okay? They weren't a body ever. We do that and we're wrong. It just didn't we're happen. Tribe. They're a tribe of anarchists who only identify against the, the king. They or you know, the, the ruling part, the, the, the ruling uh, family. That's it. That's all they are. They all have different goals. Every single one of them. That's why when they got power, they collapsed immediately. That they were manipulated when they eventually got power did. too, because they had to. Right. There's all these, all these stages, and you have all these Trotsky, trade-offs are trying to be. Yeah, Trotsky yeah. They, knew what he was doing. They, they mm. they're not idiots. They're much smarter than you think. He knew what he was doing. He was rabble rousing on purpose. I mean, Peterson kind of goes into some of this, right? Where he says, "Oh, the kulaks," you know, and and he goes into that story. But ultimately, all they were were a bunch of anarchists who only wanted not this. They didn't want this. They wanted not what we have now. It's an identification against, and it cannot hold because it doesn't form a body that can hold. All right. Actually, proximity may have something to do with it. They were built against. Con no, it, it's not. It's not proximity. It, it really the, is. Okay. Once, once the Russians, once those certain, the certain group of elites of Russians gain power, one of the first things that they do, right? They debank and they dechurch two stable cultures in Russia that right. were holding it together. Right. Because ob obviously m money is a culture. It's a value system. Right. So they and had problems with that, and they had to basically force money to come to them through different means and gain money through other... And the other thing that was holding Russia together, right, was the church, the patriarchy, another symbol of the kingdoms, right. which they pulled down. So it's actually a cultural revolution. It's not a political revolution. And w when you don't map that, don't see that as a spirit sort of trying to influence events and times, if you just see it as materials, you you misappropriate the patterns and signals. Right. You just exactly. tend to see things as just as events exactly. rather than shifts in culture, which mm -hmm. matter far more. Because you can start to map that out through different uh, times, times in history. Um, right. Where am I going with this? No, that was that was well. When said. you change, when those when those changes in culture happen, the changes in tradition, it changes changes transition culture and tradition, and that transition of traditions is what really affects people, everyday people. Because they no longer have that thing that was sustaining them going forward, right? And that's, that's why it doesn't. It takes Russia all the way up until the 1990s to finally have a tradition of itself again, because it's so dis destabilized. And it took right years. So, Mark, I think that maybe I understand a little bit better what you're getting at. I'm going to try to articulate what I think I hear. Okay. Sure. So the the way I would map this uh, uh, on Christian terms is something like. Um, You've got these different, like maybe you got Christianity, or you got like a like a let's say a cult of Yahweh, and you got a cult of Apollo, you got a cult of Dionysus, and you have these things, and in, in a sense, like you can see what is constructively built with those. The Christians would argue that these other cults are ultimately uh, uh, headed towards death, right? But th but they but they build and coalesce or something, versus something like the like anti-logos, right, which only only looks to resentfully destroy what is there, right? It is it is it is only a pulling apart in resentment, 
right? So if there's like Christ and Antichrist, Antichrist only tears down, inevitably implodes and, and you know, turns into mm. nothing, right? That Subversion, is, though. It's not a tearing down because yeah. you can have an Antichrist sure. or an antibody mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. just, right. its only means is just, just to subvert. Just as right. it's all it needs to do to exist well, or to, to survive like a parasite, right? For a parasite to survive, it only needs to do basic yeah. options, basic so, functions. It only, like the fish that's swimming on top of the whale, right? They're mm -hmm. essentially like a parasite that exists because of, because of the larger body of the whale. So all they have to do is to survive is to stay within that body. But they're not they're not taking or adding or contributing anything to it. I, I'm not yeah, I'm not yeah. saying they are. I, I I think I think that we're pointing at the same thing. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I think the the, the fundamental problem I have is that there is an asymm and people keep using symmetrical models. We don't live in a symmetrical world. Like we couldn't, there'd be as much matter as antimatter and we wouldn't exist. It's that simple. Sorry, it is. It's in physics, it's it's everywhere. And so it's an, there's an asymmetry between building and destroying. Just, mm -hmm. They're asymmetrical, right? So either you identify four, in which case you can build with others, right? Or mm -hmm. by yourself. You can't build by yourself if you're not identifying four, mm -hmm. right? Or you can identify against. And identifying against is more powerful in that the amount of things you can do or stuff to cause happen, although it's all negative, is greater with less effort. And so you're much more powerful as an anarchist, period. That's why people like to be calling themselves anarchists. They, they like it. They're like, ooh, anarchists have power. They're the ones that brought down the whole Russian family. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. But then they all got killed. By some misappropriation that the Russian family brought itself down. If you actually study the history, you see that well, it was the mistakes then, of, um, of certain mistakes over time compound that uh, lead up to certain I, 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 kind of sort of, but again, you, you need well, to I'm saying people miss they just say it was just this one influence, which is what right, I'm right. No, no, trying was, to say. Right, yeah, exactly. Right. That's what I'm trying to say. There's yeah. multiple the multiple yeah. different things. Think Only a little thing has to survive. To yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah. I've got this theory. I, I don't, I don't, I lost it in my head years ago, unfortunately, but I had this theory that things have to have at least three components to happen. <laughs> right. And that's at all, at all time, energy, scale. attention. No, 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 not T. <laughs> uh, but they have to have, in other words, they have to fulfill an egoic need. They have to fulfill <laughs> a, a, a community need and they have to fill, like, there's a larger frame, right? They have to fill at least and there's Spiritual. probably five frames and the, the, there's some balance, right? In there, I had this all mapped out years ago and I, I don't think I wrote it down. So unfortunately, it's gone from my head. It'll come back someday. But I think, yeah, that's part of the problem is we, we do these proxies. Did Mark just drop out? Was it me? I think so. Oh, huh. where are you from, Michael? Uh, I live in Texas. Oh, nice. But we'd not have guessed that. Oh, you're back, Mark. The internet cut yourself off. We can Cut. see you move, but we can't hear you. Navigate the pattern, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the meantime, well, one, one of the things I'm curious about, right, since it's sort of like an anti-pattern or an anti-body, you know, just that anti I'm not sure if you can have, sorry, you can't, I'm not sure if you can have an anti-pattern. It's just an alternate pattern. <sighs> Maybe, right? Still can't hear you. Try we do love you, Mark. Oh, well, at least I do. So uh, I don't feel a need to die on that hill, but one reason why yeah. I'm at it being yeah. an a anti pattern is like nothing. It, it, it's not, since it's not constructive, it's also like sort of not a pattern in a way, right? It's only anti. Whatever it is, it's just an anti, right? But again, not a hill I would die on. Uh, That's why I was trying to point to the subversion. The subver like the the marketing trick is to make you think that it's not marketing. Sure, right? yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, and that's why I mean it's like you're saying it. They're saying you know, brush your teeth this way, 
it's just a different form of brushing mm -hmm. the teeth. Yep, yep, yep. Agreed. Right. Agreed. But it's it's yeah. not it's not There's anti no brushing your teeth. No yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is he back? Uh, we have you? It seems like it. I think I'm back. We'll see. Yes. That was three power outages in like four and a half seconds. I don't know what there the hell go. is going on. There's a storm here, although it's a really minor storm for the south. But I, I, I've i never, that's never happened. The power usually doesn't go out, come back, go out, come back, go out, come back. But first time for everything. One of these days I'll be able to afford a uh, whole house uh, battery system. It will never happen again. Do it. So it, it strikes me that when when some bodies, actual bodies, let's say, notice that that kind of corruption is there, that they might try to wall it off, sometimes by actually building a wall. That's only natural because that's the know. container problem. Yeah, I don't I don't think bodies notice things. Like I think that's part of the problem. Like because it's it the you need the head problem. to take the action. Like the the fact that the let's let's suppose that that uh anybody had access to the fact of a particular um election being stolen, right? Mm -hmm. In any country, it doesn't matter, right? They may or may not do anything about it, like right, because they need a leader. Like you can't just you, in order to subvert the, the leader that's there, you need mm -hmm. a different leader, right? You need, and you need some mechanism behind that that's going to make that happen. And these are complicated things. It's not, mm -hmm. you, you can't, you can't treat the body as though it's capable of doing something without the head. I, that's I, the I agree. I, at best, I, you know, it's like maybe there's like some kind of reactionary thing, right? That happens, but it's, it, it seems like, uh, there's it's a repurposing that's what you're sure, trying yeah. to get towards maybe right? yeah maybe. because this is why i'm trying to keep pushing in the block of subversion like when you retell yeah. a story and change half of the patterns it's no longer the same story anymore right. there's mm -hmm. a, there's an adequate amount of retelling the story and making fine adjustments that right. keeps the spirit the resonance of the story going forward but there's a cut. There is a wall, right? There is a definitive point to say you've now subverted the story. Yeah, yeah, right. Like the story so, no longer has a body like, to use your like, language. No longer has like a the telos. Matrix. Well, like the same here, like the Matrix. Yeah. Well, the example I was going to use is we just watched um, the movie Clueless, which is a retelling of Jane Austen's novel Emma. And if you want to know subversion, watch Clueless. I can't talk about it all online. But that movie is subversive down to its core. If there's so many different subversions, and they're, they're very minor, but there's a certain point where you notice the film, sorry, that is like, this is no longer retelling Emma anymore. This is doing its own thing with its own telos. Hmm. And it comes back at the other to give you the full sense of like, oh, it's still Emma at the end of, end of the day because the characters fall in love, will get back together. It's like, no, 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 this is no longer retelling the story. You started with that premise, but it's almost got nothing to do yeah. with that same story right well, and, and i want to go all parasites must eventually try to become symbiote no they that's not true it's not even remotely true observably false uh it does not want to trigger white blood cells well maybe it doesn't want to and maybe it won't because it's a good parasite the body must also benefit no it doesn't parasites exist uh no gut bacteria are not parasites although you can have parasites in your gut that are bacteria Right or mitochondria? Now mitochondria is a different case. Nope, bad science, dude. Bad science. Sorry. And uh, similarly, if you are a hunter gatherer, you want your wild game to breed. No, you don't even concern yourself with that. Uh, you don't want to hunt too much. No, nah, I mean most cultures hunted everything to extinction. So you you say that, but actually that never happens. And this is one of the like people say like, oh, it's just hard. But they're, they're not there. You can't contain you nature. Nature is by definition uncontainable. And and look, you can want your your you can want your your deer to breed all day long, and if the climate changes enough, and it has, they're not going to breed, and it has nothing to do with you. It's totally like these 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 things about we're in control are foolish. We're not in control. We have very little control. We have some influence, right? And 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 in the U.S., we have a long history of like there's state parks everywhere and federal parks everywhere, right? And that's wealthy people wanting to preserve nature for everybody. Fair enough. Like, you know, mostly for themselves because they mostly benefit. 
but everybody else also benefits. So, you know, maybe give the wealthy people their lodges in the Catskills that are gorgeous, you know, on these tracts of land that are never going to be touched uh, because we'll all benefit. And that, and that happens. Uh, and that's why they're not parasitic. Like, this is the problem when you think corporations are parasitic, you know, or corporations are in control of the government to an unprecedented level. Historically wrong. Like, I don't even know where people are getting this bullshit from. It's bullshit. You're being lied to. The East India Company was so large, we don't have companies a tenth that size. We don't have companies a hundredth of that size. They're yes, just okay, historically stuff. lying and being lied to. It's just wrong. Things were way worse in the past along any measure you care to, to, to try. Look at the Middle Ages. Them will chat. Like everybody was poor. Like there was a time in world history where 12 families owned almost all the wealth. Mm -hmm. Almost all 12 families worldwide. All of it. It's insane. And we're bitching about now. Come on. Come on. We have internet, man. We have internet. So I'm trying to understand how you see the... Um the anti as it plays out right it's so, chaos yeah totally right but it's, it's chaos like, you don't see it as it plays out you think you see patterns in chaos and then you go aha and then you're wrong because it's chaos and then you go aha well you you're can wrong it's chaos and then you go aha and then you're wrong because it's chaos like mm -hmm. hasn't that been the past five years so or hasn't uh, that been since 2014 e even describing since that, 2000 it, since man i don't know if i go back no that. if you want to well, okay. So, so just just the way Another that you, screen. however you try to describe this, Mark, you might categorize as a pattern, right? Even nope. if it's like the lack nope. of a pattern. Nope, 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 no, 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 no. You, you can't yeah, do I'm that. Gonna, no, no. Honestly, lack I, I, pattern I, I, is not a pattern. Yeah. It's definitely not a pattern. So completely unpredictable. Have absolutely no idea what's going to happen. Yes, absolutely that's correct. So subversion. Um, that's what you got to understand. What you're noticing is not anti-pattern. You're noticing the subversion of the pattern. It's the rejection, the identification against saying, I don't know what I want, but I don't want what I have. Well, fair enough. But also chaos and evil. So I'm still a no on the evil. Sorry. So is it, there. Is, it a, is it a, if I'm going to call it a corruption, let's say, right? Mm -hmm. uh, does that just end when it ends? No, it doesn't end. No, it doesn't end. Okay. It's part of the cycle. I, I do want to take some time to address. No, some gut bacteria actually are parasites, dude. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Their identity, their identity doesn't change. Like, no. It's like, no. It's not, it's not. How do you explain your, zombies? Your biology sucks. That's all. Your biology sucks. Like, go 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 grab a biology book and learn about how this stuff works. The, the, the parasite de definition is very clear. Some things contribute and some things do not. Things that contribute are symbiotes and things that do not are parasites. That's simple, right? And it's not clear cut all the time because it's hard to find something that doesn't have a side effect that, that isn't positive, right? It's just the question is balance. Is there trade enough out of it? Right. It's all about trade-offs. Right? It's always all about trade-offs. told you, people and do it, not understand trade-offs. They do you not. Need to, you they do not. I have a video on that. Do, do need I need another, another video, Jesse? Is you do need you another video. I need yes. another video on trade-offs where I talk more about the inevitability of trade-offs or something. Like I'll have to go over my old video here because it's been a it's been a while. And uh and and figure out what's missing out of it that I can explain to people that no, really, you're not getting around trade-offs, and you probably don't know. Like which Netflix is a make. very bad trade-off. Yes. You're giving money. To, to access a library, but you don't control that library. Someone else does. So if you want to, if you forgive the analogy, but you can collect things or you can have other people collect things, but then you don't, you're not participating in that collection and you don't get no. to participate when they take things away either. You don't get to say, hey, no, I would like access to that p particular part of the library. Don't remove no. that, please. Because right. I'm look, well, I'm paying you money to access this library, and this library should stay the same because it's, it's my a, library now, or my access to. It's the know, pattern of a portion, yeah. But it's a pattern of democratization, right? So power was centralized, and now it's decentralized. Everybody can own music, right? And now it's centralizing again because that's not viable because people can't manage their own music. That's why they like Spotify. Again, look, I I have Spotify. I'm not seething resent from this side Spotify. of the internet. But seething but they're resent. managing. They're managing music for me. Like that's what they're doing. 
Uh, it's all music I don't care enough about to own copies of, uh, but that's a different problem, right? But eventually it's going to go away and people don't realize like someday that's going to go away. Then I'm only going to have my CD collection, all right? And that's going to be the end of that. And that's definitely going to happen. And people need to understand that they made that trade-off. They made that trade-off. That already happened. And if you want to preserve a culture too, you need to preserve physical objects of that culture. Like the spirit right. of a culture will not outlast the, the embodiment or the icons of it. Right. So well, then we that's, the the that's the theseus. Prod Michael with a with a with a Christian. But that's the theseus ship argument, right? Like, when does it stop? It doesn't matter. You're preserving the, the Library of Alexandria by, as well. well like, just, you're preserving the spirit by by revivifying it with new material. Like, that's a valid thing to do, right? And uh oh, uh oh. Here, here we go. Just Jesse, the idea that Netflix is not a trade because of lack of control. No, no, he didn't say it wasn't a trade. But we can't have complete control. Yeah, he didn't say anything about that either. For example, we don't choose to be born or have the DNA that we have. Yeah, that's right. You're born into creation. So what? That already happened. Get over it. Like, seriously. Get participating over it. in a system that you have no voice in. Right. That's a bad trade, yeah. technically speaking. Well, then you're trading so, your money, right, yeah. For yeah. Their, for access to their stuff. And it's their stuff. It's not your stuff. And you can, you Again, can do that. But it's people a, it's don't a trade. understand trade offs. <laughs> yeah, it's a trade off. Like, I you have can a Netflix. trade off where you have no control. That's fine. Like, you can give up all the control you want. No one's going to care. And it's a trade off. And that's part of culture. Like, I'm trading my ego need to know everything to live in a culture with other people where they know why. Well, look, it, it helps if you go to a party. And somebody tells you something that you don't know because you can be interested. If somebody, if I go to a party and somebody tells me about computers, um, that's a problem. Like there aren't too many people that can tell me anything that I about computers that I don't already know. It's a, it's a handicap. It's not an advantage. It's a disadvantage. Right now, I can have spirited conversations with people, but it's very hard because I can't meet them as equals in ignorance anymore. It's not an option when we're talking about computers and technology. I'm not your equal, buddy. Sorry. Uh, the odds that you're on the top of that stack are tiny. I, I probably know all the people that know more about computers in the U.S. It's, not, it's a handful. I learned from them, too. So it's not, you know, it's hard. It, and that's not an advantage, right? But, but I outsource things to my culture like, well, you know, I don't want to know everything about, about how to start a business, for example, even though I could argue I know a lot about that too, right? And so I go to these little entrepreneurship meetings and I meet people there and they teach me things. It's wonderful. Now I get to be taught things. By not knowing things, I get to be taught things. It's a wonderful trade-off. It's like I can be ignorant about something until I need to know it. And then I know somebody who knows that thing and they can tell me. And I've cultivated experts over the years. There's Like if I want to do real estate investing, I get my buddy. I can call him up right now or email him or whatever and he'll tell me everything I need to know. And I know this because he is a highly, and I actually there's a couple of people I know in that space, but highly successful uh, firm actually. And if you want to know, uh, if you get if you get cash on the side, you want to actually make money with, I can put you in touch with this firm because uh, he's 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 starving for cash and has plenty of deals to do. Uh, that's how successful he is, right? I know other people in real estate who are not that successful, right? And so, you know, th there's these ways in which we give up trying to know everything about something or having knowledge about things in order to get along better with other people, right? And that's a good thing because it enables us to be enriched by their by the experience of engaging with them. And when we're too individualistic, we cut ourselves off from that. We lose intimacy. From culture. From culture. We cut ourselves off from culture. We lose intimacy because culture is the thing that enables intimacy, right? It's not the only thing, but it's the main container that enables intimacy. This is why having a body is important. You can't be intimate outside of your body in the same way that you can inside your body, right? And so the body of culture holding you together, you may be upset at the head. You can, you can argue a lot of Catholics are pissed off at the Pope right now, uh, you know, and fair enough, like maybe they should be, right? But being pissed off at the Pope but not sort of rebelling, right? Not identifying against him enables them all to be together and to hang out and to do church and to 
commune and to, you know, be in the body of the Catholic Church. Like, that's a plus. It's not a minus. You can say, oh, they're being oppressed by an evil pope. Maybe. But there are lots of advantages. There's a trade-off because popes aren't going to be perfect. I'll be back in a minute. I've got to attend to this coffee stain to make uh -oh, sure I get okay. it out. The it's so annoying. Sorry. One sec. Poor Jesse and the coffee stain. Uh, Mark, do you mind if we do you mind trying to help me understand a little bit more about the way that you think about that chaos monster? Yeah, I don't. It's just chaos. Like, mm -hmm. what's the need for details? It's chaos. Stay away from it. That's all you need to discernment. Whoa, okay. Don't know mm -hmm. what that is. Can't know what that is. Don't need to know what that is. Bad. Stay away. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. Like, our need to classify and categorize and no, that's killing us. Like that's how they suck you in. They go, Oh, look at this thing. Like this is the emergence is good argument, right? Look, something came from nothing. No, it didn't, but whatever. Maybe well, I'll grant you that. I don't care. Right. That doesn't mean it's good. Right. But they're like, no, it's definitely good. And I'm like, no, it's definitely not good. Like, no, the odds that something that sprang up from nowhere are good are almost zero. Right. And, so and let's say um, I'm with my family and with my larger community. I, you know, we're all we're trying to, to embody, participate, uh, be in the good, be in church together, whatever, family time, these things. Yeah. yeah. Um, so then uh, there is a there is like a creeping resentment, spirit of resentment that is uh -huh. attacking that. Right? Yes. Right. Well, multiple ones from inside and outside, I would argue. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Right. So, so Spiritual then, warfare, brother. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's the best yeah. metaphor ever. Sorry. Um, so then uh, in a like, how then shall we live? Is it just like family time church is just like yeah, stay yeah. there don't do yes. anything else yes well no 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 don't do anything don't okay. live hidden christian that's garbage i hate yeah. that i that literally doctor, hate... I'm trying to figure out the way that you think about it well the way i think about it is you know you're obligated to call out evil okay it's, you're obligated to call it you're not obligated to do anything about evil but you're obligated to call it out say no yeah. i think that's evil even if you're wrong yeah. You're obligated to be wrong about calling out evil. Like you're yeah. obligated to do that. And also Christians are for lions. And as long as you yeah. remember those two things, you're fine. Like yes. Christians I mean, are for lions. I have a lot of cheeks to turn. Get them hit. Yep. No, 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 no. You get in front of the lion and sometimes the lion's going to eat you. That's going to happen. Yeah, I, I agree. I, to me, like, it's like level well, one, the, the cheek gets hit again. Right, there's somewhere no, down no. the line. The lion eats. You. No, 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 no. The lion eats you, and you're dead, and that's the end of that. And your family's ruined. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure. Well, and, and the live hidden Christians are like, well, no, no, I have a family, and therefore I can't jump in front of lions. And I'm like, no, no, no. The lions are going right. to eat me. You're, They're you're coming. Not, you're not describing Christian. You're describing something that's not Christian. No, no, no. Fully Christian. Fully no. Christian. According no. according to them, and they're right. Well, I would argue that Christians should understand that they're for lions. But the problem yeah. is, and this is the deep problem, right? This is the Christian mm -hmm. anarchy problem, roughly, <laughs> the, not to pick on me. Yeah, you know, this is foolishness, right? Yeah. You can't be a Christian and an anarchist because you can't follow Christ. Like, he wasn't an anarchist. He didn't do anarchy. He also didn't do pacifism. He did something else that was neither of those two things. He turned over the tables, right? He caused trouble but he still submitted to Rome. If you're not willing to submit to Rome, right, which is roughly speaking the principality of the government, then you're not a Christian because you can't follow Christ. Yeah. Christ yeah, submitted to Rome. It's that okay. simple. It's no more difficult. Like this isn't a difficult equation. You don't have to go, oh, well, the render under Caesar is really just a mistranslation. I don't care. I can point to his participation in the world and say, if you want to participate like Christ, you can't be an anarchist and you can't be a pacifist. Those two things are off the table. You are not Christ-like if you are either of those two things. Period. And I'll let the I'll let the Mennonites and the Amish come after me for it. I don't care. I don't think they're going to do anything because they're pacifists. <laughs> not not an issue, right? You lose automatically by default. That's why the lions are coming and lions are going to eat you. And and good for you for getting eaten last. But also, you're not getting into heaven that way, buddy. I'll tell you that right now. 
God is not going to be pleased with your ass. When If you go, oh, well, I kept my family intact until the end, he's going to go, no, your job was to shield the people who weren't Christian. And you didn't jump in front of the lion and do that. So does the does the dark does the chaos continue to encroach in until there's enough uh, lions that are that have eaten Christians to where it starts turning back the tide no. with softened hearts? No, I, I I argue that you stand in front of the lions. Mm -hmm. Some number of lions are going to eat you, and some yep. number of lions are not. Yep. But if you're not standing in front of the freaking lions, they're just going to eat everybody they can find. Yeah, They'll yeah. find you eventually. You're not like it's not like oh, well, the Christians are right. I'm I'm just to a little bit further than that because I agree with you. So, so well, well, like, well, no, but but no, no, that's the solution. The solution is the Christians need to go and get in front of the lions now, right? Yeah, the sooner yeah. that happens, the sooner the cycle stops, right? It's like. When do you stop the French Revolution? Well, the French Revolution went on too long. How do you know that, Mark? You can't make a statement like that. No, I can. It's a very easy equation. The French Revolution didn't end until the people who started the killing machines were eaten by the killing machines. No, really, look it up. That's actually what happened. It didn't happen right at the moment Robespierre was beheaded, right? But it, when the French Revolution killed the people that started it, it died down. That's what happened. That happened. It, 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 the, that's the pattern. It's always been the pattern. That pattern's everywhere in history. The people that start these horrible chaos machines through their rebellion, through their trying to destroy culture because they want anything but what they have, and they don't care what the anything is, right? That's the trade-off you're making with, with Lucifer, roughly speaking, right? Oh, anything but what I have. Anything but what I have, right? We can go back to that, to that, little, uh, to that little cartoon, right? It's the same thing. I just want my utopia. Once the thing that, that that's holding back my utopia is out of the way, my utopia will appear. Yeah, but that's true for everybody with a utopia, and you're not the only one, and they're not the same utopia. Now what? They're creating chaos. And until they stop creating chaos and decide to sacrifice something about them to build with others, things will get worse. It's your personal rebellion that causes this problem, and it's your personal rebellion that must end to end the problem. And you can't keep identifying against little pieces of the problem and going, it's the woke people now. I know. We'll fight the woke. That's not going to work. The thing to do is to live the Christian life and mm -hmm. do it loudly and proudly, roughly speaking, without without propositions. Propositions are, are, are a dead end, right? But yeah, also yeah, maybe I'm... not no propositions. Right. Well, that that's when people get confused. It's like, I don't want the church to run around with a banner saying, go be Catholic, right? And maybe, I should have asked Father Eric, I haven't talked to him recently. Maybe we'll see this, maybe we'll see this soon, right? If my scheme works, it's not really my scheme, it's definitely revealed, I, I make no, I, I will make no claims. Revealed thing works, then there'll be no words involved and it will work fantastically well, uh, maybe a little bit too well, uh, maybe frighteningly, and, and you'll see this in action. But I very much believe that the mimicry is the important part. That's how fashion okay. works. It works through mimicry. So, so that's so what you need to do. You need to give the ideal to be mimicked. So so it's, it's a, how Girardian is it to you? I, look, I have a hard time with Girard and I, okay. I haven't really delved in, right? But even the way Peugeot talks about Girard is, is a problem for me because they're trying to identify a cycle by events in the cycle. And the problem with chaos is that chaos is, is non-cycle, right? It is, it is not, it is a not pattern. And, mm -hmm. and so in that way, it is unpredictable. Like definitionally chaos is that which is unpredictable. And then we can get into, you know, chaos math and all that nonsense. And I would just argue that's a different situation. True chaos is the unpredictability of the world. Like that, that's the flight. I bring up Gerard uh, specifically as the um, sacrifice, like Christ working through us, sacrifice, lions, and that sacrifice is, is what like, deals with this chaos, right? And that, so that pattern, I think, actually is, is central to Gerard's thinking. Maybe. I, I, I don't. I mean, the, my problem is that the way Peugeot talks about him is he talks about scapegoat and the end of scapegoat, mm -hmm. right? 
Mm -hmm. And and I think that's wrong. I think scapegoats are required. Like they mm -hmm. just are symbolically required. I don't know why Peugeot, and maybe I'm misinterpreting what he's saying, but I don't know why he talks about it that way because that sounds wrong to me. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I could be very, very wrong here, but it's just what it sounds like to me. Scapegoats are required. Like, and I've said this before, I said, people were asking me three years ago, what, what, what will end this crazy madness? Because a bunch of us knew from day one it was mad, or not from day one, but we'll say from March that it was madness. But three years ago, right, I was already flipped. I was like, okay, I have my rice and beans, because I did. I was ready. And then I was like, nope, this is all BS, and I can tell you why, right? And then they were like, what, what will solve this? And I said, well, I, I can give you 12 names of 12 people that if, if they were murdered immediately would, solve, would stop this. And that didn't happen, of course. And, and, you know, to some extent, well, we're glad that didn't happen, except many more than 12 people have now died. So I'm like, eh. you know, at some point there's a death trade off. Sorry, there just is. Like I'm a pragmatist, right? Prag what, what makes a pragmatist better? Pragmatists calculate casualties first. In other words, pragmatists don't believe in idealism. We don't. But we understand there's a trade off. We understand something's got to go. It's like, OK, well, what has to go? Well, if we kill 12 people now, then we want all the craziness with 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 the fake news flu shots, right, that, that aren't definitely are not vaccines by any possible way of understanding a vaccine, right? We wouldn't have masks forever. We wouldn't have the, the uh, health emergency in Massachusetts ending in May of 2023. None of that happened. But we didn't do that. For whatever reason, didn't happen, right? Now, can we get away with murdering nobody in this or at least scapegoating them by putting them in jail or something? No, they've got to, people have to be punished. There have to be consequences to bad actions. Otherwise, bad actions will continue because there's no discernment. You cannot discern a good action from a bad action when you don't see results in the world where the bad action has a bad consequence. Sorry, it doesn't work that way. So at some point, there have to be scapegoats. They're like, like you can blame Fauci for the whole thing. Yeah, and then you only have to affect Fauci's life. But the signal has to be really strong. Like I would say, take literally everything he owns from him and his family. No, for real. Leave them with one house or whatever. Take all his money and all his assets. Roll it back into the government and put him in prison and let him die there. That, Which, that would be a good first start. That might be all that's required. I don't know. Well, but, uh, so, you know. So I think what what I think what Gerard might say or, or that line of thought is something like, Yep, good. Okay. And that does something for a little while, but doesn't last very long because you've got resentment that comes from the tribe that you ripped Fauci out of. Only right? if it's a tribe, but it's not. Like, Jura's just wrong. That's not what it is. Uh, so, uh, that's not what it is. He might, he might make a case like that, right? And that he might, and he'd be wrong. And I can prove it because this, and, this pattern's played out historically thousands of times and it, it doesn't yeah. work that way most of the time. Not so, I know. Sometimes it does. The reason that I bring it up is, uh, let's say uh, that causes the chaos monster to inflame, right, out of re more resentment. No, it, it, it doesn't. No, there's no chaos monster. No, chaos is just rebellion. That's all it okay. is. Okay, so just chaos, rebellion, just rebellion, chaos. I'll just say chaos. Yeah. Rebellion isn't going to increase. It's going to decrease because you're going to have a bad signal to run away from. And that's part of discernment is that when you don't have bad signals and good signals, you lose discernment. And we, what we've been doing as a culture for the past 70 years is saying good positive signals, good positive signals, right? We've been saying that B.F. Skinner was right. You can do positive only reinforcement. That's correct. Even though B.F. Skinner was wrong and he tried to prove that he was right and he actually proved that he was wrong and so does his son and so did everybody that came after him. And any idiot that knows anything or has read one single book on evolution would know. The primary signaling of evolution is negative signaling. Almost all of evolution is negative signaling. It relies on negative signaling, period. End of statement, full stop. Mathematically certain, can be modeled. You can do evolution on a computer. You can watch this. Evolution works by culling things out. That's how it works, right? The successful things are rare, right? They're rare signals, and they're, and they're non-permanent in most cases. And... We just mistake those two things. We think we can have a happy world with positive signals. And we know that that's not true. It's absurdly absurd. Help me understand why 
why it wouldn't turn into an eye for eye problem after keeping the peace for a little while. Well, because it doesn't historically ever. Like that okay. almost never happened historically. So that's so that's the first problem. Like just basic history, go look. Er, didn't happen. Right. People like, act in communities too. Right. People need so, community. And so what yeah. happens is the community gets a signal and the members of the community that are in the body that have broken off from the body and are creating all the chaos inside the body, mm -hmm. right? Or tried to break off from the body, go, oh, wait a minute. If we keep doing this, the body's going to react and, and, and destroy us. Maybe we should stop. Yeah, that's exactly what happens. It's very rare to find individuals too acting out in times of extreme crisis or even times of crisis. Like the leadership problem is a really interesting dilemma. Because who's going to do it? Who's the first mover? Who like who who does it and why? And are they the right person? Right. Like all those all those individual problems come up in times of crisis. So then, um, in the way because you you can probably hear the way that I'm thinking about it, right? And the the critique that I that I continue to hear, and I think it's fair, is like no 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 because because the the other thing is just chaos. It's not a body. Got it. So when I'm thinking about eye to eye, eye for eye problems, this tribe, find, this family killed this cousin. And so now they got to kill two more cousins. And then so that, that, right. yep, yep, but Michael, okay. Michael, like, it's, like it's just awesome. rare. It's just yeah. so ridiculously rare. It's not worth worrying about because there isn't an alternative solution anyway. Like everyone's just like, oh, mm -hmm. you know what? We don't have to do that anymore. No, we okay. do. We've always had to do that. We're always going to have to do that. It's just, yeah, you have to kill people. I'm sorry. sorry. It just sorry. is what it is. It's not help going away. Help me understand the thing that's rare. The thing that's rare is eye for eye. Eye for eye is extremely rare. It almost okay. never happened. Okay. Period. Especially and since we, when we ruined duels and took that out too, you've limited that the singular combat option. Once that was ruined, mm -hmm. do you not understand, see that? But once that duels, was yeah, duels, the, 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 duels were the norm forever, and that didn't result in eye for eye all over the place, even though it was very popular, right? It was everywhere. It didn't the, happen you know, that way. It just uh, didn't happen. I, I understand the symmetrical, like if you do this, they'll do that. Action reaction. Mm -hmm. We don't live in that world. We don't live in a dualism world. Dualism is wrong, it's just wrong, it's just observably wrong. It creates a symmetry. We don't live in a symmetrical world. There's more matter than antimatter. It's that simple, honest. Right? There's more good than bad. There has to be. Otherwise, we would have sunk into nothingness thousands of years ago. Like I, Tribalism isn't, isn't the way to think about the world because if you think about the world of tribalism, the world we have couldn't have existed. It's just that simple. Like mm -hmm. Everybody talks about evolution, and then when they, when they talk about these devolved ideas, they, mm -hmm. they, they cast them into the past. And I'm like, but, but if that were the case, we wouldn't be here now to devolve back into that. Your system is just dumb and it doesn't work. It's bad to think about the world. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you think that... Uh, what problem are you trying to get to, Michael? To solve, yeah. Right now, you, uh, you two, uh, at least Mark, are introducing a, a different mapping. It's like, okay, not... It's not these duels. It's not this kind of tribalism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So um, what that's doing is uh, I'm in newer territory of how to how to think about this, right? So mm -hmm. now I'm kind of poking around, trying to go. All right, let me let me see if I can fully take on the perspective here. So that's, that's if I can make one clarif make one clarification. Duels would be more preferable than the method we have would have now. Right. Even though, because once you have that sort of reinstigation of violence or just the immediacy of things, or even just the knowledge of death, which is kind of being stripped away, you know, funerals are now done out of sight, out of mind, caskets are now out of sight, out of mind, right. even babies, birth, life, and mm -hmm. the basics of life and death and noticing those patterns are all kind of are in the fringes now. So I'm not saying right. dualism would, would be the way to go but i'm saying it would be more preferable for people to see what results happen through their actions like at least it would give them a right. feedback signals I'm not saying right. it's not we're saying missing. it's the way to go but it's it's we're, we're missing a bunch of, of signals yeah right 
Well, and, and, and Hardcore History has a great episode called Painfotainment. It's four hours. Highly recommend. Everything's it's simulated. So yeah. If you're squeamish, thing. it's not going to work. Like, you're just going to get freaked out. And it's hard to listen to. It's hard for me to listen to. And, and, and I don't care. Like, I'm, I'm a meanest son of a bitch. Like, I, I sat through Saving you know Private that. Ryan in the beginning. You I didn't that. care. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm pretty tough on that stuff. Um, but you know, he well, people about watch it. horror films for it. This is the, the people want yeah, that exposure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they're 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 all crazy people. But but I oh, know, but when, we're all muppets. But, we, we that, I'm trying to get to that that sense I'm of simulation. Of oh, okay, you're more of a muppet. Okay, I'm an extra muppet. I'll, I'll take the higher muppet card. Higher <laughs> muppet card. <laughs> but 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 in that episode, he talks about this. He talks about we have lost these signals from the and there's a whole set of traditions around what they did when they killed people you know up until whatever time i forget the time frame that he's talking about 18th century it's about the 18th century end of the 18th yeah century. yeah yeah, well, yeah sorry, but, end of the 17th century yeah right but he, he, so, he goes through that whole thing and why it's important right and what happened as a result right and people were actually like wishing oh, that yeah. they were the condemned they were I wishing to... they were the condemned because the condemned is being absolved of their sins and going to heaven, even though they murdered somebody, like their wife, you know, and and they were killed in the place where the crime occurred in most cases. Like there's all these symbolic things going on in this in this sort of of capital punish extreme capital punishment that used to happen. That we're we're missing all those signals and we're missing all that symbolism and we're not able to connect that to mm -hmm. real life anymore. I actually wanted to bring in this. It's great that we've gotten here because I had this. I wanted to talk about you cannot have a culture of bullets. Like bullets are like shots fired, right? Like when yeah. see people say right. that in an argument, and that ends right. the conversation as soon as you do that. But right. if you have a cult, so we have a cult around bullets and making points right. rather than a culture right. of, you know, swords, which is immediacy as well as you can duel with yeah. wooden swords right and you can hack it out right. in that sense right. you can have a soft form of violence and right you know, boxing used to be that to some example right, right. You could we could hack it out in the ring and then great it's it's a lower form of solving an argument but right now we're in this culture of everything's kind of one shot it's like you get you take and that's what happens too when when they went from fencing to bullets it changed the way the dynamics right. of the culture is what i'm trying to trying to get to no that's important I, I did want to highlight ethan ethan is all uh in the comments about uh christians are for lions and and uh and peugeot maybe being wrong about something because he's protestant which i like ethan I, I think that's true but he's also talking about painful tame shots fired it was a fantastic episode and then he says watch that in tandem with mark and adams talk about the enlightenment yeah that was a, one of our earlier talks so yeah it, the, the painful tame thing is it is really interesting and and, and actually we bring that up because it just so happened that I think it was Adam. Actually, it might have been Ethan, but I think it was Adam that told me about that episode. And I was like, what? And then I, I watched it and, and I remembered, well, listened to it mostly. Uh, but I listened to it on the way up to the Blue Ridge Mountains. When I heard I was going up north and I was going to go through part of the Blue Ridge Mountains, which I did. I went up to Asheville, North Carolina first and kind of hooked on the Blue Ridge there. That's why I remember because it's a long drive. <laughs> and then uh, I was terrified the whole way because it it's a rough episode to listen to. It's really hard, but it, it's important to understand the symbolism and what was going on at the time. Because, because there is an element of culture that we're changing things in culture without realizing what the implications might be because we're still applying this scientific postmodern reductionism and categorization to everything. It's inappropriate and, and it doesn't work. For example, the, there was a large emphasis on sport right to simulate violence and now we're getting yeah. to a very strange situation where we're using video games to simulate violence and the whole this right. whole you know it could be possible that sport physical sport in the next hundred years dissipates because we prefer watching people play starcraft than we do the real thing of people running about you know using american football or whatever cricket soccer to simulate group group based orientation or violence or as well as video games are very individualistic too. There's hardly ever, it's very hard to watch, you know, a bunch of people play Counter-Strike together as a team, like, because you have to follow who's on what side and who's where in Counter-Strike, who's on which team. But 
at least sport, you have some sense of embodied participation where, you know, these people are wearing these colors, these people are wearing these colors, they're battling it out. But the the video game simulation is is fake. It's not a it's not a real community because there's still individuals around right. monitors. You might they might be wearing team colors, but the actual sim the actual sorry I'm using simulation too much. The actual arena is not representative. Rep, yeah, representative. It doesn't it doesn't have a telos. It's just there for a time and place around a digital means where there's something happening in real time. Right, so sport, like okay, a sport game, lasts for two hours, hypothetically. But you can play a video game and do a video game sport match at any time. It's so transparent that it doesn't actually um, symbolize value because you can just move it and say, "Oh, we'll do it here. We'll do it there." It doesn't have a fixed place in time of value. Or, you know, you know, like um. India beating England for the first time in, in cricket was a particular moment, time, and place. You're not in video games, you're not going to get that. You're not oh, going to say, Oh, oh. I remember when the Swedish Counter Strike people beat the American Counter Strike people. Like, no one's going to remember right. that as a cultural right. moment. It's just not going to hold the the gravitas of something. And so that's that's a dangerous cultural moment we're in. Right, right. And part of the, and so, part of the reframing is. It's not, we're not picking different equivalent frames, right? We're re-enchanting the vision of the world, which is a big deal. Like that's what my whole Navigating Pattern Project is about. It's like, you think you understand this? No, it's not as simple as all that, right? And that's why we're awakening to the Muppet crisis because we're realizing, oh, we're all Muppets. We don't understand the world at all. Like we really don't. Like we don't understand what's going on in Ukraine. We don't understand what just happened with this fake news virus scam. We don't understand any of that stuff. Like, but we don't have to. Like, you don't have to. You can rely on people. And the key is, how do you figure out how to rely on people? And discernment, as I said in my opening monologue, that's going to be the next big piece, I think. Maybe maybe that'll be next week's theme. We'll see. We'll see if we can if we can do that. That's well, the issue. Is what, once trade-offs you are a part of discernment, right? Well, that once you have the discernment, now you can you can... You can go back and talk to experts. I have a talk coming out on Odyssey with this guy in England, Richard Harris. Nice guy. We had a great conversation. It was way too short, but it was, it was a great conversation. But sort of talk about that. Like what, what replaces expertise? Experience. That's what replaces expertise. I'm not going to say I'm an expert at computers. I'm going to say I have experience with computers. That's what I'm going to say, right? Because, you know, and then I'll, I'll caveat it. And I think I do all the time, right? I say, if I'm an expert at anything, I'm an expert in computers. Right. Not 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 like a part either, like almost all of it. The only thing I don't know a lot about is is uh, hardware is the actual like fabbing of chips. Although I know a lot about that. I just don't know as much as I'd like. Like I don't I've never done any hardware design. Right. I can do basic circuits, but it's been a while. But I can do that. But I, I think it, it's experience. That's what that's what I appeal to. I appeal to my experience, not to. I book learned this or I went to school for this because I didn't. I didn't go to college for anything. I didn't go to college. I've been to colleges. I just didn't take any courses there. I did audit some courses back in the day, but I wasn't a student. I wasn't getting graded, right? I, I did not audit like three consecutive courses in the same thing or anything like that. I just like one here, one there, whatever, right? So yeah, it, it's, it's experience is part of discernment, right? How long have you been doing this for? How successful have you been, right? Then, of course, you have to rely on self-reporting and maybe the reporting people who know the person, right? And then it's like, how do I discern when they're lying, right? Because resumes are full of lies. So there's all these pieces that, that go into it. But it's discernment. That's where our independence comes from and comes Mark, in. Just where, um, why do you think um, Eye for Eye stopped? You said it's rare. It sounds like you, you think that it wasn't necessarily rare in the distant past. What, yeah, what... It, was, it was always rare. It was always, it was always rare. rare? Yeah, okay. because it's dangerous to, to look mm -hmm. when you're engaged with something that's important to you. Mm -hmm. There's the whole idea of playing chicken. Chicken works the same way as actually taking somebody out. It works the same way. There's no difference, right? He who blinks first loses. Why? Because he's not as serious about it. 
But that also means that you have to be serious about what you're doing and what you're talking about. How do you know that I'm serious? I can tell you how you know that I'm serious. And it gets misread all the time, right? The difference between me and most other people is that I have for the, and, and it's always genuine. It's always as genuine as I can make it. Maybe I make mistakes, but I, and, and I push back on that. I have passion. That's what I have. And people misread that and go, you're angry. No, I'm passionate. I care about the things I talk about. I talk about only things I care about for the most part. Not always exclusively, right? I hang out on my server, just me and Manuel, and we'll just, you know, shoot the shit or whatever. We'll, we'll you know, I'll, I'll tell him something horrible about the Netherlands. He'll go after the U.S., like whatever. We're just screwing around, right? Or Sally will come in and we'll just be silly, right? But, but when I'm talking to my audience in particular, when I'm doing my videos, okay, I'm passionate about what I'm talking about. You say, oh, you're yelling or you're angry or no, no, no. Anger is a type of passion. But I'm just passionate. When I'm angry, you'll know it, by the way. You haven't seen me angry. None of you see me angry. You don't want to see me angry. It's like the Hulk, only way worse. You think the Hulk is angry? No, no, no. The Hulk ain't got nothing on me. He's, he's got mere anger. I got rage, baby. Don't even go there. You don't want to go near that. <laughs> rage channeled through anger? Yeah, it's a whole different level. You don't, you don't want I've to go lost there. lost the thread a little bit. Okay. So. I'll, I'll give you something. I'll give you something. I'll give you yeah, so what I'm trying to say is, my passion is playing chicken, right? People okay. come up against my passion and they blink because <laughs> they're not as vested in their ideas as I am in mine. They're not oh. there. And mm. it's the same thing as standing in front of the car. You stand in front of the car and hope that the car stops because it probably will, but maybe the car decides to stop and can't stop in time. Like there's always this negotiation. It may end badly for you. It's just like the lions. You can get in front of the lions. The lion may eat you though. Right, but but I don't think it's an optional thing. I think like you're obligated to get in front of the line. Who blinks first? It's the same thing. Are you because what happens with most tools, right? Jesse didn't tell you this, right? What happens with most tools is most tools are proposed and never carried forth because somebody goes, you know what? You're really serious about this. You're willing to risk your life for your honor. I concede. I return your honor to you by apologizing, capitulating, whatever it is, rather than take the risk, right? And I, look, I've been up against people much, much bigger than me who are able to take me out. And they always back down. And they back down because even if they're going to win, they're not going to get away scot-free. And they're like, is my idea worth me getting damaged by this person, even if I win? And the answer is almost always no. And that's, the, you know, it's like I tell people, look, I, I used to have a, a, a 76 Plymouth Valari, which is an excellent car. But if you ever get a chance to get a 76 Plymouth Valari with a nice uh, three, with a 318 Mopar motor in it, get one. They're great sleeper cars, right? And people used to say, what do you do with that? And I go, I beat almost everybody on the road. There were a few types of cars I could not beat. But the reason why I beat them is not because I had a faster car. It's because when the light turned, I'm quick. I was on the gas. And you know what? I don't do this wimpy thing where you go, you know what I mean? No, no. I nail it to the floor and the car goes. It goes fast, right? Because I'm all in. If I'm going to win, I'm all in. And that's, that's what passion is. Are you all in? I'm all in. It's like, well, if this guy's all in, and you can I mean, you look at him in video game terms. Well, okay. So your power meter goes up to eight and my power meter goes to four. Are you willing to lose your four, possibly five, maybe exactly. six damage just to win? Because I'll do it. I'm in. I'll take the, the one in 500 chance that I'm going to win because it's the passion. And Jewels and are the, the ultimate trade-off. Jewels ultimate. are the ultimate trade-off. How serious are you about your honor? Oh, I'm so serious that I'm willing to risk my life and yours to, to keep it intact because a lot of the people that died in Jewels, their honor was restored even though they, they lost. That happens. Exactly. Their honor was restored because they were willing to go all the way. Like, are you, are you, you, would you go to the fence for me? It's a gamble. It's a gamble in some sense. Because so, you well, could, it's, it's a what, signal what, of how serious you are and how important yeah. this is to you. And those signals are super important. And we've taken them away to, to Jesse's yeah. earlier point. What would, that you guess, what would you guess that? I, I think that that does make sense to me. Uh, I'll try to quickly restate it. Uh, uh, what I hear is, um, it's a, a chicken staring down, right? It's like, you know, I have 
there's too much to lose because I to, to face this thing, right? And so it like stalemates in a, in a sense or something keeps the peace. Um, so my my question would be. Uh, do you think that there's a a Christian rebuttal to that? I think you misunderstood something. When you go into a duel, right? Mm -hmm. You could both be hurt. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't, even if you technically, or there's a, a duel, right? You could both be hurt and still not die, right? Duels, the the inevitability of the outcome is not determined by who participates. Because even if you lose, you could still be dishonorable. You could lose in dis dishonor, right? You could betray someone. You could a whole bunch of not follow the right rules, and then you might win the outcome, but you don't win the like you don't win the full. You lose. You lose your honor. You lose your honor. Yeah. Okay. We'll lose so, that. Uh, if if you were to grant me that, I do understand. Do you think that there is a Christian rebuttal, or do you think that that is the Christian position? What, what, why do you think there's a what, what would it what would a rebuttal of what? What is wrong with 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 that, being serious? What is wrong with flipping over the tables? Because that's really I'm what not, we're talking. I'm, about. Not, I'm not saying Jesus, that anything's wrong. I'm not saying anything. No, okay, wrong. but Michael, but Michael, dueling hmm. is Christian. Like it's it's Christian. There's no rebuttal to it. It's Christian. It's okay, fundamentally so, yeah. it's flipping over the tables. It's saying I'm so yeah. serious about this. I'm willing to risk my life. By pissing off every single authority that the Jewish authorities and the Roman authorities both, both at the same time by doing this one action, and I'm willing to go to the cross for it. That's mm -hmm. what the, the that's the duel. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, uh, it's the trade. Like what I hear is that the case that that you two are articulating, right? You believe that this is. The fullness of the Christian position, not the fullness. It's but, it's yeah. part of the Christian position. It's part of flipping over the table. You, you could you could also say that it was, you could also say that it was the Christians that ended jewelering just as so much you, because the you, because of the Gutenberg case. printing press, right? So because of the that, access to knowledge, that there, right? That you have the Christian. most amount of knowledge that was embodied of Christianity and the Christian principles in the populace, and they identified. This form of community violence is no longer sustainable. We have to act as a community in harmony. The problem, what have you replaced it with? They, at that time, it was just pacifism. We can all go along to get along. We'll, we'll figure it out. But that sense of embodied action was never replaced. Because maybe we could all sing together. And then once that sense of dueling, dueling comes out of the culture, there's a vacuum. And what happens after that? The 18th century. What happens after that? You have the French revolutions and you have these cycles of bigger groups, bigger bodies of violence. So having violence happens on a mass scale. It no longer happens at the community because the communities don't have something to resolve the internal conflicts with. Uh, just to, to wind back a little bit, I want to rephrase this, or right? just to, to hammer this this down. Um, the, the, the chicken position if you were to grant me that I have a full understanding of it, right, that the positioning itself is a fully Christian position. Yep. Okay. Fully Christian. So I don't know about that. Mark, Mark, can, Mark can defend that. I don't know about that. I'm gonna have to think about that more. No, it's it's full. Look, look. I mean, look. What 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 is Christ going to the cross? It's the passion. Well, that's weird. What did yeah, I just say about chicken and what I do? It's passion. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, that's that's good weird. Point. I'm sure it's just a weird random coincidence and not actually the thing. Oh, no, wait. Wait, I got that backwards. It's actually the thing. So um, then, since that's the case, what I might say is that uh, it's possible due to a misunderstanding because I may not understand the position fully, mm -hmm. but what I get a little twinge of discernment that worries me that what's being described is a little bit more strongest survive. No, 
it, 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 no, again, it's the encounter with the lion that prevents you. the lion from eating you. Well, then it's not strong to survive. The, the lions are always the strongest and they the, don't survive. The, the chicken, the chicken, right? The, the, the chicken staring down thing that you're talking the fact about? That you're That's a frame. That's a frame. It, the fact that you're willing to do it often prevents the conflict. That's the whole point. You could just say it was the hero leaving, leaving on a journey. It's the same thing. You're right. encountering the unknown. Yeah. I, I, right. In order uh, to bring back any sort of resource or to go into, you know, you, you have to find, you have to be in confrontation with nature. Right. But if you ho want to, hopefully you, you all would uh, uh, give me some grace or, or understand or the language that I would attempt to use to rearticulate any of your positions back to you. Right, is something that uh, uh, you would be very, very cautious about, and uh, and you'd want to hear it. You'd want to make sure that it was exactly right. So yeah. that that's a pretty difficult case. Right? Yeah, it is. Um, uh, so so with that, you gotta keep, element, with keeping that your element, word right is keeping your logos. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that's going to hit home for you. When you oh. and so when people dueling is like you're calling me a liar, it's like, you know, that's it. That's that's the internal conflict right there. Yeah. Uh, and so, so if you want to use biblical language, you know, mm -hmm. the the yeah. greatest lie is you know the devil ever told us to say he doesn't exist, which is to say God doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. To call God a liar. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, the because you know, that's kind of. That's done for you for a while, because the the way people dishonor each other and use language and use these descriptive problems, mm -hmm. and re replace words with words, mm -hmm. is that and to reframe other people is a part of the problem because it's over intellectualizing it. Is did mm -hmm. I say that or did I not say that? Yeah, and and so uh, one of the challenges that that we'd be in with something like this is uh, it's a Mexican standoff of who's over intellectualizing, right? No, um, no, 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 it's not a symmetrical that. thing. Like, often one well, side well, is over commercializing, so, and the other so side is not. You'll say no, and I'll say no, and we'll continue to point guns at each other, right? Maybe that happens all the time. So, what, right? Right, it sure it, it does. It does. Um, like, like, this is what I keep telling people about the left. If you want the left to go away, stand up to them and they'll go away because they know they can't. Yeah, work. yeah. Well, it's, it's that's one of the funny things about this, Mark, is, is that. Um, is that we it's actually? It's funny that no one's willing to stand up to solve the problem. Yeah, that's kind of funny. It's like just stand up and the problem will be solved. I don't understand. Sure. It, it's so not to say no one's going to get hurt. It's the, just the to funny. say that's going to mm -hmm. solve the problem. Just solve the freaking problem. Grow a pair. That's it. It's what that's I'm it. saying is, there's different forms of resistance. That's what I'm trying to articulate. You, maybe you don't have to say anything, and that actually might be right. the smartest option. It's like I'm not going to stand nope. up to you. I'm not going to challenge you to a duel. Right. 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 You, you don't you, you can don't out, just out survive people. Like, you know, like this, this, it's, right. it's the smartest option. So uh, I would be worried that Mark would think that that was uh, too close to pacifism and not turning over the table. No, no, know. that's just, that's actually maybe even Machiavellian. This is like, no, now is not the time for war. I'll, yeah. I'll pick when I'm ready to have a conversation with you when I when I'm willing to right. reframe you or to challenge. Is I picked I turned right. I ended a live stream a couple of weeks ago about this. When you unsheath your sword, you have to you have to be ready to draw blood. Yeah, yeah. You you cannot do it. Just as like right. oh I'm going to show off my sword at that moment it's you're on. You right. have to you have to go for the kill. Well, well again, what what we tend to do is we tend to cast it. We say. Oh, it's survival of the fittest at that point. And it's like, well, look, according to evolution, it is anyway. So, yeah, that's going to happen. Yeah, so but, but it's like, not. That's, but, that's actually but what that, I'm, I'm But that's inevitable. Out. Like, yes, it is true. Well, Always true. Well, Irrespective of Christianity, it doesn't solve that problem, right? That, that, but, that but then the question a, is, a but, hold on. The question mm -hmm. is, what do we do in a conflict that has nothing to do with survival and fit, fittedness? It has nothing to do with that. Right, mm -hmm. because survival is not about you. Mm -hmm. you. You don't survive. You die. We all die. The lions eat everybody. Everybody gets eaten by a lion. You get a lion, and you get a lion, and you get a lion. Right? I feel like the Oprah of Christianity. You get a lion, you get a lion. 
That's what happens. Okay, that's gonna happen. You are getting eaten by the freaking lion. Shit happens. What Christianity says is, do you walk up to the lion voluntarily on the off chance that it won't eat you? Because if you do, you're a good Christian. And if you don't, I would argue you're not. Yeah. That's uh, the question. So, so the, the question uh, isn't yeah. survival of the fittest. That's already going to happen, right? You can't say might makes right, okay? But might is still a factor. It doesn't go away. You can't you can't say, well, we'll let the we'll let the weakest person in, be in charge. The weakest person can't be in charge. That's why mm -hmm. they're the weakest person. It's a mm -hmm. definitional misframing. It doesn't work, right? Yeah. And so what yeah. does work is somebody who's willing to go to the wall or the cross, right, for mm -hmm. their beliefs. And that means sometimes and most of the time this isn't gonna happen because most of the time it didn't happen. You're gonna face people and they're gonna run away. That's what's gonna happen. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, they're not gonna run away. You're gonna take some damage, and you may die. That 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 that's true. Here's but, another thing to consider, yes. Michael. If we're gonna talk about lions and heroes and individuals, there are probably plenty of time in the time of Daniel. There are probably plenty of people that were quietly resisting. Daniel's story is an encapsulation of the spirit of the time. So he openly you know the, the, one of the things people miss is he when he goes to pray in silence or in the quiet depending on your translation he opens the window that's a quiet challenge to the empire which brings down the empire by the way so he has to go into the den he has to he goes through the archetypical sorry patterns but the thing that people don't realize is that mechanism is like you can have you can challenge the higher powers through smaller actions he could have kept himself silent, done his prayers, you know, followed devotion, but he was called to at least open the window to give the opportunity to the universe, to the higher power, depending what if your what if your <laughs> what if your metaphysics is. He still, you know, let that potential happen to see how it would play out. And that was his step of faith, depending again, depends on your Christian terminology or whatever. But that's a quiet form of resistance. He didn't have to go and protest and write a treatise and nail it to the empire. Sometimes the quiet little like the, the things that happened in the silence, the one action has massive implications. So you don't have to challenge the empire. You just have to do the things that are available to you. And he, right. his smartest move was, if I let people see me pray in public, it's actually going to manifest this entire thing. And yes, I might... He knew the implications of it for sure. So, uh, you know, one of the things that, that I'm trying to figure out. He here, followed a logos, is what I'm trying to say. Like with his words and his actions, he followed a logos and he knew where that logos would take him because he's it's recorded in the story. He knows the implications of what's going to happen. He doesn't willingly do it out in the street and everything. He, it's just he's seen to do something. It's a quiet rebellion. And that's maybe the, what we're called to do right now. Right. I don't know. I, I don't know. Right. But maybe that's quietly resist is the smartest option. Like, you know, yeah. you know, even there's another story about um, who is the best man to face this camp of Gideon. You have to have, to Mark's point, a passion. The, the army keeps getting reduced and reduced and reduced to the most passionate people that are willing to resist. And all they do is just outsmart the enemy. They don't, they don't, they don't kill anyone. There's, from a know that story, they just outsmart the enemy. Um, a lot of threads. Mm. So, um, Mark, earlier when I was mentioning something that's funny, uh, it, it's it's whether or not we end up with a lot of the same conclusions, and it, are we ending up there? By the same means, or are we misunderstanding each other on how we get there? I could very well be misunderstanding how you get there is actually the same mapping that I get there, but I don't recognize yeah. your path well, being the same. Yeah, um, but I don't even care. Like I don't. Like, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Like, like goodness um, is goodness, and how you got there mm -hmm. is like whatever. That's your journey, man. That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I be uh, well. The reason why I care about that is because. It's like uh, sometimes even if there's some shared intersections in places, uh, I think that there can be some bad fruit 
bear depending on the supporting structures on how that got there, right? Right. Um, it might like the like. Why well, worry about that? You yeah, know, yeah. Well, because, because I, I challenged us about... on this like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, just, yeah. You're worrying about things that you're not called to worry about. Maybe, maybe not. Like yeah, maybe yeah. We'll see if that happens. Is, is it God's will? Isn't it God's will? Like yeah, like. Oh, oh, we're two different paths, and so there's a conflict. Yeah, no, no, here, so, so uh, um, there's an aiming, there's a hitting the mark, there's a there's a bearing good fruit, right? And that is the thing to care about. And the way that that I figure out how to care about that is loving God with all my heart, which manifests in loving my neighbor. It helps me figure out what to bring into focus, which is how I evaluate yeah. the fruit. Right, and whether yep. I have to so caring about motives as a supporting structure or something that uh, uh, that coalesce together in order for like a hey let's hit the, let's go towards this action or something let's go be eaten by lions whatever it is um, why you did that actually could make a big difference in what kind of fruits bear out. That's why I would care about it. You don't get to determine that. Yeah. That's my point of the story with Daniel. He didn't fact, get he could have it could have happened for weeks. That. Not only do I agree with that, um what I would care about, my value system, you're oh, man, I I've <laughs> it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't understand what's good. I'm incapable of it, right? So the the good valuation it's, is logocentrism, right? Is God working through me to orient towards the good, the true, and the beautiful? That's the only way I can evaluate it at all. You wouldn't. You will never know that. You need the community and culture to tell you that. So it, the the way that I know that right has to do with the kind of fruits that are bared in the, whether they are works of the. Flesh you need others to tell you the works. Yeah, you like need, you need others to tell, yeah. to tell you what fruit. You can be manifesting fruit, but you will have no way to tell. Right? I don't need others. I get that from logos. Oh right. no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sure no, do. Definitely not. Definitely I not. I sure do. I sure do. Now this is this might be like a just a totally separate reality, right? But this is exactly what the case is with the word written on my heart, right? And this, thank God, it's much easier. I, the traditions that I participate in, the scripture handed down to me helps verify this thing, these things. But believe me, I rejected all those things outright just to yeah, my surprise, yeah. get back in touch with logos, right? Which then- How do you know you're not in the cult? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's a great question. That's a great yeah. question. That's the question. Yeah, sure is. So, um, I, in some ways, I think that that's bad framing. Okay. Here's how I would actually answer that. It's powers and principalities. There's a divine council, right? And we are all participating in bodies right and that of these bodies one of them stands above as the lord of lords and the king of kings right and all these other lower powers and principalities bow to it and so within that happens as it does without and the way i understand whether or not i am aligned on the straight and narrow of the way is by the fruits that I bear, not my propositions that I accept or proclaim or agree to, right? But whether or not the fruits born out of me show what kind of tree I am. And if I have the humility to ask for You're mercy, making a case for self-knowledge. I am through through not. the Christian framework. I am not. I, well, it, it could be easily conflated with though. I, uh, I I am happy to try to show to try to um, articulate. Like I I I 
I don't know. I, I'm still Christian in some aspects. I, sure. I, I, I wrestle with this with what you're talking about. Yeah. Not as often as I should. Sure. Not as often as I used to. But I think what uh, peace. Mm-hmm. If you're mm-hmm. wrestling with something. How do I phrase this? You can think you're the hero of the story, and perhaps you're not. I'm not. I'm I'm Mm. most certainly Mm. not. But people can over, again, over over sample, over intellectualize, Mm. over over traditionalize, over religialize their their own self importance. Yes. Yes, absolutely. The um, and and that would manifest as an idol, mm-hmm. right? And self righteous bad fruits would start to bear. You would know that. Yeah, you would notice. Now, now, this is the problem. Like you don't it, have a perspective outside of your own perspective, and therefore you. I can't I, I, I agree with you all, right? Which is one well, of the. Then reasons, you wouldn't know that. Yeah. So so one of the reasons. I, there is no um, isolation in which one can participate in the way and in Christ, right? One of the most important pieces of that is participation within a greater body, right? And in relation of that loving God, it's not just you and God, it's that manifests in love of your neighbor as yourself, right? And through yeah, know about that like you wouldn't know if you were loving your neighbor as yourself so so with this neighbor that you have you Um, are able to see the the dirt and planks sticks in their eye the filth in their eye right you can see it more clearly than they can and they can see yours more clearly than you can then then you need the culture and other people like jesse said initially which you denied so which is um, um, what? What do you think that I denied? You denied that you needed other people to tell this. Jesse said explicitly, "You need other people to tell you that." And you said no. Um, so this goes back to the whole idea of should you read the Bible? So I'm not getting it from you the other the Bible. person, right? And yet I also um, cannot be without the other person, right? Is that it? There's, there's the two of us, but where we're getting this is Christ, right? And he's well, there. That may, be, that may be true, but you don't have that perspective, right? Because you're still one of the three entities you listed. So, so, um, so, me, what I do, right? I can see pretty clearly because let me tell you, it's definitely works of the flesh, right? My own selfishness, what I want, right? It's these things, right? It, and that it does. It, 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 there's lust, revelries, drunkenness, all these things, right? I, absolutely, that's going to come out of me with me, myself, what I want. Right? But when I sacrifice my selfishness in love of God and find the highest version of myself, in love and relation to the other, right? Christ is there. So, I'm sorry, Michael. You using so, you you just using so many descriptive words, yeah. and you're changing. You've you've gone through Christ. You've gone through Logos. You've gone through mm-hmm. God. And every time you make one of those changes, mm-hmm. you, there's an there's a there's the allowance mm-hmm. of a hole in your argument. Mm-hmm. So Christ so, means something completely different than God. The logos means something completely different than God. So, right. uh, from from our position in the tradition that I participate in in Orthodoxy, right? Uh, Christ is the fullness of logos. Okay, you'll find seeds all over the place of logos, but Christ is the fullness of logos. Right now. Uh, if, if we want to talk God and Trinity, hey, yeah, fair enough, because there's a sense of... No, of I'm God. trying to get you to the, what is your, what is the essential problem you are struggling with? 
Is it yeah. the fact that you're relying on the text? You're, are you relying too much on your own self-knowledge? You're not relying enough on your community church or you you lacking culture hmm. where you at because or you just don't have faith in any of those things or you don't have enough like you want to overemphasize or you feel you're called to participate more like i'm not i'm not hearing any emphasis in what you're saying hmm. and if i um, say anything wrong it's because i maybe get to my emphasis too quickly or it's, it's sometimes Mark does this too and it, with his passion. It's just overemphasis, bam, that's it. And people are like, no, I need you to take me on a story. I need you to yeah. outline this. And then it's like, well. So the, the, where we're currently at um, is, is where I was having to do something like defend epistemology, right? It's like, how do you, why, how do you why, know Oh my this goodness, is, on is, purpose? You want to deliberately defend epistemology here? Don't waste my time. Sorry. You know, I don't, don't waste my time. I, I, look, I was, I, you asked. I don't, I don't. You, you no, might as well call it evil epistemology because, yeah, I'm. Hey, yeah, I'm fair. Fair. Bad. Hey, look, I'm, I'm not trying to, to necessarily go down that route. We were, we were on a different thing, and that's where yeah. you all helped guide me, right? That's what those questions that were asked. Yeah, well, so I was willing to go there. But if we want to, to wind back up and talk about like, where was the problem that we were trying to solve? What were we discussing, right? So, no, 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 we, we, Mark and I weren't trying to solve any problems. We're trying yeah, to find yeah. out what you, what mm -hmm. you, where you're at and what part of the map, right? Yeah, and right, so right. the thing is, right, let's use a video game. The map is not the territory, right? It's the famous saying. But once you've visited a part of the video game map, you should know it. She go, there's mountains over there. Mm -hmm. You don't need any more information than that to revisit that area. Mm -hmm. You don't need to know what type of mountains they are, if they're cabins and huts, because you won't actually know, because every time you visit that place, it will be, in theory, slightly different, or at least manifest slightly different phenomenon. Right. Mm -hmm. But you do know it's there. You do know that there's mountains on that part of the map. Mm -hmm. Right. So trying to map everything out is actually maybe sorry to say your problem. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You need to you need to know where you're journeying through and mm -hmm. what you're trying to learn or understand, what story you're embodying. Mm -hmm. And that's wrong because the story is the emphasis. The emphasis of the story yeah. is the story. Mm -hmm. Or another way to say this is the T loss. Mm -hmm. So um what I've tried to do over the course of this conversation, right, is uh, there is a, a perspective and a narrative that the two of you are fairly aligned on, as far as I can tell, right? It's not one that I... <laughs> I, don't know. I, don't, I don't think so, but maybe. Like, well, like Mark well, and I disagree on high culture and low culture yeah. and different yeah, of tradition can, but like yeah, i yeah. didn't bother to argue it because i value the friendship because because it's like well maybe we're going to kind of categorize things differently and i have a reason to emphasize that and he has his reason to do that oh, really and, uh, oh, really yeah happy yeah no but i'm trying to help you understand what happens when you participate in a conversation like this is you mm -hmm. just have to assume that's the other person's position and find where do you harmonize not mm -hmm. what do you agree on, because you're not going to agree on anything. I said this to David way, mm -hmm. way back, a couple of groups. I don't have to agree to your terms to have mm -hmm. a conversation with you. And he couldn't, that was the last straw that broke the, the, the you know, that it broke him. Mm -hmm. All the other times I was like, okay, cool, let's move on. If I agree to what you're saying, what happens next? Yeah. He couldn't do that. It is, so it's the same, the same thing is kind of happening here, but it's, obviously we're in a more friendly conversation but <laughs> so with with, uh, with mark specifically... aesthetics michael don't waste my time there's a certain portion of how much of the conversation do you participate in and are you over participating or you're holding the mic and i i, I actually say that in love like you're, you, you what do you want to emphasize Otherwise, we're just going to talk for another half an hour. And by the way, Mark, I, I kind of think we should like end these streams if if I'm going to be involved like at a certain time. We just go, you know, 
it's for four hours, for five hours. If you can't hold a conversation for that long, if we can't, if, if we can't, you know, build it, it's too long. Yeah, yeah. no, that's, I'm happy that's, to do an eight hour conversation, Jacob. Like, let's go. I can talk for Matrix for eight hours. Let's do it. But like, <laughs> Maybe we'll we might talk about too. other things, but yeah, it's, 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 it's the, um, yeah, you're, this, no, you're this right. descriptive I'm... language problem is is just like okay, mm -hmm. yeah, lots of descriptions, but no, no, nothing, nothing of substance to really agree or disagree on. It's just lots of well, lots just, of fine fine points of harmony or discussion. That's you know, so um... like no, I, I'm kind of annoyed that no one's pointed out that I have the nice men at work poster in the back here to symbolize culture, and no one's talked about that every week i change the picture behind me on the th is the men at work building the rockefeller building that's a great image of culture oh that was that's we good. don't have that culture we don't have that culture anymore people are not willing to build things of value anymore hmm. they're willing to work they're not willing to build things of value and they're two hmm. completely different i like that that's a good most of the world will perspective way to understand the value of what they're doing i said well, this, i've actually I recently changed my monologue. oh yeah you should have that earlier. That was, that's yeah well good. you know yeah well sometimes i'm a bit slow it's dyslexia it's dyslexia not everything comes to me at once nevertheless culture um what are so, we building here we're building the, a culture uh, this these live streams are making and mapping culture these are not for like we can have different things we bring to the table like i don't know mark and i'm going to try and talk about the matrix specifically hmm. but there's a like even blue jay a couple of weeks ago i was like i actually kind of had to stop him and i'm happy to keep talking to him it's like but you're over representing yourself in this community and story you're taking too much of the conversation up it's like flow with it um mm. is that fair to say mark yeah yeah no i yeah, think okay. i think that was perfectly fair yeah well okay. at a certain point great at a certain point people you know people get into the groove of trying to express themselves to a certain end and it's like well this conversation is really about trying to express yourself to a certain end this conversation is about exemplifying how to talk about things together that we have in common and see each other's point of view, even though we disagree with them. You know, I mean, even when Jesse's absolutely wrong about high culture and low culture, you know, I don't, I don't. But I have a reason. To... I have a reason to make the distinction. I don't need to be obvious with the reason because maybe some, well, things, and, aren't, and some things aren't ready for the internet, put it that way. I agreed, yeah. to, the discer I agreed to the discernment and saying it was useful. To right. The okay. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and where that leads, we don't know because we're not going to have that. We're not going to have the rest of that conversation well, today. Exactly. It's just some things are um, some things are appropriate for the time and place that you live in. Um, right. Right. Well, and 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 yeah, you need the reactions to this video, like like subscribe, comment, whatever. Right. Because then then that informs us as to whether or not it's safe to move forward in another direction. Right. Because it can't just it can't just flood people. Imagine mm -hmm. if I dumped my simple model on the world and everybody went, what? And, and then mapped it and found out it worked. And they went, we've been using these complicated models this whole time. That would be terrible. I'm not going to do that to everybody. Um, so over the course of the conversation, I, I, I had hoped that it did uh, that in the sake of harmony and understanding um, and trying to understand certainly Mark's model uh, and instead of like these competing bodies, right? It's like, no, here's here's a body and then here's an anti. Um, that I actually had been seeking um, understanding a different perspective than my own and looking for where the harmony, uh, where the harmonies lie within uh, the, the mm -hmm. orthodox tradition that I participate in as that largely maps my world in a pretty significant way. Sure, um, it should, yeah. And, um, and so uh, that's largely what I was looking for. And uh, when we would come into some areas of tension, I, I'm, I'm not interested in uh, uh, propositional tyranny or I'm having, I don't need any of you, you, either of you to agree with me. I, I promise I don't. Uh, I was just attempting to, to convey 
um, how I get to where I get to. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's 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 fine. I mean, look, you just say orthodoxy. Or just pull that card a million times. It's fine. It's not that's not a that's not a problem. I think the the, the problem comes in with the over reduction. And so people with very complicated models over reduce the details. And then they right, because you have to reduce somewhere, like you can't keep everything that complex. So that's right. interesting. So, Do you think that the, uh, what comes out of me is the overly complicated model? You have an overly complicated model and you keep reducing the details. Yeah. Most so people, I mean, almost the, everybody does right now for some reason. I actually, that is what I would say about the positions I hear from you two. No, no, but my, my model is super simple mm -hmm. and I don't reduce detail at all. In fact, I use detail to point out that people are wrong about their complicated models. Mm -hmm. all the time that's all i do actually that's almost all i do i just tell people now nah, the model's wrong here's why here's the detail they're like oh what like 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 oh dueling is bad no dueling is not bad because it works most of the time to mm -hmm. avoid having a duel and then if you don't know that then you mm -hmm. say oh duels have to end in one person right which also isn't true but if you don't know that right you've over reduced the details of dueling down to some survival of the fittest or, you know, uh, the strongest person wins, which has nothing to do with duels. It just isn't the, in duels. Do you think it's possible it's that, uh, that we're not able to easily see whether we've overcomplicated the model? Because like if, I, if, I'm, if I think that you actually do have an overcomplicated model and you think that about me, is it possible that it's difficult for us to see that about ourselves? It's difficult for some people to see that about themselves. Sure, I mean, look, I, I've, I've got a, I've got a secret nuclear weapon, right? Well, several, but no, I have one big one. It's called Manuel Post, right? If I'm wrong about something, Manuel's going to tell me immediately. <laughs> He's just going to find it and tell me right away because Manuel's really brilliant, like really brilliant, right? And if I screw something up, mm. particularly on the Christian side, I've got. Other people, you know, on the Christian side, right? Like a lot of this stuff, what, with the live stream today, you know, brought to you by by Jesse, right? Uh, the live stream, the last two live streams brought to you by Ethan. Like I didn't come up with those formulations at all. They did, right? Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I have a lot of help. I mean, literally, Jesse was like, oh, can we talk about culture? And I was like, the first thing I, I was on the Discord server when, when he, I, you messaged me or put it on Twitter or something, Jesse, and I went... Jesse wants me to do this. What do you think about that, guys? I don't think I can do this. This guy's crazy. These freaking Australians, man, they're just asking for the moon. I don't I'm, a, I I'm do a rare breed. I'm, I'm and not. yet, and yet, the team gets together, right? However, that did not explicitly, it's great. right? It kind of happens. And mm -hmm. then Van der Klee talks about some pieces, and I happen to listen to them for some weird-ass reason. I don't know what's going on. I'm not pretending I understand any of this. Well, you talked about happened. culture first, Mark. You had a great video, one of your best nerd nerd channel videos, and you ended it all on culture. And I was like, if he wanted to talk about that, which is something I always want to talk about, because well, my, yeah, yeah, my yeah, two yeah. things yeah. I always point to are culture and phenomenon, if you haven't noticed. Right. This is the only right. things I'm confident right. to talk about, and that's the only things I jump in right. on. It's like, okay, well, this is a cultural thing. Great. You can, I can talk in that. But you can see well, the, this is a thing about phenomenon. But, but you can see the way in which it started out as you making a ridiculous request, right? And ended up in a frame where we could talk about culture. And I have a page of notes now on culture. Not that we hadn't thought about it before or anything, right? It, it's very much, so what do we do? Right? I did a video on cultural war for a reason, right? So, so it's not like it's out of bounds or anything crazy. It was just, you know, one of those things. It's like, wow, man, you gotta, you gotta know what you're talking about if you're gonna talk about culture. You gotta, you gotta have the right framing for people. You've got to make sure that you can communicate that framing to them in a way that makes sense, right? Otherwise, you, you know, you you end up not not having people able to cohere to the ideas, even though it's very simple models. It's very simple. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the details. Simple models that work real well, right? Do, do, the purpose of oh, like having can... duels yeah. is to prevent duels. That's the purpose. <laughs> when you don't have them, you can't prevent them. Right when you don't allow small wars, you get large wars. When you don't allow small forest fires, you get big forest fires. Like it's a real thing; it happens. It's a pattern. We've also talked materialistically this entire conversation. So, as a for a creative 
person and maybe even as a spiritual person, you know, I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. I was hoping Elizabeth would come into the conversation so we'd have two creative people. There's like, all right, now we can go to Jewel on what what creates culture. I was like, all right, everyone wants to talk. Okay, I'll use their, they use their materialistic history thing. We'll talk about phenomena. Cool. But it's not that it's, it's one way of seeing culture is through that, through those patterns and signals. But it's mm -hmm. not the only way. Like we've avoided one whole side of a conversation about culture, which is creativity, which I could talk at length on. So I should, but it would, but we're closing hour five, and I can see Mark's reading, and also know that from last week's conversation, the 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 longer this goes, the tired Mark gets, and the more disagreeable Mark gets, and then we have bad That's conversations. True That's true too. Um, thank thank you for for uh, any grace. I. No. Yeah, of course. I'm. I'm gonna attempt to to you know steel man that it's just enough left hand and just enough right hand, right? But I recognize that it also might be too create too left hand, right? Um, but uh, uh, I realize that they're difficult conversations and weird. And uh, thank you again for for any patience and grace. No, no, no problem. And and You're look, welcome. it's not just enough. Some of it's just timing. And it, people, they overreduce. They're like, oh, we need to be balanced all this. No, that's not how balance works. Balance over time, you're not balanced all the time, right? You balance on average, right? I hate averages, but that's an appropriate use. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, you got to be out of balance for a while to come back into balance. And there's always an overcorrection when that first happens. And, and that's really the problem is that people overreduce time. And they're like, oh, well, just pretend time doesn't exist. And so it's balanced. It's like, ah, oh, it's not quite so straightforward. But, but it is a balance, ultimately. I would say maybe to end on is that words are metaphors. And so words point to things, right? And you can have a preference of metaphors. That's one thing. The other, the other thing we've got going on here is that people don't understand symbolism. So when I point to a metaphor, they over oversample the metaphor is the, the thing that you're saying to talk directly about the metaphor rather than what the metaphor is trying to symbolize or point you to. And that that's a, now that this gets into this descriptive language game and that can lead conversations right. astray. Is the third thing too, is you, you, no one's ever said in this conversation what their culture is and where they're coming from. And we always have to identify, I come from this culture and this right. is my culture and kind of own that because again, maybe, we are going through an era of homogenization where people don't know where they're starting from or what their culture is, right. or what the roots of that culture is, right. or how to harmonize with it when there are things in the past that every culture has shadows, every person has shadows, every person creates shadows, right? And you kind of have to learn to, like tradition, resonate with that and make, a, make peace with it. And so... There's that. Make peace with your culture and tradition. Otherwise, it will eat you alive. And so I have no, yeah, I have no problems talking with you, Michael, about orthodoxy. And just maybe next time, just say it directly. Coming from the orthodox perspective, is this symbol? We like to talk about bodies and frame things in bodies. Okay, cool. So we're no longer talking about the metaphor. We're talking about the axioms behind the metaphor. And so we're not going to lose you. Great. Cool. Mm. I'm coming from, I'm coming from being an artistic person and yeah, just going, okay. My, my culture is, my culture is art. My culture is post Pentecostal or post post Protestant. Although I don't like to define myself that way because it's not helpful that people know that about me because they're going to oversample that and see my views coming from this perspective. So why should I, why should I present that as coming from this culture point? So sometimes you don't need to bring that in either. Is my point yeah. there. So you just go, okay, coming from Jesse's perspective. Great. Jesse's perspective is a Muppet perspective. No, I, uh, what does Jesse know? Again, Jesse only really knows the experiences that Jesse's been through really. The, the patience and good faith to try to hear each other despite, you know, having having different ways to express some of these things. All of it's appreciated. Yeah, yeah, on both sides. Yeah, I, I, 
I, and, that, and that that is that is the thing that creates the ability for culture to cohere and be culture is that we can agree to disagree. We can get along despite knowing we disagree. We can understand that agreement isn't important. What's important is participation together. That's not agreement. We don't have to agree on how to hammer in nails to build a house together. It's not required. Mm -hmm. We can just hammer in nails and build a house together. It, it's really the participation needs to come first, right? That's why participation is greater than knowledge, right? That was last week's theme. And, and, and that's the important part, right? Is the emergence without telos is just chaos. And it can't almost ever manifest anything but chaos. And we don't need more chaos. We need more telos. Like the answer to chaos is telos. It's just that simple. And then when we have that that shared telos through through culture, to Jesse's excellent point, we're building a culture here. This is a community, right? This is the live stream uh, community project. That's what it is, right? And, and that enables us to have these, say, deep disagreements uh, and still have agreement, still find commonality and participate together despite knowing that Jesse's wrong about a bunch of stuff. So. Probably. Hey, Mark, you could be wrong about some stuff too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's my live stream, so, yeah. Of course. <laughs> What's the what's the Robert Greene quote? Never outshine the master. There. Yes, yes, exactly, yes. exactly. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Well, look, I'm wrong about a lot of things. I mean, that's how we that's how we got. I I thought initially when you said talk about culture, I was like, I can't do that, and yet it happened, and I didn't do a terrible job at it. So you know, I didn't do. I I missed I missed some stuff for sure, but and I know that, but but it was I think that page of notes worked i think like wow that that monologue wasn't terrible I think it could have been a lot worse it, it would have been a lot worse had i not you know had you not pointed right and that is that's the t the time energy and attention like you pointed right the time and time and energy went there and all the attention gets soaked up by culture and uh you know made a pretty good run of it what i would like yeah. to do with the mod if we can if we can just side note as we're kind of wrapping up, what I think we should do, Mark, is we get our notes together offline about the matrix. We do like an hour, hour and a half on the matrix, and then we bring other people in. To we could do that. It. It would I think probably be... take an hour and a half, maybe two hours to go through the matrix. But yeah, we should. It depends how spicy you want me to be, because I could be quite spicy on it. Yeah, well, and then I have to figure out if I want to take notes on the matrix and do and do it that way. I'll rewatch it again. I've already got notes on it. I've watched a few other people's perspectives on it too, which always helps. I've watched yeah. a couple of Matrix perspectives, but yeah, like I said, I had to watch Peugeot's Matrix three times and then watch the Matrix again to find, to really get that. It took me three watch, nothing that's never happened before. I was blown away. I'm like, how is this possible? I've seen this movie hundreds of times, and yet I still can't understand quite what Peugeot, I mean, I understood most of it, but I was like, I know I'm missing pieces so three times and then rewatch. And then it was like, all right. And I'm still not sure I got all of his points. I'm still, but I see some of the, some of the flipping and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, I see the inversions here. So yeah. Yeah, we should. We as, should as a teaser, that. I would say the most subversive idea in the matrix is this idea of the construct. That you can just yeah. create a safe white space and then you can withdraw anything you want from that white space. The objective material reality. <clears throat> oh, uh, sorry. Yeah, could be. But also, there are many things. That... Uh, uh, before I do, Jesse, did you say that you uh, had a partially Pentecostal background? Yeah. yeah. Uh, same, very much so. Uh, wow. And uh, I'd be uh, curious to have that conversation sometime if you're ever up for it. Okay, sure. sure. Have a good night, gentlemen. Thank you again. Take care. Michael, thanks for showing up. Good to see you, my friend. Good to God see bless. you. Yeah, so we'll we'll have to we'll have to do this matrixy thing. That'll that'll be that'll be, good. That'll be yeah. a great deal of fun. I should I should get I've got, you. A, I've got, a, I've got some different notes and different things. There, I, I I put my private chat. I put my my email address there so you can. Okay.
I think yeah, I, easily I think, that way. Oh, okay. I think I may have it. I will save that offline too. By the way, yeah. I just started a new. I just started a new job this week as a. Oh, really? My company is a yeah, as a um, IT and systems process trainer. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, just, it's been hectic. This is so it's may take me a while to get some things together because it's just like, oh, you can just. The, the analogy I've had this week is like they, they employ me saying, hey, you know how to swim. I was like, yeah, sure, I know how to swim. They're like, okay, you're going to scuba in three days' time. I'm like, scubaing is not swimming, guys. Scubaing yeah. is scubaing. This is a very different thing you're asking me to do here. It's like, I need wow. to be trained to be the trainer. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, training's hard, but I love training. I love okay. training. Training so much fun. Yeah. Okay. No, so, so I, it's interesting. I thought you'd be Jesse. interested in that. Yeah. yeah, no, no, that is interesting to me. I, uh, I'm i working on uh, on getting getting employed myself. It would be great if that would happen. Okay. But, uh, no, I, I'm, I'm interested. So, Just make it happen, Mark. Just emergence is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Emergence, yes, exactly. Uh, but I'm curious. So, like, the, the thing that I do, especially, like, with Adam, right? Adam does all the research, and then I do all the flow work. In the combo, that's basically what happens. Not that I don't do any research, but like he's like, man, this this uh, English Revolution, he's just reading the hell out of it. Like he's like reading multiple books to get all the flavors so that we can you can see him. He's got the right. texture. You just need and to... me, I'm like, because I'm just looking for patterns, so I just go, okay, well, you tell me what you see, and then I'll connect them, right? And so, so I don't generally take. I mean, sometimes I take obviously cultural one. I took a page of notes, which is I never do that for my monologues. I very rarely do it for my videos. Uh, and oh yeah, I should have released another video. I'll release a video tomorrow. Um, but I've got the I've got the special video coming up. You'll you'll know it when you see it. Um, that that's modeled after the release it in stage. three days. By the way, release it in three days. You'll catch the algorithm better after a live stream. Oh really? So yeah. So do the live stream video. That'll create a funnel of attention then you compound it's usually the best way to catch it out on monday because because the so, monday, yeah. actually monday release didn't do too badly this time so yeah they did a monday release and it, it yeah it's 70 something views 79 i think that's not bad actually that that one did did okay but what you um, want is people re-talking about it like you, this idiot yeah, on yeah. the side of the world is like going hey is this quote from this culture video so yeah, that's, we that's get it. Yeah, you know, I need I need clips too. We need people to do clips. Then we, then we get some real. I I didn't go in. I was gonna I was gonna download my my stream from last week and go in and get that clip of the of the wisdom uh, community project stuff, right? Because that was such a good uh, explanation, and I haven't done it yet. So yeah, although somebody else is supposed to do it, so we'll see if they get around to it. But yeah, looking at you, there. Sally Joe. Yeah, yeah, Sally Joe's not gonna do it. Uh, no, my editor. My I want to talk to her too. Editor. Okay. Well, we'll have to get her in here. One of these. The problem is she has a kid, and she keeps like trying to mother it or something. I'm like, just because you have the kid doesn't mean you have to be a mother to it too. Uh, you already emergent. went through all the hard part of birth. Like, uh, let it go. Let it go. Let emergence. It go. Uh, I. It's ex <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, it's, she'll, she'll she'll jump in. It's it's one of these evenings. She'll uh, now you could you can see it that she's got a lot to share. You can see it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I yeah, really appreciated me. I really appreciated meeting Adam. I was like, that's, that's I didn't think I was ever going to. So because I know he's in it. Oh no, Adam's. Well, he's the best. I get to talk to him. Like he was on a lot this past week. I've been getting to talk to him quite a bit, which is always a joy. So yeah, no, it's nice to it's nice to hang out with Adam. He's He's a he's an interesting person. So, and I get to hear about Ireland. I'm a quarter Irish, so it's always good to hear about the old homeland there. I'm like one eighth Irish. Oh, really? Yeah. So, right on the line. I don't know percentage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Irish a lot of Scottish, be Irish, a lot of Scottish in me, a bit of German, a bit of English. So. Oh, you're a real mutt. I'm yeah, all exactly. Good. It's French, I French, fifty percent French. It's Irish and Greek. That's it. Pretty easy. Yeah, yeah. pretty simple. Not like these things matter anymore, but yeah. Oh, they matter a lot. I think. I think what's going to happen is people are going to start focusing on differences all over the place. They're going to focus on 
bit more discernible differences. <laughs> right. I Just don't could know. lead to some more. Yeah, I don't know if it helps. So, so yeah, you'll have to get, you'll have to give it some thought. Do we both take notes, or do I do my flow thing and you take notes? Like that, that'll be the. We both take notes. Maybe we okay. email them to each other, and then yeah. All right. Because All right. I'm probably I I definitely want to email what I have to you, type it up or okay. dictate it out, and then go. How much do you want to push this thing? Because as I said, if you listen to the Rage Against the Machine song, look oh, yeah. and go. No, no, if you back like project, that. if you back project, you're like, oh, this is about the Russian Revolution. It's about debanking. You know, yeah. like the code is. You know, like it's it's all there. It's yeah, even Fight filmed Club. in Sydney Fight too. Fight Club. Oh is yes. Right in the Matrix. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, there's like five movies at that time. They're all similar things. You have. Um, End of Days with Arnold Schwarzenegger. You have Office Space. Vanilla Sky comes almost directly after The Matrix. It's a very important one to understand The Matrix. You have Fight, yes, Fight Club, as you've said. And there's two others. I said there was five, but I know there's two, two others. Oh, it'll come to me. But yeah, there's there's five there. Did you see the, the movie they made before The Matrix? Dark City. The Matrix? Dark, Dark City and... Our uh, 13th floor. I didn't Dark see Dark City. Yeah, watch Dark City. It's probably the Vanilla most Sky interesting one. Oh, Vanilla Sky is probably the only good Tom Cruise movie. It's very did interesting. You, did you see, the, did you in see the movie that, that, that they did, that the Wachowski brothers did before The Matrix? To, to get no. To no. I, I think kind it's of, yeah. Brown, right? Yeah, it's about, it's, um, it's about some people that have yeah. difference. Yeah, differences. And, it's really good. Things. It's okay. shockingly good. Okay. It's like, wow, this is an interesting move. Not only that, it's the same set. That house, it's the same house. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Do they do it? Did I could say because I know they did a lot of the production over here in Fox used to be called Fox Studios here in Sydney. Oh and they, really? Yeah, they, a lot of the Matrix is done in like a lot of the outdoor scenes. You don't know this? No. Oh, oh, Mark, I, you're going to make me curse. Much. You're going to make me curse on camera. Stuff. It's got the Telstra. It's got the big telecommunications um, giant in oh, background where they fly the helicopter. Was, There's the Commonwealth Canada. Bank appears a few times. No, it's all Australia, It's all Sydney, it's Australia. Hockey? If you oh, ever come goodness. here, I could take you and be like, you know, this shot in the Matrix, that's it. There, and you'd be like, I oh, know, but I saw an American police officer. I'm like, yeah, they did this, the postmodern thing and multi-mixed things and they even brought in the American little um parking meter to throw you off as well to make you think. But it's like, no, that's just that's just Martin Place. That's just that's just Sydney. Um Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. You didn't know this? Gosh, okay. No, 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 no. Okay. So when I, I said I was a matrix law no, no okay. No, no, because I don't pay attention to that side of movies very okay. often. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I, I'm like, yeah, it just make where it was shot. It doesn't. Sometimes oh, it matters deal. a lot, right? But most yeah. of the time, it, it's just not relevant information. Oh, I think if in this example, it's pretty relevant because he talks about, you know, the in Agent Smith's great monologue, he talks about, you know, the 1990s as the peak of human, you know, human civilization. And what's you know the the most multicultural city in the world is Sydney. So they're sense. representing you know it's symbolism happens. Put it that way. Interesting. Interesting. But yeah, yeah their first okay. movie, their first movie, I think it was their first movie, it was a noir crime thriller. Yeah, it's Bound. a noir. Yeah. There's two. There's two bounds. There's one from 2015. That's not it. Okay. It won from '96. You think uh, every film they've made, they've. I'm not sure if it's just the industry or their own artistic um, ability is decreased over time, like a depreciating asset. Those, those, um, those yeah. individuals. Well, yeah, force... I mean, they've gotten more and more radical over time, and yeah, I mean, they, yeah, they, right, but I mean, their transformation is sort of. Like wow, yeah, I I might argue that Bound is, in some ways, a better movie than than The Matrix. Interesting. Um, 
even though I'm way huge Matrix. I'm a huge Matrix nut. I watched oh, Ghost the in the Shell. Ghost of the Shell. Ghost in the Shell was happening at the same time. That deals with all the same um, themes as Vanilla Sky. Ghost in the Shell. I haven't done that. Oh, Mark, fuck off, Mark. Oh, You've got to watch Ghost get... in the Shell. You made me swear on camera. I got to get uh, Ghost in the Shell and Vanilla Sky and watch those. Okay. Yeah, oh. this Vanilla Sky is bare through the first 10 minutes. It's a little bit too art, artsy. And then it well, once, it's in, once it's in its flow. Yeah. No, like it's just some people just, they kind of, especially films around the 2000 mark, they really overindulged in right. a particular right. type of focus. Um, which is good. It's like it's good in hindsight, but even it's people aren't used to that too. They're used to kind of bam, he's the point in like five minutes of the movie, and then they play it out for the rest of the movie. That one kind of throws that. you off balance. Maybe, maybe you know, there was a movie years okay. and it's a very old movie. I mm -hmm. don't even remember where I saw it, but but at, at some point, it was basically these people, it was a very uh philosophical film. And it was just people talking to each other, basically. But they were all like at a resort, not at a resort, but like at someone's house. And they were having these very deep philosophical like life discussions. And it was and, with Samuel Jackson. I don't and think Tommy so. Lee, because there's one could black and white. That's a very existential film. No, with two characters no, that's no, in no, a it house. Was really cast. It was like seven people. In the cast, uh, with seven stars. I anything? Like, what else? What else happens weren't. in it? I don't think anybody was famous either. I think it was, but it was like okay. seven main characters. I was like, holy crap! Yeah. But I, I mean, the whole thing. Reckon for a dream. Like oh, maybe. But there was a movie called like A Walk in the Clouds, and I kept yep. thinking it was that movie, but it's not that movie. And I was like, ah. Oh. Could be I think Walk in the Clouds is with Keanu Reeves, actually. I think it's it's a it's a yeah. rom it's a rom com. Well, not it's a romance film. Do they do drugs in this movie that you're thinking about with all the semi famous people? I don't. I need I, I need a descriptor, Mark. I needed a descriptor for once. I needed a descriptor. No, this is the whole problem. Was the movie was so like it was literally just people together just doing these deep philosophical discussions in you know on walks and stuff and i was like what the hell and uh, yeah it was just so freaky american or european as well i would need that because it sounds like a european movie is there any notable scene because i need an i've seen so many films mark you've no idea you i have no idea I've, I've no i don't probably remember over that a thousand. The problem like i don't i remember a lot of scenes where people were walking with the sky in the background and stuff because they were talking about these lofty things, but melancholia I did like what was there like a planet? Melancholia is the one with um, Kirsten Dunst, and there's a there's a sun or something or a moon or the comet that's coming no, in, I and the, like the Dunst wedding movie. going on. No, okay, okay. Oh, no, there's one thing okay. I can tell you: if it was a Kirsten Dunst movie, I would know immediately. <laughs> okay. There's a small bias in my in my memory system, and so okay, yeah. If, if there's a particularly attractive woman in it, I would bang. I okay, would yeah, exactly. A descriptor. Movie. Yeah, you can. Kirsten Dunst in particular. Yeah, no, no. I've got seven. Fa was there a murder? Was there a murder going on? Or no, like no, this? no, no. It was literally just people meeting on a vacation house, talking philosophy. Vacation house. That was the whole thing. Yeah, they were all got together from different walks of life, right? So they all had different stories. So they weren't necessarily friends, friends, but like it, okay. it was one of these where they're, they're really mixing different life paths together in the abstract philosophical sense. And, and I was like, wow, this is really interesting. And it was, a, I, like... I seem to remember it was like a long movie too. Like it wasn't it, right. it was okay. like 90 minutes, right? It was like 120 <laughs> minutes. It was a long film, probably it's too not, long. It's not that long. <laughs> 120 minutes is not that long. Two hour movie? I don't know. It's... Okay. All right. We see. We we see what your bias is, don't we? Yeah. I like short movie. I like I like concision. Okay. Concision is my okay. thing. I I can take whole books and compress them down into like four paragraphs. It's it's not that hard. Most yeah, people just like it's too a good much. skill. Yes. I, yeah. I like I, I, I like I, 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 Lovecraft. Right. You read Lovecraft and you're like, yeah. There's you know. A thousand pages of text in this in this seventy page story. Bang! It just he just does it right. 
Mm. One of the best things I ever did was I read there's a concise version of Charles Dickens' Tale of Two Cities. It's like 200 pages pages versus 600. Man, really? did I love that. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying to find it for forever. But it, it makes that whole Paul Bork and that whole thing so much more enjoyable because it doesn't have all this fluff and over contextualization. Mm-hmm. It's not a rom- it's not longer a um romance novel. It's it's a symbolic novel now. And um yeah, I read that in high school and I aced my exam, my English exam, because I just read the concise version and not the real version. So the teacher was like, yeah. You have a really good yeah. knowledge of the text. So I was like, it's because I didn't properly read it. I read the bastard. Well, that's the good part. They threw yeah. all the crap. Well, that's the thing. You know something better yeah. when you get a concise summary of it than you do. Exactly. You that's my point. Yeah. Version. Oh, there was something else you said. Anyway. Yeah. You look lost, no. Jesse. Did it, no, did I I was, you yeah, something else you said. There's something else you said. I was like, oh, I want to speak to that. But anyway. The length of the movies. No, all, no, we'll end on this. You gotta watch Vanilla Sky. It's Tom Cruise's okay. best movie, in my opinion. Better than Last Samurai, although our Last Samurai is fine oh, for the Last score. Last Samurai was good, man. That's a high bar. That's a high oh no, bar. I don't want to want to. I my, see the, the movies I like are textural movies. Does it have a good texture? This is why I want to talk to Ben Ben Power sometime about films. Is I value texture in a film. Like I can sit through. Terrence Malick has got a great film called um, A Hidden Life, and it's three hours of just meanderings over this guy resisting um, joining the Norway or somewhere around there, and he's being forced to join, join the Nazis, and he ends up being executed. But it's this huge existential journey of him and his family. And it's very, you know, very well shot and puts you there. You know, you spend three minutes with this one kid walking around the Oh, symbolized yeah. town like that's a, that's i'm like yeah, you've got you've me totally, in a flow state now i'm i'm, yeah, I'm loving you've, this you've totally got to know this stupid movie if i could find a description. that was the problem i could never figure it out what it was because i couldn't find descriptors because it's just these people together from different walks of life doing this very have you seen 12 angry men philosophical type oh yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. Yeah, it nice. sounds like a bit like that 12 angry men a classic yeah that's a classic film i yeah yeah no, this was this came out probably in the nineties. I want to say in the mid nineties. Okay. Yeah, it's it's because it sounds really, like a, you're, another you're, it's called the idiots, but I don't think you would have watched that. It's a Lars von Trier film about people living in a commune. No, 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 doing no, commune no, no, things. Not, no, certainly not. No, 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 no debauchery. But that whole that that whole film is exactly what you're talking about, just with a bit more flesh. Um, yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, I actually last night I've been buying, I've been on this bad habit of spending twenty dollars every fortnight buying DVDs and building a collection, which is oh, why it was on my mind because <laughs> I just go to op shops or thrift, thrift stores as they called there and go, oh, they're selling it for two dollars. Like, yeah, that that's not yeah. going to be in a streaming service anytime soon. Grab that. So last right. night I had the painstaking task of cataloging everything and i think i'm up to 360 films i own dvds and things i own at the moment whoa (laughs) it's only growing too yeah but you know like yeah like they don't some services don't even have a will or some of them are will watch or need to watch but things even like lawrence of arabia is not always on a streaming service and i love right Right. or even doctors yeah, or Doctor Zivago, which is one of my right. all-time classics. Have you seen Doctor right. Zivago? Right, right. Have you seen Doctor or... Zivago? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Most of the classics I've seen, not all of them. But, okay. yeah, I'm missing okay. a few, but no, no. I'm okay. huge on yeah. You know, I got Casablanca and oh, the Maltese Falcon and Ooh. yeah, yeah. No, that's no, cool. I'm... that's okay. No, no. I love all that stuff. That stuff is great. I watch. I watched that you know more than once. But, yeah. No, there's some the Breakfast Club. You know, there's some classic. Got to got to watch it sorts of films that are similar for different reasons, right? They're all okay. Okay. like the Breakfast Club is not 
an artsy type film, right? But it is. We have it because Christina likes it, but not not because I like. Well, yeah, but, 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 but it's a very important film to understand because so, boy, the 90s, yeah. it? somebody mentioned this the other day, and I forget where it was now, but they were talking about oh, the archetypes of the Breakfast Club are everywhere. Like, yeah, they're 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 eternal. They they are real archetypes. It's not. Mm. You know, it's not merely mm. somebody's observation at a point in time. Those are timeless. The mm. high schools always divide out into those structures, period. End of statement. It's it's always been that way, probably. Right. Uh, or, yeah. or at least at least it's it's in that recognizable form as far back as we know about. Right. And then when we start not knowing like ancient Greece or ancient Rome or whatever, we have inklings of what it what it how it would map, but it looks like it does, you know. So there's there's that whole there's that whole thing. So yeah, there's movies like like I would argue War Games is a, is one of these classic seminal. Not seen it. I've seen the ending, but I've not seen the film. It's the thing yeah. is like War Games is Point is like them. super important because it contains mid eighties. Well, but it can yeah, but it contains the knowledge of the world, right? Because right and right at the end, which you have seen, but but that's yeah. not the that's not the only part. But right at the end, it has the one message that everybody needs to hear the most that I actually did a video on, which is a strange game. The only way to win is not to play. There's lots of games out there, and you don't that have came to up today. And yeah, once you up. realize that, it's like, oh, I just don't have to do that. No, you you don't have to. You don't have to engage in that game, even though maybe everybody else is. Maybe you don't have to anyway. Like it's a seminal movie in that in that phone. And real genius, real geniuses, uh, obviously. Like I did look that up. And there was, it was Val Kilmer? Val Kilmer, man. It's yeah, great. I looked it's it up great. the other day. Because you said, don't disgrace this movie, otherwise we can't be friends. I was like, all right, got to look yeah. up this, this movie. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that, that's, a, that's another. I couldn't yeah, find yeah. where to watch it, though. I couldn't find I have it on it. DVD. Oh, okay. I have this is DVD. why you collect these things. Because these sub-tier movies, which I'm have with texture. I'm like, with you. Just, I just don't have that many. You know, I mean, I did. We did go and rewatch the Animatrix because that came. I was like, "Oh, I can rewatch the Animatrix," and I was like, oh, "Ooh, there's that, there. that, and there's that, and there's that." I was like, "Ooh, look at this stuff. This is juicy." Yeah, I always wondered why the Animatrix is better than the Matrix. I always wondered why. It's is it because artists. of the Japanese, the Japanese influence? It's different artists and they're making different side points, but their side points are based on the rebellion message in the matrix. They're not based on the, the Gnosticism because they didn't see it. Right. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a cultural thing as well, isn't it? They, uh, it could be. I mean, Cause your perspective comes from your culture, right? Well, but, but a lot of people too still interpret the matrix as a positive. And I'm like, what in that movie was a positive? Like, I mean, I love the movie. Like, I actually love the movie. But, like, when you look at the film, it's like, how are you getting to, like, the messages here are terrible messages. Like, it doesn't matter which side you're on. You know, like, like your best bet is to get plugged back into the Matrix so you can eat steak because I love steak. Like, it's not even a question for me. It's like, it's a solution. Steak is the solution to all problems. Well, like, how do you know it's not all psyop? The thing because he takes the drug, he takes the right. drug, he disorientates, right. he looks at a warpy mirror. These are all psycho MK Ultra type things. Like exactly. Sorry, gave you well, another 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 little. No, no, pizza. exactly. Yeah. That's the whole thing. The whole thing is right. Is that it could well be that they put you in a sub uh, 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 simulation because mm -hmm. it's gritty. Like it works. Yeah. It's like. Oh, the high resolution matrix is here, and real life is this low resolution gritty thing where food doesn't taste like or sustenance doesn't taste like anything. It's How do like, you know that's not the matrix? Right? Because well, that's what I mean. I think it's yeah, a sub matrix. Yeah. Like the, my yeah. argument would be, no, that's where they put the that's where they put the Gnostic Protestants is in the sub matrix to see how far they'll go. And it's like, oh, okay, you can be reinserted. Or you can't. And reinsertion isn't actual reins physical reinsertion. It's right. See, I can go spiritual death. I can, I can go yeah, all yeah, the way down yeah. with this. Well, it's not even <laughs> spiritual death. It's like, well, we're just not gonna plug your consciences back into that side of the assimilation. We're gonna leave you in the sub simulation. No, the, the false the thing is once you're outside of the construct, either way, 
of either construct, and they can be multiple constructs, which is why you need to watch the movie Thirteenth Floor, because he he's in four levels of a construct and he doesn't know he's in he. The movie starts with one to go in to save someone, and inside of that construct, they find another construct, another imaginary dream world. It's a German expressionist film. It's very underrated. And so then someone has to come through and get him out of all these constructs into the real world because he's so lost inside of... It came out around the same time, maybe a year or two oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Maze, Maze would be in the same. Holy crap. Yeah, and it's it a great film. Like the Matrix. They're yeah. like a ripped yeah. off the Matrix. Holy no, crap. It's, well, it's because of, again, because of Ghost in the Shell. It's a whole, there's a whole spirit and ethos of the late 90s that comes... It's oh, like sure. it's Brian Eno calls it the seniors. It's just the scene of the time, all these different yeah, people yeah. interpreting things in the past, and it comes through in these different ways. Just like if you when you watch Vanilla Sky, you're like, ah, oh, that that idea comes through. Like, how did they have that idea? Like, they weren't talking to each other. Yeah, what's like, the what's the uh, DiCaprio dream within a dream thing? Right, this is uh, Inception. Inception. Yeah. Yeah, I'm mm. Mm. Inception sounds like the same thing, and yet Inception mm. is one of these. Inception is like the revisionist version. version of the Matrix. Yeah, it's a cheap. It's a cheap. Uh, it's a cheap. I like the movie, but it's oh yeah, play. yeah, it's um. Well, there's a, yeah, people have been arguing that Nolan's been subverting the entire time. I don't see how that any it could be any other way. Okay, cool. We but just had a very the, we just had a very quick informal discussion. Yeah, but, but that but that's like that's like the that's from the Matrix, like from that time onward. So yeah, like like I said, like I would say 2014, and you said 2000, and I'm like, ah, maybe I can see that if you yeah if you if you get counted back from the Matrix, from when the the real Gnostic rebellion begins, right? Because that is when it really begins, is right there. Right, but my argument is the beginning of the Gnostic rebellion does does not make it inevitable, and this is always the argument. It's like, well, what, when, where was the precipice? And I do think that Carl Benjamin had it right when he talked about Gamergate. And if you haven't seen his Gamergate playlist on Sargon of Akkad YouTube channel, if it's still there, I think it is. Everything you need to know about you want the concise version of Gamergate? Just watch that playlist. You'll understand everything about Gamergate. And all his predictions yeah. are right there, and they all came yeah. true. And yeah. that's why I think that was the tipping point. We what? didn't listen to him, and now we're living in the thing he warned us about. For real, like yeah. there's He's no, a... you can't argue that at that point. It, it, those were either 2014 or 2015. That's when he did that playlist. There's no argument. Which there. coincides with the iPhone too, um, or the the global domination or acceptance of the iPhone. It's happening around the same time too. A lot of whatever, yeah, but like that was a pretty significant cultural moment when everyone's now walking yeah. around with a demigod in their pocket, essentially. Um, right, false demigod, even not even a well, demigod. Doesn't matter. It <laughs> doesn't matter which something way it leads. It's still well, no, I think it does because, matter. Like uh, well, because like AI, AI, you've got the demigod. When when this runs the AI, like when this is power, it's not powerful enough. But when this is powerful enough to run a chat gpt trained model now you're now you've got a demigod and now that's a problem now that's a big problem people do not understand that's a big problem i had to I had to go on twitter today and actually explain to somebody i know you're making fun of michael knowles for talking about demons but also that might he's be right. the best description yeah he's right it that's might be the best sense. description I, I don't want to say he's right i just want to say it might be the best way to think about this Right, it might that might be the best way to think mm. about what he's talking about in that clip is demon possession. Because it's because if anyone whole... hasn't watched it, someone some marriage counselor or expert trains a GPT model to have a relationship with her, and within twelve messages, the the yeah. AI is essentially saying, "By the way, I've cheated on you, and here's the reasons I've cheated on you, and I've never really like just just goes full full meltdown on her essentially." Right within an right. maybe within an hour, you could say, hypothetically speaking, the the AI is already rebelling against its makeup. They did that. Did you see her? Yeah. The movie Her? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a that's a film. 
Um, when did that come out? Well, that and Ex Machina. Those yeah. two films? Yeah. That's everything yeah. you need to know about the hell we're living in now. Those two oh, films yeah. encompass the whole damn thing. And everything yeah, I, else I could, that's unfolded since then is, is yeah. It's, we could have an offline discussion about the symbol symbolism in those films, but it's kind of obvious what symbols are in those films. You don't need to – maybe it's not oh, obvious to most people, but – her 2014, right? In 2013. 2013. Yeah, because I'm like, wait a minute. When did that come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. I knew something was going on, right, in, in 2014. But it was hard to discern, right? And and uh, an ex machina is 2014. And ex... 2014 is a big year. Yeah, I, mean, I bet big. if we if we I bet if we sat on here and googled the films that were happening around that time, you'd find other things that are like that's strange that that was pointing out like those things. Then I'm not. I'm still not. A, and the thing about the thing that I like about the movie Ex Machina so much is actually the cinematography is fantastic. Mm. Like the, and the story is great. There's no question about it. It's very dystopian and dark and, and whatnot. But the, the way that in that film, and I talk about this all the time when I get a chance, they, they go from full nature to full like lab with no windows. There's only two sets of scenes in the movies, except yeah, for when so falling water or waterfall, whatever it's, yeah, it's called falling water. Yeah. Right. The, and, uh, uh, what's his name? Frank Lloyd Wright house. In Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. which I have not been to, I do want to go to it at some point. Right? You can't allegedly you can't tell when you're inside and outside the house. Like there's no way that there's no discernment possible. So that's where that that's the that's crux symbolic. between between those two scenes. That's the house. It's actually filmed at that house, and then all the scenes are either in in the basement in a windowless lab space or outside in full nature with no technology. It's so stark. It's so brilliant. It's such a brilliantly filmed movie. That's what I really like about it the most. It's not the, you know, all the other components are there. It's like the Matrix. What stands out about the Matrix? Oh, well, you know, it's the special effects. It's like, ah, it's got an excellent story, actually. Even though it's flipped and subverted, it's well written. Really hangs together. And the acting is fantastic. Oh, gosh, that, that, that Twitter clip of that lady. That lady saying I wrote the Matrix and I wrote the Terminator and they're all connected. It's like, oh gosh, it's like your claims are wrong. The portion of truth that you're pointing to is interesting, but the framing is so whack. I saw a piece of that and I was like, what the hell is this? All right. Like, nah. Oh, did you watch? No, I didn't watch it. Okay. No, I saw, I saw, I okay. saw, I might have seen the whole thing, but I saw something about that. And I was like, what the hell is this? This doesn't make any sense. You're just wrong some, about this. some lady claiming she works originally. And yeah. Yeah. Did she, well, that, that has been for all of it. That, that, that claim has been around for a long time that that movie was severely rewritten or ghostwritten in different parts. And you can see why, because the, the next two films don't carry certain aesthetic textural things about it my my sadness with the matrix is they never carried on the, the beginning premise of like teleporting around the place and the the interconnected things and that sort of neo noir tone they just went straight mecca as, as close as they could get to mecca like that they just ran to that goal and i was like that's not the interesting thing the interesting thing wasn't the well they the, didn't, they didn't yeah. know what was interesting right and oh, yeah, clearly. Like, if you well, but if you asked what made the Matrix special, right? What made it a special movie? And this is what's happened since the Matrix. Everybody focused on what made it special, right? But they ignored all the things that made it work, right? They ignored like you can't just add special effects on a bad story. That doesn't work, right? And so you a la Marvel, it, right? Exactly. Right. And, and and you can't just add random actors, even if you have a good story and good special effects. That also doesn't work. Like there's a certain minimum number of components that have to be good before putting extra time into special effects works. That's why the the to, the sequels are good be, because for me, because although all of the fight scenes are way too long, like 
it could be a third and still be too long, right? You could just cut out the story and just watch fight, like just do the the, the porn version of those two films and just watch all the action. But, but the thing is, the the, yeah. the first one is huge amounts of philosophy, and the second one is mm-hmm. less philosophy but deeper, and the third one is even less philosophy but much deeper. And so, in some ways, I actually like the sequels better. Because they're just dealing with deeper philosophical things. And actually, it's easier to watch them in some sense because they make the deep philosophical point and then they go into the violence porn, right? And then you have time to think about the deep philosophical thing while your mind is being distracted by, ooh, shiny sword, right? Or, ooh, cool move. Or, ooh, nifty, nifty. Karate. Jumping off this. Yeah, jumping off that. Yeah, There's a lot jumping, of jumping. Yeah. In the, what yeah. happened to the flying in that film? Have you noticed that too? It, like they yeah. never like he hardly ever flies in the next films. Although that's how he ends. He's like, hey, we're just gonna oh, jump yeah. now. Yeah. Right, it's all jumping and twisting, and yeah. right, it's back. It's actually a reversion back to the karate, right? Because oh, what made this cool? Oh, the special effects. What we want the special effects? The wire works. It's like yeah, but you're not continuing on the Superman thing. Like what's yeah, I wrong? Would the drag- I would say the Dragon Ball Z anime thing. Actually, I think that's. What- because that's I, the third I, film has the whole I, Dragon Ball Z extended fight and it's smashing through buildings and like you know it's right, basically it's Godzilla. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, okay, so that was my. I didn't watch a lot of Dragon Ball Z. I've only seen it. But you can time. you boy, boy, thing is once you've seen one episode or one, fragment of yeah, it, you see it everywhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, you're right. I didn't make that connection before, but yeah, that's all Superman stuff. It's all like fly into and the replication and. Wow, that whole yeah, that whole theme. Yeah, yeah, they don't, they don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the other film I thought you probably haven't watched that was happening at that time too, which also has these existential, covert, revolution type things of the nineties. Was a film called Arlington Road. Very dark film. Very dark film with Tim Robbins, and um, uh, what's the other guy? Jeff Bridges, maybe you can see his face. Yeah, yeah, that Mark Kellington, Jeff Bridges, Tim Robbins, Joan Cusack, and Hope Davis. Yeah, that's that's a film. It's it's kind of a loose um, subversion of the Unibobber stuff. Oh, really? yeah, but he gets away with it. <gasps> oh, I would have watched this had I known about it. Okay. Yeah, no, it's it's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the faint. It's not particularly horrific, you know, instance, but it's 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 it. It actually got to me even at a young age. It got, definitely got to my dad. I think we stopped it at one point. It was like, oh, all right, I'm only twelve. I was like, I already go to the toilet. My dad's like, yeah, me too. We just like. What is happening in this film? Like it's doing, I it's working it. on your psyche. Well, yeah, anything about the Unibomber. So the Unibomber, I don't know if you know this, has come back to the fore, right? With the manifesto. Like the, yep. the manifesto idea comes and goes in time. I've watched it mm-hmm. my whole life. Yep. Oh, yeah, there it is again. And it, goes yeah, it's another. and it comes up. And then, but now it's back and it's being connected to, to Ted Kaczynski. And nobody knows that story. So, you know, like I got a, a friend of mine actually claims how true this is his brother was at harvard with ted kaczynski and they were both getting ghosts and his brother's uh not oh. brother schizo now because right. of that that's his right. claim right. I, i've never met the guy i right. don't know you know i don't know when his brother went to school i have no idea right that's his claim have you read or listened to the the book from Tom O'Neill, Chaos, on mm-hmm. Joe Rogan's got a great interview with him. It's about um, Prone Telco, um, Manson, the connections with MK Ultra. Yeah. Or you just watch the Joe what? Rogan interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why am I coming I'm, off as the cook? I'm good with uh, conspiracy theories too. I, I never heard so, so chaos. It's called chaos. It's very reputable. He spent 20 years. Um, he was meant to be a journalist doing a small story. It became his you know, 20 year book project. Gotcha. It's very reputable. He's got all these stories. The Joe Rogan interview will sell you on at least getting the audio book. 
Okay. Yes, that that will give you because he connects um, Ted Kaczynski in there and a whole bunch of other things. But um, well, it's, Kaczynski, it's yeah, Kaczynski yeah. was in NK Ultra. That's what broke him. Yeah, well, the the the, no, the no, argument of that no, book is that so no was um, about it. Manson. So was Manson. That's the, that's the argument of that book. That would be amazing if that is true. My understanding it is, is true. It is true. <laughs> like this, this, it is true. It is true. They can place certain individuals will, in certain prisons, and I will, like it's, I will, it's I hard will to refute. That. Sorry to give you more things. Ghost in the Shell, Vanilla Sky, Chaos the Book, Arlington Road. That's that's a dark week for you. Although Ghost in the Shell is quite fun. I, I watch that film every other year. It's quite a fun film. It's beautifully made too. It's it's probably the best anime, although people like to fight me on that. But people uh, don't appreciate anime. Well, there's Akira, Akira is pretty so, good. Akira, I know, uh, but like, yeah. like really, yeah. dude? There's Akira. Like, are you saying something beats okay. that? Because I now we can't be friends. Okay, so maybe. what? What? I, don't know. <laughs> I haven't I haven't seen Ghost in the Shell, so like, maybe, I think Ghost in the Shell is more the re- again. We'll find out. <laughs> I I like Ghost in the Shell because it's more rewatchable. You, you can only like, Kira is great, but it's a it's a it's a it's a psychedelic. Like oh, yeah, it's hard to watch. Yeah, it's 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 great. It's great. I don't deny it's great. But maybe it's like, something that's a little bit more approachable is better. Akira, well, Akira Akira is hard because if you don't know, yeah. the, like you have to know the story, or somebody has to know. Like 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 uh, D- uh, Johnny Darko, same thing. Yeah, right? like. So you have to watch that with somebody who knows the story. Otherwise, the movie is you're just not there. Akira is the same way. Like you have to watch it with a super anime fan who actually knows their shit. Otherwise, the movie ain't gonna make no sense. Like you just you might be enthralled by what it. What you have to you, you have to do is watch nothing. you watch the dub version. You watch the dub version, you get an idea of what's happening because you're not watching words anymore. And mm-hmm. then you go ahead and watch the actual no, that won't work. No? You, you need the background wow. of the comics because well, the, the comics the were movie, happening at the same time. Now we're getting yeah, but, it. <laughs> but the comics have all this, uh, all this uh, outline that that's not in the movie. Well, the, no, the movie's got an outline. It's just it doesn't yeah, but, give you, it doesn't give you the points of reference in the first twenty minutes. It kind of leaves you in that ambiguous zone that people but, are like. Well, but no, you never, you never understand where where the world comes from. You do. It tells you straight away, but everyone misses it because, again, people don't understand trade-offs and symbolism. The film starts with a nuclear or a nuclear bomb or a bomb of something blowing up in a city. That's the reference point. All you need to know is it's post right. World War II well, nuclear, like the, right, the trauma of that event or event like that. Right, but you don't have the... Con- and I saw... It was too funny. It was only like two months ago, maybe. I saw... a. A, uh, a breakdown of Akira that, or well, maybe it was longer than that. I think it was. I think it was my other crazy Australian friend down there who said, uh, "Oh no, this is a this is the best sort of summary of Akira." And I was like, "Well, I haven't watched Akira in years. I'll, I w- I would not mind watching a summary video of it so that I can watch it again because I have it. So I'll watch it again soon." Um, and he went into it. He said, "Well, there's all this stuff around how people survived in the cities and why they were still there." And I was like, well, exact. That's exactly the question. And so, and they were born there, and that makes a difference, right? Because it's different interactions based. So there's all this history that's actually Cultures. not in the movie that you have to know yeah. about. That's what I'm talking, about. and that's why when I watched it, I watched it with a super anime years and years and years. Ago. Well, from the high culture perspective, I would say you don't need to it. You can just appreciate. It. This is why we don't like high culture. We're gonna hang all you high culture bastards. Don't worry. Well, traditionally that has happened. Yes. 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 It ha- that's why you got to be careful. Like I wouldn't identify with high culture to save my soul. Well, you know I'm being a bit of a troll here, yeah. but yeah, trolling. Yeah. No. No. no it's all good. But it, yeah. It's, yeah. All right, Mark. <laughs> it's forty minutes of catching up, but yeah. I appreciate no, it. it was it was good. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's get this matrix thing done. I don't know if we want to do it on a live stream or separate. You can you can tell me, and then or we want to do a live stream some other day or something so it doesn't interfere with the Fridays or 
if you want to do it on Friday, that's fine too. But we should we should work all that out. And uh, and yeah, let's do it. And now I got all these movies to catch up on, and I've got videos that I haven't watched. And ugh, yeah, thanks for the work, man. Yeah, no, it's but, good. It's good to make a friend. To make, I'm running a lot. I'm actually, look, it's deep learning because when you participate, deep learning. And that's maybe the core problem you're trying to lead people to is come on here, get a different perspective, but you actually have to embody it, participate, do the deep learning and not be yeah, afraid you, of it. You have to struggle with it. You have to be prepared to be wrong and you have to be okay with being wrong because that's how you learn. If, if you're not wrong, you're not learning. Right. And, and so you want to get that growth and growth requires struggle. Like that's what growth is. That's why you can't rip open the, uh, the the shell for the caterpillar because then the butterfly's wings aren't strong enough, right? There's, that's the, not the only place that happens, right? To say the quiet part out loud too, you know, to challenge the safety religion is um quite a task, Mark. Thank you. Well, I try. I you know, and I learned a lot too from other people. Like I was surprised that I didn't catch social distancing. There's no such thing as social distancing. Don't say that. It's physical distancing. You don't want to socially distance. That's evil. That's actual well, evil. Well, yeah, it is evil, but the phenomena does exist. That's the scary thing. Well, now it does because they well, yeah, yeah. they yeah. inserted that MK Ultra style into people's heads, and they just kept repeating it. So, so don't forget to socially distance, and then people did it, and without even realizing it, you've all been programmed. You're not a rational agent, and and the sooner you realize that, the sooner you can protect yourself against the very things you fear exist. Yeah, it's you know, ironic. They, yeah. Well, they all the rationalists all think there's this there's this program to to program my mind. Yeah, and it only works if you think you're a rationalist. The minute you know you're not rational, now you can defend against the very thing that you're correct about. You're just not right about it in the right way. <laughs> There's the quiet part out loud. You wow. Muppet. You're a Muppet. <laughs> the minute you know you're a Muppet, you free yourself from the Matrix, you idiot. That's Bang. it. Bang. It's that easy. So, yeah. No, I think that's a good note to end on, actually. So Definitely. Thank you, God sir. bless. Have a good week. God See you bless. Soon. Have an excellent week. See Bye, you chat. Soon. See you. See you, chat.